ID. Are we live? Uh, wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, there it is. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you're watching this and it does not say live at the bottom of the screen, unfortunately, you're watching the recap. The good news is we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. You're on mobile. Press hot chat. X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. Second link for the nightly watch. Listen, main channel. First link for the Scream Alerts boot camp and real estate course. But, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're ready for the Fed Minutes that is coming out at 2 p.m. Eastern, but all ready to start the day. We got a little bit of action. Uh, James Bullard of the Fed, if you don't remember him from a couple of days ago, he was the one who started talking all these crazy comments, and then the market started going down. He brought back the 50 basis point odds. Well, he spoke today, and it was early in the morning. The futures ran up off of it. You could actually kind of see it right there. It was a lot more uh, dovish than any of the other speeches he's had. He was talking about rates going up to 5.3, uh, which is a little bit more calm than what he was saying earlier. So you got a little bit of a reaction there on the market. It definitely eased some of everything he was saying before. We're going to watch how it plays out, but then you are going to have to deal with the minutes. And then you got a lot of other news here. Not only did we have earnings back and forth last night. I mean, Baidu had good earnings. They announced a big buyback, but Intel... This one breaks my heart, Chad. This one breaks my heart. Intel cut their dividend by 60%. Yeah, I know. We're due more dividend. I don't know how I feel about it. I do not know how I feel about all these dividend cuts, man. It is getting, it's actually getting pretty wild. So we are going to see. It's going to be very interesting. We have a little bit more news to cover throughout the day, but I'm telling you, everything you get after 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, we got some clues. So I got some for you. I hope you like the video. I hope you like, oh, Graham, he's dropping by for you. Amen. Amen, baby. So, Chad, get ready. Good morning. I hope you're blessed. And good morning. <laughs> What's up, baby? What's up, Gregory Ruiz? What's up, Alex? What's up, Gunner? Nate McAllister. Mac Capital. Bebo Rhino, baby. Lucky Soldier. Laker J. Oh, good morning, Wesley. Good morning, Carissa. Good morning, Danny. Oh, Maria's in the house. Lori's in the house. Nepal. Good morning, Chad Adonia. Amen, amen, amen. Wandering, what's up? TTF Co. Ricky Broski, PNC, open face sandwich, baby, in the morning. Be like Mike, oh man, Matt Alex, Robo Hand, El Chapado, Bannock, Investor Logistics Guy, Tony Lateral, good morning. What's up, LRG? What's up, Christina? What's up, Sean Carter? Oh, Evan, baby, what's up? Wavy Gravy, Rez, Battleborn in the house, B Dizzle, good morning, Genghis, Rotary, good morning. Gene Johnson, good morning. Jay Cortina, Mob Def, Adrian Joost, Jeremy Diaz, what's up, baby? What's up, Glenno? What's up, Sizzler? Dispassing in Newman. Good morning, Ringmaster. Good morning, Ozar. Kobe Maguire, Blizzy B, Triple Three. Oh, man. Blizzy B, Triple Three. Dude, that's a song right there, dog. Oh, man. Good morning. What's up, GM Gumdan? What's up, Slade? What's up, Oscar? What's up, Mob Def again? Oh, Sha, what's up? Aris, Rob Canton, Infinite Karma, Ryan Brown, baby. Oh, my goodness. Good morning, Chad Adoni. Are you ready? It's Wednesday already. Isn't that weird? It's already the middle of the week. It's already the middle of the week. It's LRF, not LRG. I'm sorry, man. I grew up at a at an earlier time where we used to rock LRG shirts. You rem I don't know if you know that, but, like, if you had an LRG shirt, I had one of them. I thought I was the coolest kid in the world. So that's it. That's what we do. I don't know. LR where are my LRG kids at? You know what I'm talking about. LRG was a, yeah, I had an LRG tree, huh? hundred percent, bro. That was the, that you were, you were cool as hell if you had that, bro. I'm just saying, I, I, th I still think you cool if you had that, bro. I only had one. I got one at Ross when it, when they finally hit Ross, you know what I'm saying? And then it was, it was like super cheap at Ross. And then I got me one. I wore that shit forever. I feel you. I couldn't afford it. Hey man, bro, Ross. That's why Ross Marshall's stop playing with me, bro. Yeah. LRG was crazy. LRG was crazy, bro. <laughs> that was an era. Amen, bro. Amen, 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 amen. So good morning, Chad Adonia. I hope you're living good. Again, today's going to be a wild one, especially after those Bullard comments. Uh, we'll see how the opening bell ends up playing out here. And then uh, 
you know, we're going to go from there. But let us get into the news. Uh, the minutes, they may show how many officials have pushed for a larger rate hike and whether they saw the need to take rates higher than anticipated. Markets expect tightening to be extended after a stronger economic data and some hawkish messaging with rates peaking at 5.36 this year. Uh, James Bullard told CNBC that he projects rates reaching 5.37 and said markets may be overpricing recession risk. Again, Bullard was bullish this morning, or at least... Again, it could have been worse. He was, he definitely did not sound as crazy as he did three days ago. And that's literally, this was this lift right here. Very early in the morning. I mean, it straight up brought the market from 399 flat almost all the way up to 400. So def definitely chiller, definitely chiller uh, than what he was implying there on Wednesday or last Wednesday. Uh, futures edge higher as investors looked ahead of the Fed minutes while Treasury yields dipped in the dollar weakened. Oil fluctuated as gold gained. U.S. natural gas futures fell below $2 for the first time since 2020. Uh, Chinese authorities urged uh, some state-owned firms to let contracts with big four auditing firms expire. People familiar said China wants to rein in U.S.-linked auditors' influence, ensure data security, and bolster the local industry. Offshore units will still be allowed to use uh, international firms. The move comes after a landmark deal to allow U.S. audit inspections on hundreds of Chinese firms listed in New York. Intel slashed their quarterly dividend from $0.36 cents to $0.12 cents, uh, to preserve cash for investment and reaffirm their guidance. Stock edge lower pre-market that's so sad bro we are gonna have to talk about that i can't believe it man no it's getting weird bro i'm telling you the la the amount of dividend cuts it's as somebody who's been telling you i want them dividends it is very unfortunate that you're going through a wave of cuts right now and in suspensions and it just sucks benjamin fox fuchs BFAM hedge fund gained 7.5% in January after a 26% loss. Baidu announced a $5 billion buyback after revenue beat shares rose. Uh, JP Morgan cut their staff use of chat GBT, a person familiar said. And the move which impacts employees across the firms wasn't triggered by a specific incident, but reflects normal controls around third-party software. A rebound of consumer spending last month uh, was broad-based, a morning consult survey shown, but those experiencing deteriorating finances still outnumber those seeing improvement. Hedge funds are positioned to exploit an increasingly favorable environment for U.S. stock pickers, Goldman said. Falling correlations among individual stocks over the last year suggest share moves are more to tied to specific fundamentals than macro news, and that is an environment where hedge fund returns tend to be stronger. Uh, the chart of the day is that the dollar is set to extend gains against the loonie. Driven by wider rate spreads, USD yields are being squeezed higher as robust data point to a higher terminal rate. In contrast, Bank of Canada has more reason to pause as inflation pressures ease. Few traders will be willing to bet against the dollar before the March FOMC, absent a dovish switch by officials, which seems unlikely. Uh, 845, Biden meets NATO's Stoltenberg in Poland. 1130, 22 billion of two-year FRNs and 36 billion of 17-week bills. 1 p.m., 43 billion of five-year notes. 2 p.m. for the Fed minutes and then 5.30 p.m. after market. Fed Williams will be speaking and then you're going to get Twitter arguments on Tamane versus Twitter about liability for terror terrorism-related posts. Earnings include NVIDIA, eBay, Etsy, Unity, Mosaic, Lucid, Pioneer, and Kotera. That's a lot. Uh, FOMC contenders, the White House is eyeing three former Obama officials as potential nominees for Fed Vice Chair Evercore Sen. It is focusing in on Harvard's Karen Dynam, Northwestern's Janice Eberly, and Morgan Stanley Chief Global Economist Seth Carpenter. Home uh, purchase applications tumbled last week to the lowest since 1995. The index of mortgage applications to buy a home slumped more than 18%, the biggest drop since 2015 to 147. The contract rate on a 30-year mortgage jumped another quarter basis point to 6.62. That's not good. That's not good. Uh, Peru said that the State Department granted the extradition of former President Alejandro Toledo, who will be tried, to, uh, tried in Lima over graft allegations. Uh, markets may have overshot in recent days when placing bets on peak ECB rate. Franco's Villaroy said the ECB in no way is obliged to raise rates at every meeting. Ukraine, Vladimir Putin said he's waiting for Xi Jinping to visit Russia as he hailed deepening ties at talks with China's top diplomat. Joe Biden was slated to meet with Warsaw Eastern European leaders who supported Ukraine with weapons deliveries. Uh, Germany's IFO survey showed the business outlook improved this month, though the current assessment of components slipped back. Uh, Exxon, Eskom will receive uh, $13 billion in debt relief from the government over the next three years, provided it partially privatizes Southwest uh, South America's electricity transmission. 
Bank of Indonesia uh, head Perry Warjoyo uh, was nominated for another five-year term. The Bank of Japan will probably take a gradual approach to raising rates and won't be too focused on reducing the side effects of easing. Former board member Makoto Sukare uh, said current member Naoki Tamura said policy review will be necessary in the future. The RBNZ uh, slowed the pace of rate hikes with 50 basis points to 475 after mulling another move of 75. Hong Kong is scaling back fiscal stimulus as it tries to balance boosting the economy with maintaining deficit control. Australian pay grew at a weaker than expected rate in the fourth quarter, prompting traders to pair bets on future rate hikes. A missing banker Bao Fan had plans for Singapore family office. Uh, commodities will rally in 2023, even after a soft start in the year, according to Goldman. China's recovery is the core of the bullish view, Jeff Curry said, adding everything points, that being AOK Natural Gas 2, which is extending a massive sell-off on mild winter temperatures, may get some support as slumping prices bring prospective buyers from China. Uh, WTI extended their longest run of uh, losses this year. Morgan Stanley joined J.P. Morgan in cutting Brent forecast. Prices may average 95 in the fourth quarter, down from the previous guidance of 110. Uh, China's move to restart coal imports from Australia should boost competition for steelmaking materials and lift seaborne prices. Uh, credit market two issuers are looking to sell fresh debt of U.S. high-grade primary market today. Underwriters' uh, volume stands at $7.65 billion. Dealers are calling for around $25 billion. Uh, Brookfield lowered their offer for Origin Energy to $10 billion after uh, months of due diligence. News Corp is no, lock, no longer uh, involving discussions to sell move to CoStar. Ineos will buy Chesapeake Energy South Texas shale assets for $1.4 billion. Uh, Tesla is prioritizing cell production in the U.S. over Germany because of tax incentives, including Biden, included in Biden's Inflation Reduction Act. Still, the firm is readying production of components such as electrodes at its Berlin factory. Uh, Rio Tinto slashed their dividend after a weak China demand hit revenue. Underlying profit fell 38 percent. Coinbase posted a 557 million loss after trading volume plunged uh, and slashed revenue by 75 percent. Stellantis and Lloyds Banking announced buybacks at $1.6 billion and $2.4 billion, respectively. Toyota and Honda both agreed to the biggest wage hike in decades. Toyota's workers' union didn't disclose a percentage increase, but Honda will raise by 5%. Uh, Google to cut 240 jobs in Ireland as part of global layoffs. Crypto lost the battle against uh, fiat currency, BIS chief says. Um... Intel slashes dividend by 66%. What a shame. JP Morgan uh, clamps down on staff use of AI power chat GBT. United Health closes LHC home health deal without challenge. Salesforce revises plans for annual stock ranking. Samsung LGD may win Apple order for iPad Pro OLED panels. Microsoft and Nintendo sign 10 year Call of Duty contract. Home Depot raised to 300 at 280 from Wedbush. And Merck is raised to outperform from Wolf. Uh, Ukrainians are crowdfunding. Uh, to supply soldiers with everything from boots and drones to battle tanks, even as a ravaged economy strains personal budgets. Our big take explores the vast donor network of citizens, businesses, and civic groups filling the gaps. They got a GoFundMe for drones? That's insane. Uh, no random starting this month. American Express Lounge will not allow uh, most travelers with premium credit cards to bring in two free guests. The Wall Street Journal reported adult plus ones will have to pony up $50 and children $30. A number of one platinum card holders group on Facebook called the policy change the first day of the daycare ban. Okay, that's cool. Uh, South Korea broke their own record for the world's lowest fertility rate. It y fell yet again with the number of babies expected per woman falling to 0.78 last year from 0.81 in 2021. The number of newborns declined to 240,000 in 2022, while about 373,000 people died. Wow. Israel has the highest expected lifespan than Mexico, than U.S. U.S. is actually number three on that list. Add a little bit of olive oil. Starbucks launched a range of oil-infused beverages in Italy to boost market share there. The Oliedo line, which includes a drink featuring olive oil steamed with oat milk, will be the first sold in Italy. Starbucks plans to launch the coffee in the U.S., Japan, and the Middle East in the U.K. later this year. Okay, that's cool. That's... I don't know, man. The world keeps getting weirder. And then on this day in history, three members of the White Rose Group, a nonviolent anti-Nazi resistant group inside Germany, were guillotined in 1943. Sophie and Hans Scholl, age 21 and 24, and Christopher Probst, uh, age 23, had distributed leaflets opposing Hitler in Munich, Hamburg, and other cities, but were spotted and turned into the Gestapo. They were executed after a two-hour trial. Oh, that's sad, bro. Bro, some of these, like, fun facts of the day, they've been getting, like... I don't know. Like, we don't have anything else for February 22nd. 
you know, last year you were tripping out on this day. You know that? Because it was 2-22-22. So now it's 2-22-23. You don't give a shit. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Look at that. Look at that. That's how it plays out. But Chattadonia is still a beautiful day. Uh, Meta investigated by Milan prosecutors for alleged unpaid VAT. VAT? Uh-oh, hot dog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. Where is it? We got any pre more my pre market movers, bro. Where are my pre market movers? Ba da ba ba ba. I had a lot. There's a couple there. Give me a second. But Chad, good morning. There it is. So, a couple of pre market movers for you. Baidu announced a $5 billion share buyback after reporting better than expected earnings. Shares are up 6.7%. Uh, Charles River CRL fell 10% after forecasting adjusted EPS that missed average analyst estimate. CoStar CSGP slumps 13% after News Corp said they are no longer involved in discussions to buy them. Coinbase shares declined 1.1% after the currency exchange reported fourth quarter revenue that tumbled 75% year over year. Uh, interface tile shares fall as much as 2.5 ahead of the bell on Wednesday after Truist analyst cuts his recommendation. Metafast shares fall 7.1 after DA Davidson cut their price target. Overstock declines 8.1 after the online retailer reported net revenue for fourth quarter that missed average analyst estimate. Palo Alto Networks shares rise 9.2 after the cybersecurity company beat across the board. Several analysts uh, raised their price targets on the stock. Sirius XM downgraded a neutral from buy. Oh, yeah, now you bring it up. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Uh, to buy, uh, downgraded neutral to buy at Rosenblatt. Shares are up 0.7. Uh, Terran Orbital, LLAP. Shares surge 80% after the company announced it has been awarded a $2 billion contract to build a total of 300 low-Earth orbit satellites for Ravada Space Networks. And then Wix, uh, shares are up 9.4 after the web company platform gave an outlook that analysts see as strong. And then ZipRecruiter, shares are down 16% after the employment platform released a full-year revenue forecast that was much weaker than expected, prompting a downgrade from Rain. Damon James. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. So those are your pre-market movers. I got a couple plays for you, Chad. I got a couple for you, but first I'm going to have to go to the potty. Yes, I call it the potty still. It works. It's a great name. It's a great name, but I hope you're living good, man. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go. Let's get it, baby. So I'll be right back. Follow me on Instagram at the Trading Fraternity and get ready for the day, baby. The Active minutes are the on the economy. way. What's their recession oh. outlook? Obviously, things have changed since then, but it's good to have a starting point to look at. The problem with the, the minutes, John, is that old saying of it's very difficult to make predictions, especially about the future. I'm a key. Thank you, buddy. As always, Mike, thank you. I went through the data yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening, and just looked at what we've learned since that Fed meeting. Chairman Powell said at the start of the month that the disinflationary process had started. Then two days later, we got payrolls at 517,000, unemployment dropping to 3.4 percent, a big jump in the ISM services index for the month of January, CPI not dropping, CPI looking sticky, PPI with an upside surprise, retail sales, coming in month on month with a three handle jobless claims still in and around 200k and we got the first look at the month of february yesterday with the pmi and that is no longer sub 50 it's north of 50 so daryl i'll ask you that question shall i how stale are these fed minutes going to be later this afternoon i think fairly stale i think michael's right i mean um, all, all the data you just rolled off you know uh, came after the fed meeting i do think it's interesting and i agree with michael's point about you know cleveland's mester and then bullard both were suggesting the Fed needed to do 50. I don't think that, you know, that carried the day and we'll see that in the meeting minutes. Uh, but I also think there's a, a debate raging about what March means. We think it's 25. We think it's 25 again in May. And, and it's probably a coin flip for June for another 25. So the Fed's slowing down to better understand whether the resilient economy reflects time lags from the past tightening or a higher R squared short term terminal rate. Um, but but the Fed is going to be looking for more work needing to be done. I think that's the clear clarion message that's going to come from the Fed meeting minutes. They're not interested in a pivot and pause, and they're not slowing down uh, or stopping, I should say. They're slowing down to that 25 basis point consistent hiking, but there there is clearly more work to do. Jay, in the news conference, Chairman Powell was asked about whether they discussed the pause, and he said, look, to the Fed minutes. And at the time, I think a lot of people thought that maybe the Fed minutes might be mm a platform, the stage for the doves to dance. And now, Jay, a lot of people see these Fed minutes He's as talking totally about stale. The question. How will you interpret when they come oh, out? How will you interpret them at 2 p.m. Eastern time? I got some levels Yeah, John, I'm not going to pay very much attention to them, to be honest. I really haven't uh, for some time. I mean, you know, the Fed has not been particularly accurate uh, with its outlook, so I'm not sure we want to give it 
much more attention uh, than it's due, particularly something as stale as what, what we're going to hear this afternoon. You know, we focus forward at uh, TPW Advisory, and to us, the markets... Well, that was a shitty answer. He said, I don't even care about it, sir. Okay, well, that's fair enough. Again, here are your levels for the day. Uh, we'll go over them, but these should be the levels. Like we are saying, you could be right back up to 4080 uh, real quick, and then again, 4000 all the way down to 3974. I think you could go a little bit lower there, but again, we're going to watch how it plays out. But Chattadonia is game time. I hope you're ready. Are you guys ready to play or what? Are you in the game? Are you focused? You know, so I just need to know your first play of the day. Uh, I would prefer if you keep it serious, but, you know, it's your life, man. It's your life. I'm already hyped. This is game time, baby. Who's hungry? Who's hungry out there? Let me get your first play, Chattadonia. The Twitch did not disappoint me last night or last morning. Why did I say last night? Twitch? Let's go, baby. Spy calls. NVIDIA. Good morning. SPX options. NVIDIA 220. Coin. Boeing. LMT. Armor on. Tesla calls. QQQ puts. SGML. Tesla buyout. NVIDIA calls. Apple 50. Short. MES short. Spy calls. Puts on tech. LMT. Kato shares. Considering NVIDIA. MS. Microsoft. Dash. TSM. NVIDIA. All puts. Palo Alto Networks. Palo Alto Networks. QQQ. Zero day. LLAP. NVIDIA calls. Roblox. Upwork. Tesla. Puts on NASDAQ. Can't afford to play till 2024. It's okay. ES shorts. Sidu shorts. UNG. Spy calls. Holding NVIDIA lawn. Buy do shorts. Cash. Amgen puts. Having Disney call shorting intel closing palo alto shares wix hd tesla long mes palo alto short hut intel put short oil slv ung calls leap 2024 intel long term call 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 rakr share short mes sell my intel shares waiting for the open then playing the data run up then puts maybe nxc calls by do coin palanter spy meta BTG, Nintendo Lawn, Tesla calls, coin waiting for sentiment, wait till the minute, short of TJX, Airbnb put, SPB, CZR if there's upside, Microsoft puts, Intel puts, Boyo, Long, Nat Gas, Dow Long, NASDAQ Long, VIX calls, and Long LMT. Wow. Wow, I'm clapping really loud today. I don't know if you heard that. Wow, I'm, I'm excited, man. This is a good day. It's middle of the week, Chad. So I hope you're ready to finish this out. I got a couple of plays. Uh, definitely going to be watching Intel. I'm actually surprised they're not even down that much. And honestly, today I'm, I, I plan on spending like at least 30 minutes complaining about companies cutting dividends. Okay, I don't even have uh, I don't even have Intel. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just I'm telling. So you're going to hear me talk about that. Surprisingly, they're not down that much. Some of you guys in the chat were talking about the rumor. So shout out to the chat. You guys were literally talking about this like two days ago, a day ago. It was actually pretty wild. So GG for that one. Uh, Palo Alto Networks, again, they're up 9%. That's going to be a good one. Coinbase as well. Uh, we're going to be watching that post earnings. They really haven't picked the direction, and the headline sounds pretty nasty by it. Uh, again, the revenue down 70% year over year, even though they kind of did uh, pretty decent there. And then Baidu, that's the next one. Uh, I'd be watching out for that one uh, just because they announced a pretty big buyback. And then, like we said, with the China stocks and that China straddle, that one's going to be interesting. Then LLAP, uh, this one, they just got some deal for satellites. So I think this one will be a hype play. I don't know if it's going to be like the next RDW, but satellites, $2 billion deal. I think that's enough to get a... Uh, uh, a lot of retail active on that one. And then Toll Brothers, their earnings were decent. I'm surprised nobody really talked about that one. And then UPS, uh, they're actually just looking decent uh, from a, what's it called? Just a price action standpoint. They've kind of been holding and doing nothing here for a while. So they have some other headwinds and then we'll see. But this is very, very big levels for UPS. They either die or they go up here. You could watch FedEx as well too. So those are my main plays. Uh, I think that's pretty much it, Chad. Uh, any any young questions you got? Any young question? Young folk don't care about the divi. They want 200% daily runners. I mean, hey, man, you know, I take care of my grass and I get mad when kids run on it. You know what I'm saying? I need my divi. I'm mad. I, I, I'm glad I never bought Intel, but I'm just like, it's just, this is like a broader, like, weather gauge that we've been seeing. Like I said, I, you know, you could put me on the clock. I'm going to complain about this for roughly 30 minutes here to an hour throughout the day, but it's wild. Dude, they're cutting dividends left and right. Everybody is like either lowering them or getting rid of them completely. And it is just wild. It's very, very wild to think about. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Love the Divi. Nurture it. Amen. Amen. First stage of Intel dying long term. I don't even know the last time they cut their dividend, but you've seen it a lot. But now we have to be very cautious. I mean, that's the one thing I'll tell you uh, is just that. You know, as we're looking for dividends for the long term and then we're still waiting for growth to come down to, you know, decent prices there, uh, you just got to be careful. 
That's it. You just got to be very, very careful now because something that you know offers a dividend today, uh, you got to really make sure that it's going to be there. So in a weird way, I would rather go for lower dividend yields now with uh, less chance of getting cut than not. Walgreens looks nice, but and they're a dividend aristocrat, but you know we got to be careful. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, I know it's weird. TOS said they had earnings after market yesterday, but now it's not there. Oh, for HKD? I didn't see any of that. Mm -mm -mm. Walgreens Divi looks nice, but I'm worried now. I'm worried about a lot of them. Like the only one I'm not, I'm not even really worried about Altria just because like I've told you this for almost a year now, Altria has, uh, they have the ability to sell off a unit to pay for their dividend. I don't think they're in the same, uh, you know, weight class. I mean, but you never know. Uh, however, like Walgreens, I think they're good too. They have a good history, but you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's very sketchy out there. Very, very sketchy out there. Mm -hmm. Why not buy bonds instead of getting the dividend? Cause you don't get any equity and you know, equity is, uh, is the big part of it, you know, beyond just getting the dividend. I don't just want the 4%. I want the 4%, uh, plus the ability to grow, right? It's like we got five, six percent off of Abivai, but then our money also, you know, went up 50, 60 percent. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with a couple of the other ones like Coca Cola. We got 30 percent on it. Uh, even Walgreens is at one point. So it's just like if you could get growth and you could get the Divi, that's that's usually the ideal thing right there. So, Chad, I hope you're ready. We got a big day ahead of us. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be all over the place. But here at the Cult, you know what we do, man. We got to pay homage to a special group of people out there. And from the bottom of my heart, man, I really hope you guys know how much we appreciate the service and sacrifice from all of the veterans of the United States of America. For real, on behalf of the Colt, everybody here and not here, we want to give a huge special shout out. All the active servicemen, past servicemen, anybody who has served this country, for real, God bless you. And thank you for your service. And shout out to the families as well. And Anybody out there who's just hooking up their community, giving back to the community, being a light there, you volunteering, helping out with a nonprofit, you a doctor, a nurse, a teacher, a firefighter, a police officer, a garbage man, you know what I'm saying? And out there, really, even the janitors, bro, stop playing with me, man. We love you guys, and thank you for your service as well. I hope you know you are appreciated. That's what makes America great, man. We, gotta, we, gotta, we live in a great place. You know that? We bless, ladies and gentlemen. But... Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Place your right hand over your heart. Say it with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, baby. Son of the Jets! Oh, it's game time, baby. Oh, or no. Nah. Let's go, Tana. Oh, yes. Good morning. Oh, no. Chad, do you feel it? Let's go. Shout out to Vets, baby. Let's go. All my people holding it down. All my people ready to play. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, Google's dumping and meta. Good call on that. So we got about one minute and 50 seconds before the bell, Chatadonia. I hope you're locked and loaded. What's going on? I remember Google has that case. Again, Meta is being probed by Milan prosecutors for alleged unpaid VAT. So again, that's like their taxes and stuff. VAT, I, I'm pretty sure VAT is like their recycling tax. I don't know. Uh, but Meta is also reacting to that a little bit too. So social media stocks off to a bad start here in the morning. Uh, remember, there's a couple of other plays out there. That can be decent that we're going to be looking at the horn, baby. It's high. Bling. NVIDIA. Remember, NVIDIA has earnings, so I'm sure a lot of you are going to be watching it. Christian Zweigart. Woo. Good morning. What a name. What a powerful name. Jeffrey Cardoza. Good morning, Chattadonia. Cardoza and Chattadonia. We love it. Value added tax. Yeah, value. Vat. Vat. It's like a, like a, like a, like a recycle, Habibi. Like a recycling kind of. Yeah, dividend cuts means companies seeing forward earnings worsening. Boomers will sell to preserve retirement. I don't know. It's very sad. It's very sad. I wish there was a mechanism to, like, warn people of dividends uh, ahead of time. Like, I wish they had a more, you know, uh, easier way to notify people of it all. That would be beneficial. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. So, Chad, 30 seconds here. 
post any plays. Let's source that info, and I hope you're ready for it. Again, uh, you're already starting off the day with James Bullard bullish comments, and we're going to go a pretty decent amount of time uh, until you get the next data set. You already had mortgage applications, I believe, uh, and they came in uh, the worst since 1995. So <laughs> there you go. So that one's actually, I don't know if bad news is good news. Euronext says they are in talks with all funds holders on takeover. Euronext. Round one. Fight. Yeah, Palo Alto. We've made big flips on Palo Alto post earnings. They can move a lot. Again, watch some of the, uh, uh, what's it called, plays? Watch some of the, uh, how you say, uh, the social media plays. Again, they're already moving that LLAP. That is the hype one with the satellites. Uh, at least Amazon's up. Again, Google was down. Palo Alto's 9%. <laughs> Let's see Coinbase. Coinbase is up one. So depending on the momentum there with Coinbase, uh, it's just it's pretty much not moved since yesterday. So keep that in mind there. Coming off that earnings, I think Coinbase has a lot uh, baked into it. And then we need to check Intel as well. Intel. Mm. Amazon. Yeah, Intel's actually going up on that. Apple. Zip is down 17. Apple's up a decent amount right now. NASDAQ is leading 0.3. SPY is up 0.13. And then the Dow Jones is up 0.18. Consumer staples and tech are the leader, up 0.33. Utilities, energies, and financials are the worst on the day. S&P rises 0.1. Where's Microsoft? Microsoft's coming down. They're barely up. I think Amazon and Apple are the ones doing good. And then Google and the rest are actually on the gutter right now. Coinbase is moving up. Coinbase hitting the high. It's hard, dude. That's already 4% in a couple of candles right there. Intel to raise dividend in the future. Gensler, that's, screw you, Intel. Overstock had bad earnings. They're down 8% they turn around that'd be decent actually oh my gosh they recovered eight percent right there so watch out a lot of these like squeeze names or names that sold off that's actually crazy bro coinbase is up four percent uh overstock has recovered eight percent loss from pre-market palo alto that's up ten percent now they are continuing tesla there's ups i still like the ups i want to watch that one here and then spy just still climbing up here first 30 first three minutes you're actually getting your upside moves. You're at 4,005, so you're still very low. The next level is 4017 from yesterday, and the yen has skyrocketed. So uh, there's actually a lot of room for the market to catch up here and rally. We'll find out here in a little bit. I'm, I'm assuming the dollar is down. The dollar is barely down, though, and the yen is up a lot. So that one's going to be interesting. Uh, Microsoft at the low, still green. Disney is on the high right now. Tesla's up 1.1. They're going up. Palo Alto is the best one out of earnings, so it just sucks. It's already up 10, 11, but it is moving. I think they were at a lower price earlier. I think you're getting to this could be a breakout point for them. Yeah, Palo Alto could probably make it all the way up to like 190, 192. And then if it gets up there, you know, $200 is going to be the next one. So Palo Alto has a decent one. The risk to reward is that it's already up there. I'm not talking about Abby Vi today. It hasn't really came up, uh, but we could look at it. I mean, hopefully it leads up here, but they've been chill. They've had a couple of announcements yesterday. Charles River Labs falls 12% at open. Uh, CRL, the biggest S&P decliner. Charles River Labs. Intel. Palo Alto, good ghetto spread. If you have a play on it, yeah, but I'd sell it a little higher. I think that I think it's a good run if it keeps going up. You know, they did very good. Analysts thought they were conservative. The thing with Palo Alto is just that it's up a lot. So if you're just getting the play now, then you're you're spending a lot of money on it, and then you're risking that 10%. But I think you still have 10% to the upside uh, if it is going to break out here. I'd watch one, 190 to 192. If you could get above that, the, it's a clear door to 199, 200. Delta Electronics, full-year net income. No idea what that is. Yeah, NVIDIA, remember what I was telling you yesterday? Watch if it outperforms or not. So if it outperforms, you'll get your little run up there. I would play it, but just watch out just in case we get cucked. I'm going to look at NVIDIA to make a play here. This is at 208. Mm. 
I think you have seven dollars of risk. I don't think it goes lower than two hundred for earnings, and then everything else. SGML that yeah that was the rumor yesterday. Coinbase is coming back up. Kramer pumping that gas on CNBC. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how I feel about that. Let's see. Mm. Okay, we'll get ready for that one. Google. Amazon. And then Palo Alto is still up there. And then Charles Rivers, that's the worst on the day. Square running now. Spy's even coming down here. So three minutes up, three minutes down. And just don't forget, this is at 4,000. So I guess technically you fill the gap at 3,997. So you don't have to deal with too much. But watch out here. Uh, UNP is on the low. Watch any of the railroads. Palo Alto is still able to go up here. Uh, NSC, they're holding up. Again, I just saw UNP on the low. But watch here if you break 4,000 again. I mean, today is a very tight range. Palo Alto is still going 187, more volume. Overstocks is tripping out. But again, that's already an 8% mover right there. Fiverr's running. Watch Microsoft. I think Microsoft is going to be the weakest uh, next to Google and Meta. So if those start giving up, again, alongside Apple, you'll get more pressure on the NASDAQ. But right now, discretionaries are leading. And then tech is number two. Google's staying pinned, though, right there. Palo Alto's about to go to 190 now. So this is, you're getting there. You're close. A couple more dollars away. Hong Kong to extend COVID mask mandate for another 14 days. Or uh, Watch China names on that one. Yeah, watch. No, hold on. Hong Kong is extending their mask mandate. All of a sudden, after a, a shit ton of reopening news, uh, that one is going to be interesting. That one's just weird. That's uh, definitely a U-turn. Yeah, that one's not good. 14 days to flatten the curve. The yield curve? What? Mm hmm. That's from Hong Kong Financial Times. I think that's that's everything we're at. By by do just had earnings, but watch Baba, they weren't as solid. Visa's on the high. Uh DoorDash is coming up here. You think they're messing with us? I don't know. That's again, I think there's just the China opportunity. You have very you have very interesting stuff both ways there. Yeah, Baba dropping. It's hitting. I mean, that was already a quick one. Otter on the high. Didn't OTTR? I think they had a buyout or something the other day. Or they were part of an offer. Spy still at VWAP, though. You're not dumping on that. And bonds are up here. You held 4000 right there. You briefly rent, went below it. So kind of watch. You might get one of those five-minute, 10-minute dances here. But you're already at a key level. Even Palo Alto is taking a candle now on that. Coinbase 4.3. Apple selling off. I think Apple will get killed. Apple is negative. Remember, Apple's earnings, uh, the big thing they were saying was China. Uh, you know, China growth is where they were banking on. Uh, NVIDIA is still kind of holding up, though. Intel's on the high. Shout out to the Divi cuts. They don't care. All right. All right. I bought 25 shares of NVIDIA. I'm keeping it smaller there. I would have usually done 50 or 100, but pre earnings run up 25 shares at 208.38. Uh, the reason is they're just outperforming, as you're seeing. They're not going down the same way. Uh, and they're down 20 bucks from the high. So I'm hoping it does its thing. And then that one obviously sell before earnings. A big red on buy. Do I think it's the China stocks, bro? Tell me why Intel is up two point six percent right now. DoorDash going up. Did Apple flip too? Even the spy did. Apple did it. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Tesla. Tesla's up one per. Tesla's holding up good. 3M. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. 3M. 3M and his little dividend. Mm-hmm. Lyft is popping. Uber. The cost cutting, bro. They're, they're up on cost cutting. Meta went positive? Really? Uh, yeah, they did. Watch Google. They were right at the cusp. I think a lot of things just took a candle there. Amazon. Tell me why Intel is up without telling me Intel is up. Bad news. No, is that the, is that a better way to describe it? Uber, yalla Uber. I don't know how Nvidia is going to do. I mean, the sad part about Nvidia is you've already had so many tech earnings or chip earnings. So they're kind of going to be in their own little league. And then, you know, I'd say half of this run up is just based off of the other earnings and the ones that weren't as bad as feared. But it could be worse is definitely going to come up. Uh, I could say that without a doubt. IQ on the low. Long LMT. I'm already in LMT. I like LMT a lot, actually. So I'm, I've been holding LMT, and like you'll notice, this price, I mean, this price means something. They're just waiting, bro. <laughs> That's it. It went down a little bit. They had earnings in the beginning of the year. Everybody went to growth, and they sold out the safety names. But I'm telling you, LMT just staying pinned at this level here. I mean, this level says a lot, uh, again, in terms of global tensions. So people are waiting for it, but I'm, I'm long on LMT. I'm still in Oxy. That one, we went, we were barely up on it, and then it just flipped heavy. The Fed is going to be at 2 p.m. Eastern. If you scroll up and like the video, uh, you will see the time on the video, which is great, which is great. So we appreciate you liking the video. Thank you for shopping at the Stock Market Live. Uh, we hope you have your long term. Uh, and, you know, thank you for joining our loyalty program by liking the video and getting a long term. Thank you. Amazon pop. CRM is on the high. Uber. Okay, a lot of growth names are going. You low-key kind of just switch gears there. Mm. Mm, all right, that Hong Kong news, nobody cared. You're up. This is a new high of the day. Remember, to fill the gap, you only have to go to 3997. So really, we're probably going to dance in the levels, but 4017 is the next spot. You're at 407. This level's kind of stubborn, but if we just run through it now and don't even respect it, it'll probably get up there. HKD on the high. Amazon's moving again. I like oil, but I think oil is just connected to more of the confusion uh, just with what's going to happen to the economy, rates, uh, and everything else in between. Wow, that's a wild one. So hold on. It's being stubborn at like 407, 408. So watch out for that one. Amazon. Amazon's leading now. Amazon's doing better than Apple. Apple's on the low. All Fund says Euro Next Value shares at 875. Raytheon Co. sees few opportunities for M&A in the coming years. Raytheon to prioritize dividend and buybacks as cash flows grow. RTX. CEO is talking now. Diamondback Energy, they say not seeing upward pressure on service price in 2023. Netflix, bro, I feel like we've ignored Netflix the last couple of days, no? I feel like Netflix has kind of been in its own little world doing its thing. Coin new high? No way. Yeah, coin 7% right off the open. So it looks like people were waiting for that cash open because, bro, they were they were doing nothing pre-market. There was no flow on that. And then right at the open there, you got your run. Them and Intel. Intel's disgusting. TLT, yeah, bonds are going up here. Mm -mm. Didn't they do Coinbase? Didn't do, they did bad in a year over year context. And then I think their quarter was just mixed. I think people were more worried about, uh, you know, the guidance if it keeps going forward. It seems like Coinbase is going to be at the mercy of the crypto market, how it performs. And then even then, uh, if they could actually make money off of it. But then again, too, it's like if some of these crypto regulations end up being better, uh, they're going to, uh, 
you know, what it looks like a problem today could end up helping them out a lot in the future. Earnings run on video. I got a small share on that one. Uber is even coming up a lot. Yeah, I think the China companies are dropping on that news. Not all of them, though. Oh, where's Poly Alti again? They're about to, Palo Alto is about to make the 190 shot right now. So be on the look on that. That one's going to be the big level. Mm. Resistance broken. We going up. Are you talking on the market, man? Like I said, man, all it takes is one day for everybody to get back on it. But we're at a pretty shitty point right now. I mean, we're only seven points away from 4,000. So really, you could get you get safer at 4033. Uh, but 4017 will be your first test. Again, the yen is leading, but until we get up here, I would still say uh, it's we're kind of in no man's land. We're still on the downside from the other day. But uh, again, this is exactly what I was saying yesterday, though. All it takes is a little bit of upside and everybody will forget. But you did have James Bullard kind of backing up the bulls today after backing up the bears not too long ago. Honestly, I think James Bullard's an asshole, quite frankly. I think he just messes. I think he does it every other day. He picks like he's like bullish and then bearish. But Fed rate hike odds are still at 21. Netflix on the high. High tickers running. NVIDIA is breaking out. Watch Poly Alto. Let's see. Coinbase as well. They're already up 7.9. Baidu is selling off from their earnings and buyback news. Oh, Disney 102. Disney just looks straight up. Is Qualcomm getting in on the NVIDIA action? Tesla now back to 200. So Tesla's looking decent. Tesla's at 1.2. I think Amazon's leading, though, out of all the big tech, believe it or not. And then Apple, they might still be red. Bipolar, Bullard, like low-key, man, low-key. He's just testing his soul. He's not even a voter, yeah, right? <laughs> He's just trying to see if people listen to him. He's like, I still got it. I still got it. Dash, Uber, I think Lyft, all of those travel service names are up. Airbnb, not so much. Airbnb, you need to get back to your home of 140, Habibi. Please, Habibi, go. That's where you belong. Go to your home. Amazon, Uber, a firm is on the high. Amazon is actually running. Uber, NVIDIA. Damn, two bucks a share already on NVIDIA. Apple Green. See if you can see any numbers on HKD. People are saying they reported no debt and other stuff. HKD, Hong Kong Dizzle. I remember ZipRecruiter's down 12. Uh, I think they did. Or they see fiscal deficit of Hong Kong 54 billion. No, 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 that's Hong Kong. I put HKD and it showed me Hong Kong, like the actual country. Uh, I don't see earnings on uh, on HKD. AMT Digital US. Yeah, I don't see it. It doesn't show up anywhere. Chad posted the link. It doesn't show up on my scanner. It says this is what they posted is on their website. AMT Digital's first half achieved over 130. Are you sure this is it? Oh yeah, HKD. It's a subsidiary AMT announced unaudited financial results for six months. What kind of earnings report is this? <laughs> huh. So it's unaudited and then it's six months report. Jake. Jake from State Farm, baby. Uh, <laughs> every day, man. God bless you. Let's go. Let's go, Jake. I like him. Good morning, baby. I hope you're living good. Happy Fed Minutes Day. Bonds popping here, too. So that's good. Amazon's still on the high. NVIDIA's still doing its thing. Edgar. We need to get Edgar a gift. Amazon's still running. 
Macy's on the high. McDonald's on the high. McDonald's back to 270. Oh, no. Boeing even up to 275. Let's see. LMT. RTX CEO is giving those guidance numbers. Are giving updates on the company. Pop. Costco. Remember, Walmart and HD. I forgot about that. So, Costco is kind of linked. Costco 505. Uh, what was the other one? Walmart and HD. HD got a price target increase today. Yeah, HD's going up. Remember, they were down like 4% yesterday. Microsoftian. Where is Coinbaseian? Coinbaseian is still based. 8%. It's going higher. Can't stop it. Hmm. You don't want to say it, but the recession fears are over. Nah, man. You've been wanting to say it. I read every one of your messages yesterday. So you trust. Okay. It's nothing wrong with it. It's fine. Nothing wrong with wanting the economy to do good. You know that? As much as I, you know, I love economics and, you know, some things don't make sense. You know, one thing I've always said is just, there's nothing wrong with wanting the economy and prosperity to continue. Okay? So it's okay. Though you don't have to be ashamed because you have been unshamelessly pumping for 24 hours you know what i'm saying so it's just good it's okay but that's that's good or, or that's like a fake appeal to be like emotional maybe that's what you're doing i don't know but either way it's okay google big red again we haven't heard from that court case and then uh like uh what's his name meta Ooh, google that's a pretty decent candle meta has been having the problems with uh uh with italy this morning fiverr's up 21 percent Red on Meta. I think it could be both of those. Again, NVIDIA is still outperforming by a decent amount. Hopefully this holds. Yeah, Meta took Meta and Google are moving hand in hand. Apple's like in the middle. Google has the lawsuit regarding the 230 protections. It's like Gonzalez versus Google. Uh, it's in the Supreme Court right now. It started yesterday. Uh, and they're pretty much talking about liability for social media companies. And then uh, uh, Facebook just got a, a probe from Italian government or Milano. Mm, that type of behavior is at the kids table. Nah. I'm telling you the Twitch channel, bro, is just 100% bears. Like 90%. 90%. That's it. But they're bears. They're the bearish. So, so I don't even think they would pump like that. They would eat him alive. If that guy came into the Twitch chat and started pumping, they would have ate him alive. It didn't even matter. They would, I'm telling you, they would have, bro, they would have brought up the debt increases. They would have brought up the per debt per capita. They would have brought up the yield curve. They would have brought up the default. They would have showed you the hard landing soft land. They would have gone into it. I'm telling you, they would have not. You, that comment wouldn't have survived. That comment would not have survived. Amazon, I don't know why they're mooning, but they were down a decent amount yesterday. Amen, TLT, Amazon, Adobe, all hitting the highs. Adobe's actually low-key running right now. Uh, yeah, Adobe's up 1.2, hitting the highs. It's doing decent. Intuitive medical pause due to volatility, L-U-N-R. And then bonds are still running. SGML, Sigma Lithium, Palo Alto, here's your break, Chad. Again, 188 to 190, you get past 192, you're home free. I really want to play it, but I just, I'm scared of the 12%. Apple flush, new low. Good call. See, that's, again, stock going down. The Twitch calls it out. Thank you. Yeah, Apple is not doing good at all. They're down points. I think it's that, that Hong Kong news. Surprisingly, though, that Hong Kong headline came in and not too many people are talking about it. Uh, Visa did go red there. It's coming down. Oh, where's Microsoft? Etsy's on the high. I think they got to upgrade today. I'm not too sure. Microsoft's kind of doing doing a little dance right there. Big candle up, big candle down. Baidu on the low. CSX is on the low. Procter Gamble and Philip Morris is on the high. And then JD or JO. And then it looks like discretionaries are leading at 0.92. Staples are up 0.5. So in a weird way, defensive names are doing better than tech currently. Uh, materials are up at 0.42, industrials 0.3, energy a quarter, tech a quarter, real estate 0.06, communication 0.08, financials, utilities, and healthcare are barely red. So I guess staples are the only defensives that are up, but the other defensive industries are down. Pretty interesting day.
And then we're up only a quarter and then almost half a percent on the NASDAQ. It's oil. Energy is down. Or no, energy's up. Mm. Oxy. GIS. Again, a lot of value plays keep hitting the high. All out of coin. GG, if you got that, that was a nice couple days swing. Even from when we put it on the watch list. I'm mad. Dude, the coin just when it runs, it runs quick and then just doesn't come down. But then when it comes down, it just kills everybody in sight. Uh, NVIDIA is coming down here. I had $2 a share on that. Now it's coming back down. Russia plans to cut crude exports from its western ports by a quarter in March through February. Sources. Mm -mm -mm. EOG on the high. That's energy related, right? Ah, oh, fuck. I just switched my fucking terminal language to Russian trying to look for Russian news. Why do they even have this as an option? How come they don't sanction this? This is bullshit. Okay, I got it fixed. Bro, I was trying to type in, I was trying to confirm that Russian news for you, and I typed in Russian, and it just automatically switched my language to Russian. It's like, what the, well, there's not a sanction on that? How come you're still letting me use Russian language? I thought there's a war in Ukraine right now, and we have to support Ukraine. Jeez, man. Oh, yeah, I see that on Benzinga, though. That's it. The only, the sources, that's all, that's a Benzinga report. We'll see EOG up. Hmm. Yet. Did I tell you that? I had an Uber driver. <laughs> Bro, this dude was wild. He was Russian. He even asked me. He asked if I was a... He said, you look like a, like you make a music. And I was like, nah, man. Nah, I don't... Nah, my uncle does. But dude, this dude, I was never that scared in my life. But like, have, I had so much fun. He was just this big Russian dude whipping his GMC Suburban, bro. Just honking at everybody. And then just yelling at him. And he was just, he's, he kept, he was just, what'd he say? Bump, not bomba clot. What's the other one? He was saying, I, I know it. He's saying the Russian cuss word just out the window at everybody who was going slow, bro. It was, it was very exciting. Mm hmm. I didn't even tell you the story, too, about the other Uber driver. Bliat. Yeah, bro, he's going crazy. But there was a, uh, I had another Uber driver, bro, and I thought I was going to die. I'll tell you that story in a little bit. You got to remind me and like the video, though. I'll save that story there once we get let's get let's get past this opening candle here, because, again, you're still dancing around and that 407 to 410 has been a little bit more stubborn. If you could build off of this, this will be good. But just don't forget the days where we spend the first 30 minutes and then we kind of break out. So I'd even watch. It's been 30 minutes now, but give it a little bit more time. Baba new low. Watch Apple too. I don't know if that China news is going to hit. Nvidia is coming down now. So Nvidia is uh, still outperforming, but they're giving back some of it. Adobe has been running. I don't know why. Like Adobe has been running good. And then let's see. Poly Alti hasn't broke out yet. Where is Adobe on here? I guess it's a decent price. At June levels, bonds are looking good. And the gap between, maybe if the yen comes down, we come down. But the, right now, this is one of your biggest gaps between equities and the yen uh, in the last, like, two weeks. Garmin after hours. That LLAP is coming on the low. That's the one uh, that got the little satellite deal today. By do flip, NOK leading, NOC. Honestly, NOC has done very good, like, all around. But they still have more. They have more value. They're not near their highs. So, right, But we just need LMT to just rip from here. It did it the other day. It hit right when it went past the 480s. 
it started going to 491, but then we were shooting UFOs out the sky. So maybe that's it. Tesla dying with Bitcoin. I'm surprised Bitcoin, I mean, maybe Coinbase's earnings. That's just crazy, man. Coinbase, that means they're making 75% less revenue than last year. Nah, Bitcoin's still good, though. This is nothing. I'm telling you, I'm I'm shocked by the, the relative strength of Bitcoin. Uh, you have to realize, like, take a look. Dude, the Bitcoin should be at $20,000 uh, if it was going to follow the market. So it already led the way on 129, but if this was going to have any correlation to the stock market... I mean, Bitcoin is, is holding up, uh, honestly, best in class out of any risk asset. Again, it pains me to say that with the short on Ethereum, but uh, it, it honestly is best in class right now for risk assets, at least for the start of this year. Poly Alto, SPY's coming down here a little bit, so watch out. Apple's leading, even Tesla on the low. This is a big level. Watch if the yen comes down a little harder here, but... You're back to 4,002 if you break. That's not good. Again, there's a tight ranges here. So, like, the next four levels are going to be within, like, two points of every, like, literally 399, 397, 395, 393, and then 397. So, really, I would say, like, 3993 is your real danger zone just below yesterday's low. But let's see if it bounces at 400 again. I don't think you're going to have to worry about this. Apple is selling off. Tesla's selling off. Meta and Google they were already selling off in the morning. I think Amazon's the only one that's actually killing it right now, up 2%. And then uh, you have NVIDIA and a couple of others. I think there's one more. I think Microsoft. They may have flipped uh, MO and Philip Morris on the high again. Remember, they had an end of the day run up there out of nowhere. You called the pop and drop perfectly. Recognize me. What you got, baby? What you got? I love you. I don't know if I missed it. Amen. 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 Amen recognize me and you're recognized bro amen get the long term the best way to get recognized is get the long term and save 10 percent. because even if nobody gives you the credit you deserve your long term will work and your long term will be up and then you're going to be you know financially free in the future you know what i'm saying the long term is the best way to be recognized in the stock market the long term will never abandon you Saving 10% will separate you from your peers. That way you don't have to tell them I told you so. You'll be able to say I could show you so. Hence, look at my long-term motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Amen, amen. So I love you, man. Let's go, Alex. Let's go. GG on the shorts. I hope they work, bro. I hope they work, and I hope you respect both sides, and I hope we see you here for the long run. AMAM's going. Nets on the low. NTAP on the low. You have now broken 4,000. 10%. Look at 10% Alex in the house, baby. Amen. Amen. I need that constant reminder. Amen, man. Amen. Let's get it. Tesla, Apple, Spy coming down here. A couple of growth names. Uh, watch if like Poly Alti and Coinbase give up. Again, any of the good runners. Yeah, Coinbase already giving some up. Even Intel now. Intel might go negative. Come on, Intel, you piece of shit. 26 bucks. That's right where it was at the earnings low and dividend cut and they reaffirmed guidance after cutting dividend. My NVIDIA shares are down. We're F. Not really. Just again, you see it. Dude, it was literally 10 minutes ago. People were like, oh yeah, we broke the resistance. And now 10 minutes later, it's just like, like we said from yesterday, I hope everybody could keep the right attitude in place. I mean, it's up to you. You could do whatever the fuck you want if you want to get gassed up on it. Uh, but when it's all said and done, I mean, we have the minutes here at two. I don't know how it's going to move leading into it. But when it's all said and done, though, we got to wait a little bit harder here just to see uh, really, you know, confirmation how the market's feeling. Ah, Fed minutes, the video artist. Let's go, stock trading. Oh, he's back. He's back for the video. Tesla flushing. Let's go. Oh, man. Don't get stock trading started, baby. Good morning, man. I hope you're living good. I hope we live. Do you have a badge? You need to get a badge, too, man. Oh, oh yeah, you got a badge. Okay, I thought you were going to be like Edgar out here just donating mad memberships without the badge. Mm -hmm. Josh told Josh, let me show you. You like that? I'm not a, I'm not a, I told you so, mother effer. I'm a, I'm a, I show you mother effer. That's it. That's the way it goes down. I, don't, I never liked the I told you so mother effer. You know what I'm saying? 
Nobody likes a I told you so mother effer. That's it. That's why some of y'all hated your parents growing up. That's why, because they were like, I told you. I told you. Nah, you got to show, show you. I'll show you the long term, son. I'll show you. It'll look like a mountain, man. I'll show you based off the, the daily life that we live in out here. You know what I'm saying? The the Lord has blessed us and these smart financial decisions and small good decisions. They have added up and have allowed the freedom. I could show you that right there. I don't need to talk about it. I don't need to tell you about it. Amen. Can I get an amen to the 10 percent? Oh, man, don't get me too excited. I'm already I'm already very excited for today. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Amen. 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 Look at the Chad. Look at the Chad. I kind of want a short intel, but twenty six dollars was that low. We hit it once and then it was very difficult after that. Tell you how different. Luis is loving the let me show you. <laughs> Luis is like, that's the best thing ever. He said, let me show you. <laughs> long-term plays, dude. I'm hungry for a lot of long-term plays, but like straight up, man, I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm tweaked out now after these dividend cuts. I don't know how I feel. So, cause like, I'd like 3M. We talked about 3M yesterday. That one's a high yielder. Oh, excuse me. A high yielder with some upside there. But then again, I like MO if it was, if it went down to a lower price. Uh, and there's a, there's a couple of other names I'm looking at, but at this point I might as well just go grab Abby Vi if everybody and their mom wants to cut dividends. So we'll see, or maybe if the bank stocks come a little lower, I'd be down. Uh, somebody brought up T row price yesterday. I like that one. I like Medtronic. Uh, that's another one that, that I was interested in. So, and then J and J, Again, there's a lot of high-quality names you should be familiar with that I'm calling out, uh, but we're going to have to find out. Sadly, we get an – I don't know. Sadly, it's bittersweet because we have so much uh, cash already, but I'm getting – bonds are coming down here. Watch out for that. That's a little four-minute change here since that drop, but we get another deposit, so we're going to see how it plays out, but we just have a lot of cash, and then we're going to find out. Airbnb, I like it at $80. That's the $85, $88 is the only price I've ever regretted not buying it. Every other price, they, they they go back and forth. But, like, if you ever bought in the 80s, your chances of, like, getting mad at buying in the 80s has been very low. You get an eight handle, 90 and below, you don't lose. So everything else is just dealing with Wall Street and the back and forth with it. But I still like Airbnb. But in the meantime, I would get any other things, especially if it comes down. But that earnings was phenomenal. But still not in the game of, uh, you know, not, not fighting Wall Street on their stupid momentum. 89, yeah, that's a great pick up there. Uh, you're about to fill the gap. You're two points away. You're below 4,000 right now, though. Hit me with the Divi. I don't even need the NASDAQ. Airbnb is selling off the 125. I would take Abivi. I mean, preferably, I would want it at $110. But maybe if, like, if the market still stays stubborn, we have a shit ton of cash, nothing's coming down, I'd take it at 130 mm -mm. What makes you uh, hold the long-term stocks that you're sure they will probably sell off? Uh, because you never know. And the whole idea is, is like, that's, it's also kind of part of the discipline of the long term. You act as if you can't change your mind for 10 years. So there's plays I picked up that have gone down in the long term, and I've just never added to them. But there's no point in selling out and doing that. And why? Because being in the stock market for what, like 15, 17 years now, I don't even fucking know. Uh, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of things where even at one point, there was a lot of people who thought Facebook was never going to become anything. There was a lot of people who thought, and I'm not talking about recently. I'm talking back in the day. There was a point in my life where, you know, I bought Amazon shares before any any sort of splits or anything. I was buying it at like two, $300. Uh, and that's way, again, remember the stock split. And people were telling me that stock is guaranteed to go down. And I even thought it was going to go down as well, too. So you just never really know. And that's why with the right balance and budget of it, there's no problem. Uh, that's the thing. You know, some people were asking, too. I don't know if it was you yesterday, but someone was like, 
why would you buy something that's not tried and true in the long term? I do prefer names that have better, you know, like history and that are blue chip names. But also, too, you know, if you have 80 percent of your money in like Boomer, Coca-Cola, Abbey Vice stocks, you could throw 5 percent into a risky name and hold that for 10 years. You never know. You'll get lucky. It's a, again, it's kind of hedging the safety that we have by getting some some upside risk there. So the point is, you never know. And then the fact was, too, when I bought it, I made a commitment to not sell out of it in 10 years. But because if my idea on this, an investment can change in a couple of months or based on the price, that's a shitty idea. Uh, and even if it ends up being down now, you never know where it'll end up. You're dropping now 3995. Get ready here. If you break this low, you have a 20, 20 point window gets opened up. So new low, new low from yesterday. So 3994 again. I think 3974 and 3960 are next levels. That's crazy, actually. Where's the futures? I need to compare this to the futures here. All right, we're not at the futures low, but this is where Bullard was speaking this morning, and then we popped up here. So, yeah, you're starting to dump here. Whoa, 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 whoa. S&P erases gain. NASDAQ erases gain. And bonds are still up. That's amazing. Wow, you haven't seen that one in a minute. Yeah, Tesla, no. I think it could be that Apple China news. Watch, you may see them re- that that Hong Kong news comes out and everybody puts it as breaking news, then that could be it. Otherwise, very, very odd that we're giving up uh, Bullard. Because again, Bullard was very bullish. You're now at the Bullard level. Futures are below 4,000. That's a big deal. They only fell below 4,000 this morning before Bullard spoke. 3989, next level 3974, Chattadonia. So watch out here. Hitting those lows. Apple, I think even NVIDIA gave up too. Uh, NVIDIA is down. NVIDIA actually just went red, too. So down 2 bucks a share after being up $2 a share. Uber, a couple of other names are holding. Again, Amazon's still doing good. Uh, at least the bonds are holding up here. The yen is gassing. Yeah, yen is coming. Well, yen is closing that fat gap. That's the crazy part. Remember, I mean, the yen is still very, very positive. But then euro and pound, everything just took a fat move. Literally every single asset across the world except bonds. All the currencies just took fat ones and the yen, euro, uh, pound. Let's see. So, again, the dollar must be rocketing. Yeah, but dollar's still barely up. So, you still got a little bit more of room. I think these are just jitters, but I'm, I'm very surprised we gave up the Bullard bounce right there. I thought that was going to gas you for most of the day. I think you hit the low. Yeah, you hit a new low. So, now you've traded lower. This was in the morning pre-market digesting everything. Bullard comes in saying 5.35 rates, becoming less bearish than he was. You bounce back up from 399 or what? 395 to 4,020. And now you just gave that all up. And a majority of that occurred in about 30 minutes or 20 minutes or less. We're about 15 minutes shy of one hour. So you're getting your big bounce on the futures. Again, futures fell below 4,000 on the ES. Uh, that hasn't happened since this morning. Mm, very big move so far. Again, top to bottom, NASDAQ has already moved about three quarters of a percent. But right now, SPY's barely red and Dow's barely red at 0 0.05. Meta to cut thousand more jobs, thousands of more jobs. Watch out for that. They could pop on that. Yeah, they've been selling off in the 190s, too. Mm -hmm. Meta, more job cuts announced. Or Again, it's just a Washington Post article. So you got a big candle after that flush. That flush was huge. And then Tesla's still going down. I'd watch Apple, too. Apple is into the low. Starbucks is into the low. Intel is chilling. I still have ACAM, yeah. I'm hold I'm a, I'm going to hold ACAM for a decent amount of time. Uh if you remember when I held ACAM in the past and then Nvidia I'm going to sell out before close uh with no matter what. 
Uh, I think it'll go to $200 worst case scenario. If it goes lower than that, that'll suck. But I, I'm pretty much going to, if it goes lower than 200, I'm going to wait till the, the end of the day. But I'm, I have a kind of a mental idea of what's going to happen with it. Google, I mean, they're dealing with the lawsuit. And then uh, Meta had some earlier bad news. Meta's coming down, though. That job cuts candle ain't really taking it too crazy there. And then O is still up from their earnings yesterday. Tesla was just at 199. Tesla was just at 215. But granted, last time, last time the spy was at 400 a couple weeks ago, the Tesla was at 140 dollars. So, I mean, Tesla is definitely outperforming. UNG's popping. Kalu on the high. Why does that sound so familiar? Kaiser Aluminum. Zim. AMC on the high. Honestly, AMC better make a lot of money. I don't know what Adam Aaron is doing, bro. I can't believe I spent that much money at AMC. I was shocked. Bro, I thought it was going to be like low budget shit, like the stock. I thought they were going to be offering me this and that. I thought I was going to go sign. I thought I was going to buy my movie ticket, get a, a tenth of an ounce of gold from the gold mine. And I thought he was going to offer me ape shares and then another warrant if I stayed and watched another movie and paid him $12. And that didn't happen. I ended up spending like $70 to go watch a movie and to get me some fucking Sour Patch Kids, bro. And I'm like, it's the same price at these boozy ass movie theaters. It was crazy, bro. It was crazy. I was very disappointed. So he better be making a lot of money, honestly. That I, from a financial standpoint, I was impressed. And I was like, y'all just, y'all robbing the shareholders and robbing the families, man. Y'all better be doing good. 3993, new low on the futures, bro. You're dumping right now. Three nine eight six. So you got about ten more points to the lows, but this is a this is a big shift uh, considering where you were at. I'm looking from the pre market lows now. This is just getting bigger and bigger. So I think it could be Apple leading a little bit of the way. The consumer staples are holding up now. Utilities, uh, healthcare, financials, and uh, industrials are still red though, but they're coming back up. The staples are number one on the day. So look at the Dow Jones. You do have more. Uh, defensive support out of today. Meta's hitting a new low again. Job cut news is not helping out there. Yeah, like Procter Gamble still on the high. Uh, what was the other one? Like MO and Philip Morris. Like MO's just rocketing into this. So not everybody's getting clapped. The minutes have not uh, came out yet. At least the bonds finally dropped there. And again, we were just going over it. The yen came down considerably. There's still a very large gap, though, between the yen and the market. But all of the currencies in this little, like, what? That was like a 17-minute window. Uh, currencies in the markets fell. I mean, the SPY just went 410 uh, to 39.85. That's 25 points there. FTC pushes back on Voyager sales, cites marketing probe. PRG holdings rise as first quarter outlook uh, tops expectations. IBM's decent. They have good dividend, but they're also, I mean, they really haven't done much over the last couple of years. So I think 3M, you've actually got the break. I think 3M has more value. And 3M is holding up today. MO keeps going up. That's another staple that just keeps running and then utilities are green materials and now industrials if healthcare goes green then there you go discretionaries are only down 0.5 though 0 0.05 what if we get some big breaking news that makes the fed a non-event happen once last year it could happen but i i, I mean it's going to be either china or russia shit it's going to be global tensions related or I can't think of anything else at this point. Or like, again, the China, that HKD news, or the, uh, not HKD, the Hong Kong news on uh, the mask. That one's a little bit weirder, but it's about it. Even then, the minutes, uh, I think the minutes are a bigger event than usual this time. But you have to also understand, you know, usually the minutes shouldn't do much. Even that one guy we listened to in the morning, uh, they were even just saying they don't really care about it. So that's part of it, too. Mm. 
moment of truth for Team Pivot. So that's going to be the key on the uh, the minutes here today is that, one, we're going to see what their conversation is in regards to pausing because that was the other question that the guy had. And then the other part will be any clues towards uh, 50 basis points, believe it or not. Wingstop sees favorable commodity cost in the wing, in the wing term, in the near term. <laughs> I'm going to be real. Powell hinted the Fed minutes were going to be surprising. He said, wait for the minutes. I mean, I, I, there hasn't been too many questions that Powell has answered where he said, just wait till you get the minutes in three weeks. But then again, the argument is, I'm just telling you right now, uh, you know, on Wall Street, mother efforts could spin the minutes any way they want to. Some people say the minutes are lagging. Other people say they use the minutes to communicate what they didn't communicate at the meeting and they backtrack it. So there's a lot of theories around it. Uh, but it is it is not common where Powell is telling you, yo, bro, check out the minutes in three weeks, you know, quote me, boom, and then dips out after becoming the most dovish dove you've ever seen in two years. So it's going to be debatable. I think it will be a big event. I th I'm expecting big moves initially, and then I think it's going to fade away a little bit. And then really it just kind of... Uh, it's like if when you know, you know, and that's kind of what I'm waiting for in the minutes where it's like if he says anything that just is undecisively, unobjectively, or, you know, there's no question about it, it is just straight up, uh, you know, bearish, then there you go. Or it's straight up, he starts raising Fed futures, you'll know right away. Otherwise, if it's dovish, just like last time, just don't forget, remember when we were listening last time, dude, I was like, oh, yeah, this is dovish. Oh my gosh, what's happening? You know, you'll know when you see it, and that's kind of uh, what it is right now. But they're, they're, the the minutes are heavily contested in terms of what they provide, whether they're forward looking or past looking, how big of an event it is, and then quite frankly, the average move on the minutes is usually uh, a lot lower. Hmm. Eight percent on UNG, so that's the crazy part, man. I don't know if you guys saw the watch. Did you guys watch the watch list yesterday? Y'all didn't watch the watch list. Y'all didn't watch. It. I hope you watch this. Second link in the description. It's for the people. But I, you know, I'll tell you. I'm telling you, the biggest. This is the biggest tin foil in the market, and it relates to. It's not even tin foil. It's real. It's accurate. It's literally related to every asset you could think of right now. Uh, bonds, treasuries, gold. The dollar, oil, natural gas, aluminum. I don't know if y'all feel me. Can I get can I get fifty likes out here? I'll take a hundred if you're feeling generous, but I'll take a hundred. That's it. Fifty likes. I'll repeat to you what I said on the watch list. I'm telling you, it's wild. That's it. We're just looking for fifty likes out there. And I hope you guys are ready for the minutes at two PM Eastern. We are gonna be covering all of it. Oh yes. Oh, yes, baby. I love you. I'll give you a like. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you. That's what I'm talking about. We need more people like you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We need more people like you. You wish you could like the video. I feel you, man. Dollar pop not showing up on UUP. It's probably, I think there's a lot. Yen. I'm just watch the yen have that bounce there. You're going to get back up to 3997. It's crazy how much lower you went. Yeah, but here it is, the CFTC, bro. So straight up, ever, do you guys remember that ION hack? It was like ION trading. It was like a UK trading firm or whatever. But they got a ransomware attack about a couple weeks ago. It was like towards the end or middle of January. You should, uh, ION, you should have heard about that. Yeah, well, ever since that hack, even though they paid the ransomware, the CFTC has still been halting all data. So like straight up, given after that hack for the last month, we're talking a solid month or longer on CFTC data, whether it is bonds, natural, this is natural gas. You have no idea who is holding, buying, or positioning on natural gas right now. And this is usually data everybody would have every single day, every single week. So you don't know based on the counterparties, who's taking this, who's taking that. Same thing with treasuries. That's what the, the other quote is saying. They're like, you mean to tell me 
that the odds of a Fed pivot, look at this. You don't have any positioning data at a time when Fed pivot bits have vanished. So like the, the fact that the bond, like I'm telling you, it's very wild to see that the bonds went from 50 to, you know, cutting rates to now pricing in more. You don't even know how people are, are buying. You don't know if it's a hedge. You don't know if it's speculative. You don't know if it's a hedge fund, big money, a pension. You used to have this data for the last, but for the last month now, most people have been trading blind without it ever since that hack. So it's a pretty wild thing to think about. So if we would find out. We would find out now. No, they want to. They want to unhalt it. They just are having difficulties until they get everything resolved and find a way to prevent it from happening. They can't. They're not going back to the the original way that they've done it. But it's just uh, at the end of the day, though, it's like all of these bond plays, oil, natural gas. You don't really know why they're moving how they are, technically speaking. You know, it could be based on other reasons, but there's a lot of traders either sitting on the sideline or they're taking advantage of this, but they're not, you don't, you don't know what it is. Like, that's just like, quite frankly, the Fed pivots that have changed so drastically and you don't know if it's a hedge and you don't know why somebody did that. And it's pretty wicked to think about. So here's the headline for why you just dropped. Even though we're bouncing right back up after that little mini flush. Uh, U.S. stocks turn red with ugly earnings outlook. Today's drop in yields is doing little to help stocks as investors weigh disappointing earnings outlook and wait for the afternoon Fed minutes. The S&P reversed earlier gains to trade lower. Stocks took longer than bonds to get the message that central banks are laser focused on hiking further to quash inflation. U.S. equities and treasuries are now joined at the hip again and look stuck together at least until this Fed cycle is finished. Fourth quarter earnings may be better than expected, but the outlook is still pretty ugly with analysts projecting deeper declines they also didn't lift the S&P as usual. Fourth quarter tied to the smallest earnings season reaction in either direction since 2018. Data compiled by Bloomberg shows and a lack of faith in earnings is contributing to a caution in stocks. Uh, Peter Diotris noted that the S&P's year-over-year EPS growth has slipped to the negative side now. The S&P looks fragile ahead of the minutes. Apple and Tesla are the biggest decliner in terms of index points and key site tech. Uh, fell the most on record as results show weaker trends in orders. Consumer staples are leading gains but have trouble withstanding declines in energy and tech. Like boomers getting gold and withdrawing their investments. I think they did that like two years ago, dog. <laughs> that you know how many boomers are like, I, I'm not going to do it. Look at the market. These guys are stupid. What, 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 what the fuck's a GameStop, huh? Yeah, get, get me out of here. Nah, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to retire. I'm going to just see I'm going to buy me gold and wait till it crashes. And then maybe then I'll live off the gold. Who doesn't want to live off the gold, huh? Tim Rouse. Says a uh, former Fed vice chair Richard Clarita writing from his old new perch at PIMCO. Our view maintains that they've already done the most of the heavy lifting they will need to do before they pause rate hikes later this year. Ah, uh, Clarita saying they're going to pause. That's kind of a bullish Timmy tweet. Timmy's trying to get out the, the bullish comments there. Honestly, bro, I just think they're massaging the market. Like, that's it, bro. This is like some aged Wagyu, bro. Like, it gets too high. They're like, all right, bring in the Bullard, right? You know, they're like, oh, Bullard, oh, never mind. Oh, actually, we might bring back 50, and then it starts dropping, then it starts flushing, then they're like, oh, you know, maybe we only go to 5.35, and maybe we do pause at the beginning or the end of this year. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, no, I don't know. RTX, they had good guidance uh, from CEO earlier today. Uh, the gaslighting, yeah. That was more in 2022, though. Like, this, this year has more optimism. Just don't forget, though. Like, 2022, 
I hope you guys don't forget what happened in 2022. Like for real, I really hope you understand that from a market perspective is that every idea got steamrolled last year. You just don't forget that. They made everybody look stupid. Everybody from big money to small money, but just don't forget. Like that's why last year was more gaslighting because you would be right and then you would still end up wrong. They would go and they would make it where every, whether you were long or short, you got steamrolled every three months. I, I just, So I hope you don't forget that. Because that is very, that's why this month so far, we haven't done it just yet. Uh, but it definitely was uh, was something there. Yeah, you could have made money. I mean, we made money too. Not only did we get our long terms, the trading account, you know, we did amazing actually. But it was still the first half of the year I was getting steamrolled because ideas that were right ended up being wrong. And then if you didn't have conviction, you looked right for one day and then you were wrong the next day or you looked immediately wrong and then it would ultimately come true just a couple weeks later. It was just so it just don't forget that's kind of the market we're coming off of. But the last two months for now, it's like it's kind of been reminiscent of that, but more so kind of, you know, people have been focusing on the light at the end of the tunnel rather than bear market rally and bear market punching everybody in the face. Mm. All right, bro. You just gave up that little rally. You're coming back into this pretty hard now. Again, 3987, bro. These moves are wicked. So yen is hitting a new low. Spy's coming down. You're at 3987. Uh, next level is 39.74, then 39.60. They really gonna make me pull out this chart. So like 39.74, right here. That's another level, and then 39.60. But I'm surprised that we're moving pretty fast right now. So you're about to hit a new low. Again, minutes. You have a long time. It's only been one hour right now. Literally one hour, one minute. Volume is pretty decent. It's above average. Let's see what these minutes are about to do. This is crazy, though. You're now getting into, again, uh, the where we were at end of January. But now this is your Thanksgiving level, like right on the dot. But yeah, O did good on their earnings. They actually, I think they raised guidance, too. Mm, new low on that 3985 39 21 3985 so you're going down here that's it a couple names are holding up a little better microsoft's on the low let's see nvidia nvidia is hitting a new low there too microsoft is still at the low they're holding up the banks they gave up yesterday i wouldn't trust the banks right now i still really really like them i think they should be benefiting off of this but it looks like you're shifting now like healthcare is starting to go up and a little bit of the uh, the consumer staples. Those are your leaders right now. Meta flush, big volume. Even the spies flush in here. It's not like flushing per se, but I mean, you you know, you just went up again, 10, 12 points, gave it back up in four minutes, and then hit a new low. But your every low is getting broken, and you're setting a new low. But these are big swings, so keep that in mind. And volume is not too light, so you got a lot going on. You got a lot going on right now. Uh, and again, discretionaries are still holding up decent, but uh, energy's down 1.3, and then tech is now the worst, down 0.5. NASDAQ's only down 0.3, honestly. It's in a weird way. The candles are big, but when you look at the numbers, this day is tiny so far. So I really wouldn't freak out just yet. Hmm. GPK, I haven't looked into it. Harrow Health shares fall after Bonita's short HRO. Bonds and stocks. After today, definitely. We'll see what happens with the minutes, but that would be most ideal. Stocks come down, bonds come back up here. We'll be decent. I love you, but you stress me out sometimes. I'm sorry. Honestly, though, I... 
That's a personal problem. That's it. Mm -mm. I think all I've said was just chill. I said both. I think I just said it. I won't even freak out yet. Definitely a personal problem. It's okay, though. We'll make it through. ECX, big pop. Story. You do be stressing people out. I mean, Habibi, don't be a little bitch, you know? I love you. I love you. I give you a hug. What kind of... What what are you? What do you mean I stress you out? How you get stressed? If you get stressed by people talking, you have very big character problem there. The world will control you, my friend. The world will control you. You know, I mean it. I say it respectfully. I tell you. If you were my son, I'd sit you down. I'd say, stop this. I say, people talk. Everybody talk. You know, people get excited. People don't get excited. What's wrong with you? Huh? You know, calm down. Calm down, Habibi. Calm down. Mm. They need their safe zone. No, but for real, though. I mean, we've gone through a lot, like I was just telling you, for the last year. You know, if you will get easily stressed out, man, I again, the only way to get tricked off bullshit is to believe in it. I really hope that you get your mental in the right place. Uh, even then, I think I'm even pretty monotone uh, from time to time. But when it's all said and done, you know, get ready. It's going to be a long couple of years but I hope you're not getting uh, too swayed by either comments, excitement in the middle. And if it is, uh, I, I guarantee you, if I'm stressing you out with anything I say, you are trading with way too much money. And what I mean, it's the same exact thing when people ask me about plays. Like straight up, y'all have watched me take wicked drawdowns. Plays go down $38,000. Uh, and it's just not like you got to be able to handle what you handle there. But, uh, you know, that's like me getting stressed out. Imagine being $30,000 down, $40,000 down, and then you have to watch every bullish comment. And I'm like, you guys, you guys are stressing me out. Stressing me out. Oh, man. No, 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 no. You, you, only you will stress you out. Okay, baby? So that's it. You got you to gotta have the control. You got to have the control. And if it's uh, pretty much money and emotions correlate very, very well. I've known it. Too much money, too big to handle. Higher emotions, harder to handle emotions. Lower amount, a, a budget you're comfortable with, ain't nothing going to stress you out. Nobody will say anything to you. Ain't nobody going to mess with you because you're not really, you're not, you know, again, your skin in the game theory, your skin in the game shouldn't be tied to uh, comments, others, opinions, whatever else it may be. Hmm. This talk is stressing me out. Y'all just grew up with white families, I think. If I ever said I was stressed out, I would get slapped. And guess what? I learned not to get stressed out because I get beat. <laughs> That's it. We were told a very simple. What do you mean you're stressed out? You live in America. You have a food. You have a house. You have all of this. What are you talking about right now? What are you being stressed by a talk? A conversation is stressing you out? I came to Egypt from Egypt with the $20 to a New York City. $20 in my pocket. You think I stressed out? They say, oh, the economy. I don't know what the fuck economy is. Mm -hmm. You way? You may? U-M-A-Y? What's that? Investor Equity Ultra Buffer ETF? It's not even moving. Bonds are going here, so watch out. Watch with the yen, too. Old heads don't believe in mental health. I do believe in mental health. I definitely do. I, that's bro. I get massages. I chill out. I like creativity. I like. I, I do believe in it. I don't. I think you shouldn't get burned out too. But there's a fine line between mental health and being a little, a little bit too. Uh, <laughs> it's just you can't. Nah, 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 nah. You know what I'm saying? There, you have to have a higher standard, is what I would say. You should definitely take care of your mental health, but there's definitely uh, you should have a high standard for the max for what you're the minimum you're willing to accept, and how you're willing to work, and what you're willing to let get to you, uh, and everything in between. I mean, 
not telling you to sacrifice yourself uh, for something that doesn't make sense, but you definitely, I mean, there, there is a limit in mental health. You can't use that all the time to, uh, you know, justify behaviors that are hurting you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's, that's really what it comes down to. Take care of your mental health and don't feed things that, that hurt your mental health in the long run by, you know, constantly thinking you're stressed and putting your body in a stressed environment when it's not really a stressful situation. Again, uh, like I'm even pointing out here today, uh, the market is down 0.23. <laughs> so this isn't even a big day. Like I'm saying, the candles are big, but this isn't even that stressful, uh, believe it or not. So, you know, it's not even, uh, it's not even anything to trip on. I think the minutes will be more exciting there, but you know, to get stressed in this situation there, you know, just make sure, make sure you don't get in the habit of that. Cause that will, that'll hurt your mental health in the long run. Mm. Mm. Cash secure puts. I sold the calls, so I'd like them. I like. I don't know about puts unless you could get a wait till the stock like really starts dro dropping, and then I think you could do it. But I sold the uh, covered calls. I was pretty happy with that. They only went up like ten twenty percent, I think, which is a decent amount. But covered calls was the was the move there a couple days ago. Like I was saying on the watch list, just like dude, you had a lot of gains. Things were still holding a lot of uh individual stocks were going crazy and I figured I would, uh, I'd run it. Uh, but I don't know cash. I don't like puts though in a weird way selling puts. I just, I would rather hold the cash unless the premium makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, unless like you have to really incentivize a put sell to me where it's just like, you have to be giving me a shit ton of premium to buy it. So like, I don't know, like, let's see where Airbnb is at. See, it's like, I, I like selling the ones with time, but it's like, let's say I sold like an 80, I get $400 to agree to buy, uh, you know, a hundred shares of Airbnb. That's decent, but uh, you know, it would have been better at like maybe at $1,200, 1400, but I don't know if that's worth it because in the next year, can I find something better to do with that cash than buying the stock on the downtrend? If that, if worse came to worst, if it did go up, you would get rewarded, but for the most part, maybe you could do it. I know a lot of people try to say do the short term, uh, but like even then, I don't even know what you would get paid. Yeah, like you're getting paid 15 bucks for every $8,000 you put down. I just, I don't think it's a, a solid return. I think you could get other stuff. Physical health stress is bad for you as McDonald's. Yes, cortisol. You increase cortisol production. I don't know if it leads to hair loss, but that's, I think it does. But I don't know why I lose my hair because, like, I'm straight up. I think, I think I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? I'll be living. I'll be vibing. But my hair keep going. Mm -hmm. It's cool, though. I actually, bro, I brushed my hair the other day. And I put my, my, my back hair over my front hair like I'm Donald Trump. And it actually worked. It don't like I, I got to like low key. Uh, I got to cover up some of the, the balding up there. And I was very excited about that. I got a new hairstyle, you know, so that's that's another tip for you. If you got any extra hair back there, you know, maybe if you move it around, you know, you might be able to to, you know, it's an optical illusion. No, I looked like instantly like five to seven years younger. I was very impressed with myself. No, I'm not talking like back hair. I'm saying like hair in the back of your head. What kind of animal do you think I am? This guy was, you think I'm taking my back hair? Like literally just little hair strands on my back and put it? No, man. Jeez. <laughs> he was like, damn, man, Josh must have an impressive set of back hair for him to be able to accomplish that. That's amazing. Mm 
Mm. That'd be dope, though. You know what I'm saying? Roblo. Bro, that Roblo covered call, we already made 50% on it. And it was a yearly. That was a good one, too. I'm telling you, those covered calls a week or two ago, I'm, I'm glad we did it. I think the Uber, I wish that one did a little better. Lunar's up. Wow, what was the news? Didn't Lunar have something? Amazon. CME to launch a nickel contract with prices for new platform. Yeah, Amazon's leading. Amazon's been on fire all day. Everybody else went red. Amazon held that 2%. Do you take call? I didn't take profits on any of them yet. I hold them usually. I like to hold them till there's like you get to squeeze all the juice. But once you get like 50%, it goes a long way. I still have Redfin, but remember I sold that covered call early. So the Redfins, uh, they're still uh, they're still down. and But again, we're still up like 150% on the shares. So that's why. I'm surprised how Redfin is even holding. I'm actually quite shocked. Again, a lot of these earnings, they've done this where they pop up, they'll even drop on the earnings and then hold that level. Like, where's Shopify? Like, Shopify gave up a little bit more, but they're still holding a lot of that premium. I still have the Uber covered call, too. It was decent. I mean, the whole idea here was, you know, we had momentum. You got to, you know, we got to get some money back, and then, you know, we'll see. Because even by the end of the quarter here, maybe a couple, oof. They're trying to attack me. Even by the end of the quarter here, though, uh, it could be uh, pretty decent. So, like, the Redfin covered call is down 80%. So, that one went up because, again, we're still up 140 on the shares. Uh, the Uber covered call is up 1%. So, that one actually didn't move. And Uber stayed relatively stable. And then Airbnb, that covered call is up 20%. You made 100 bucks on it. Oh. HBI, I'm out of it. I would not touch it. That was our that was our first crash course in dividends getting cut. Made me really sad, man. Made me really sad. That play was such a hustle because like I wish I bought so many other things. And now it's cheaper. That's the crazy part. But again, they don't pay a dividend anymore. So I don't know why anybody would hold this. Yeah, Roblo's working its way up. They're barely green. Coinbase went negative after that 6% move. Where's Tesla? Amazon is on fire right now. I'm surprised. Amazon's like doing a pre-earnings run-up. Like, where are you at, NVIDIA? Three nine nine one. Again, the candles here, the waves are bigger, but the overall day is small. Nasdaq's only down 0 0.06 actually right now. So let's see. Three nine nine six is your level to the upside. Three nine seven four is your next level to the downside. And let's see where it goes from here. Yeah, Meta announced a couple thousand job cuts or thousands more of job cuts, but it, this it was like right here, and then it came down, and then it's kind of a little bit above there. And the bonds are fighting. The more recession type data. It's funny, nobody brought up like there was one set of data today, the only set of data today that was awful, and nobody brought it up. Or I'm, I was like, come on, real estate bears, where are you at? Where are my real estate bears at? I need you to like the video. 
Real estate bears. Come on. You want to hear something extremely bearish on real estate? Let me get that like button, man. Oh, yes. Chat on Twitch for 11 months, bro. Surprising, right? I think we started around March, April last year. Yeah, bro. Hit that like button. Hit that like button on my real estate bears. Where are you at? Only 20? There's only 20 real estate bears? Wow. I thought there was a lot more. No way. Okay. There you go. 50 real estate bears. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, to all my hit is that be bearing it up. All right, that's decent. I thought there would be a bigger showing. I thought there'd be a way bigger showing of real estate bears. Uh, here's the thing. Mortgage data today dropped 13.3%. That is one of the lowest like month over months. I mean, it was a little lower in 2020. And in 2015, you've seen mortgage applications drop like that. But this is like the to in total... This is the lowest amount of uh, people looking to buy a home since 1995 uh, based on that data. It's pretty wild. So that was bad data. Maybe it was good reaction, but not so much after seeing that. But it's pretty wild. What time is the Fed? LOL. Is that is that because you did you like the video? If you scroll up, you'll you'll see it. You will you will definitely see when when the Fed is. Mm -hmm. Short Home Depot. Well, just because people aren't buying homes doesn't mean they're not remodeling them. But HD just had a pretty bad earnings. But, you know, most people uh, upgraded it and they kept buying it back up here. We'll see. I just saved enough money to buy a home right before the rate hikes. Guess it's time to wait a few years. I think you should just always, once you got the money in your hand, you can just keep shopping and just don't overpay for anything. That's what I was saying yesterday is like, Real estate's a very slow game. Like, even if you're like, oh, I know what real estate's going to do in 10 years. This is going to create my financial future. It's like, even if you go buy 10 houses right now, you still got to wait to for anything to happen. That's why I love real estate. It's just like stocks uh, in the sense where, you know, you keep shopping, be on the lookout. You'll be able to go back in time. You know, there's going to be three, four, five, 10 years of real estate, and you're going to watch different ups and downs. But the idea is to go back in time. Just like we did with Meta, where I was telling you with a lot of these long terms, it's like, yo, if you could go back and buy a, you know, a property and find it at a at a price it was at in 2016, 17, 18 or earlier, that's where you're able to, to do very, very well. So just like I would just keep shopping, you know, and just don't buy anything at the all time highs and, you know, be on the lookout. But you have you got time, you have months and you have years to find that deal. And when you do, it will be probably one of the uh, the best investments you'll make in your life. Real estate and dividends, baby. Oh, man, you make it sound so old. Make it sound so old. But yes, 100%. And a little bit of growth. That's what I'm saying. Once you get that established, uh, you know, you, you do what you got to do. Hmm. Real estate at best is 2021 prices. It depends. I mean, again, the beauty of real estate is the the amount of supply is low, but you would be surprised what people, like there's house deals everywhere, and then there's houses in the worst condition that, you know, it, it does, it takes a little bit of work. Like, I don't know, like Carissa, you've seen her talking about how she brought up to value her house. She got a house, she fixed it, did all of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So... It's like, you will be surprised. I mean, go look at that one, the flip I just did there with lending tips. He posted some videos there. That was one of them. He did another one too, but it's like, bro, you could take uh, the worst house ever and in 30 days make it look brand new. But a lot of people are willing, you know, they could still get hundreds of thousands of dollars for a house in awful condition. And that's, that's it. So it's like, you, you would be surprised. You could go back in time. That's the philosophy I say. Just go back in time. Transocean shares drop on larger than expected fourth quarter loss. Creative was talking about that yesterday. That one actually hit. Mm-hmm. 
And then Amazon still running. TNDM on the low. Intel Spy is back at VWAP now. So you're above the 39.96. Last time we went to 39.98, then sold off to 3.983. It's about 8 o'clock almost, so 30 minutes till power hour, still below 4,000. You're higher than where you were pre-market. So there you go. Not too bad. 4,000 is broken on the futures, but still below it on the SPX. We'll see if that changes. There you go. Set a new high there. So you set, didn't set a new high there. Set a new low. Oh, uh, you're about to set a new high here. If that rejects, that won't be good. Not power. Euro close. Did I say power hour? I mean, euro close. That's why you shouldn't diss the just merge SPACs. They're low float after redemptions. Crazy things can happen. I'm not here for the crazy things. You know what I'm saying? Where it's just like, unfortunately, like the statistics of companies that just SPAC, they're all low. So it's like, I, I want to say four out of every or three out of every four SPAC companies that have post emerged, they're all down uh, no matter what. That's uh, so they, they sketch me out, but that's the, that's my only problem with it. So it's not even like, you know, I don't doubt that they can move a lot and go there, but for like the longer term investments, like a, ma a solid majority of them have not withstood uh, following. Now, granted, that goes back to what I was saying when someone asked me, like, why don't you sell out of certain things? Because it's like, you never know. I, I wouldn't be surprised the ones that actually stay in the game. You know, three it may take a couple of years, but it doesn't mean that they're damned forever. Uh, it's just, though, it, it has been a trend that I've noticed. So I, I just see it as an uphill battle. That's all it is. But it's definitely, uh, there's definitely a, a, a pattern with them that I've noticed and a, a lot of people have over the last two years or so. They were good. They were great for a little bit. Amazon. Amazon's the one leading. Everbridge, EVBG's on the high. And then bonds going up. You weren't. No, I traded some of the SPACs, and that's, but that's why I quickly learned. Like, DraftKings was the first. I didn't want to buy because, like, you know, back in my day, SPACs were scammy. So, like, that's, that's why it was so funny when it hit 2020, 2021. Because, like, if you were been on Wall Street, a SPAC is just like, you knew it was like a scammy way to raise money. And then all of a sudden, it, that became the most popular instrument to go public in, in, in the year. You were made, you saw more SPACs unloaded than any other time in history. So I got in on them. I got in on the UWMC. I got scammed on that one. I, I say scammed, it just, again, you lost on that DraftKings. And there was a couple of others. But then as I started, you know, seeing it, the SPACs just had a much more difficult time staying afloat, even with performance. It was just, uh, there's just a lot of supply and then who's controlling it. It's just a whole weird thing. Sadly, I mean, again, and I don't know if this should say a lot or not, the best performing SPAC, I believe even to this day, is D-Walk. It was Donald Trump's SPAC, and it still hasn't even fucking merged. And even then, it's coming down to that 10, again, after enough time, it just finally gives it up. And honestly, what happened to D-Walk? Nobody talk about that. But there was it, Lucid. Lucid's decent, actually. I think that's one that actually ended up doing good from a SPAC perspective, but... When you look at it, you're actually below the SPAC price. I forgot what it was prior. So it's hard. It just they, There's an uphill battle for them. Uh, that's just the way I look at it. So I don't doubt them in the long term, uh, but it's definitely going to, uh, you know, it's going to have an uphill battle. Qscaler. But, like, do you guys see what I'm... All of them are below the SPAC price. I think MP, that one was a SPAC. I think that one's actually holding up. But there's a lot of them. I think DraftKings is above their SPAC barely. And they were a SPAC way, way earlier. Which was crazy. And I was very hesitant on that. Mm. 
Let's buy at VWAP. Did Apple bounce? We ain't hear anything on the other one. Yes, I'm still in EBS. I was down two bucks a share now. They scammed me yesterday. That was looking good. Dollar coming up. Emergency bond auction. They've done it a couple times. I mean, I think Japan's next event is when you hear from the new guy. I mean, you still got, I think, two more months of Karuda. Yeah, but then, you know, we want to see. That's what I was thinking of last night, actually. You know, you, if you drop me that like on that video, I'll give you a nice little theory here if you're interested in the yen. Uh, I won't waste your time, though. It's very simple. The next time that when, once that new guy opens up his mouth, he's going to be the first. That thing is going to it's either going to launch the yen or kill it because then you're going to find out what his stance is. And that is going to be a very big volatile event. It'll even move U.S. bonds, too. So just wait till uh, what's his name? Umaya, Umaima, Aunt Jemima. Is that uh, Umaima, the Japanese, the Bank of Japan? But once he says something, that's it. He's going to kind of outline his new plans, and then that's going to set up the next 6 to 12 months for the yen, and you're going to get either a strengthening effect or a weakening effect, depending on once we know his like actual stance. Mm. On the video, is back to break even. Thessalonian... Coca-Cola is up. Dude, I don't know how Overstock did that. Overstock recovered an 8% loss. MMM. I don't... Does MMM... I don't think they've cut their divvy in a long time, though. Is that... I don't know. Let me see. MMM dividend history. Yeah, they've increased the dividend for 66 consecutive years. Like 144, yeah. Again, even in 2008, they didn't even cut their dividend. So that's what they got. They they only have to deal with the... Uh, the only problem they have is going to be that lawsuit. All right, you're setting a new high here from... Uh, that low, you're back to where that first sell-off did in the near lows of the day. You're back at 4,000 on SPX. Yeah, the lawsuit settlement, it's like the earplug one. I don't know if they have another one. And then it's kind of in a weird way tied in with the, again, it's kind of the same logic there with Johnson & Johnson because they can't do the Texas two-step. But, yeah, it's the earplug one, and I think there's something else with chemicals. There's another one. And then if just like nobody, none of these companies just aren't getting favorable treatment in the courts. Meta's Andy Stone says Washington Post got job cuts reshuffle story wrong. Well, it didn't even help out the stock, sir. Well, like, 3M is kind of assholes, though. Like, why why did they just sell all of our military defective earplugs? Like, that's such, like, <laughs> like, fuck you, bro. Just, why, like, you couldn't have made a normal one? Like, y'all knew, too, huh? Y'all couldn't have just given a chill one for our troops, bro? Like, let's go. Like, I get it. You paid the dividend for 60 years, but still.
What's J and J's yield at? 2.8. See, J and J, that could drop a little bit more, but I don't think it's going to, uh, I don't think J and J would cut. Yeah, Johnson and Johnson, 60 years of dividend increases. Again, they never cut during anything else. Yeah, I think 3M, you just get the uh, 3M, you get double the yield, but then you have the worry of lawsuit. But Johnson & Johnson, you still have lawsuit worry, too, and then you're getting paid 2.8. Oil dumping more. Dividends are for millionaires. Nah. Don't let them fool you, man. You know, imagine they sold you. And they're like, yo, take your hard work as a young investor and buy AMC and ignore dividends. It's a trap, bro. Dividends make millionaires. Now, granted, so does growth, and I think you need growth in tandem with it, but it's all about the balance, man. It's all about the balance. Trust me. Trust me. Happy birthday. Uh, it's not my birthday, unfortunately. It's good. It's a PSYOP. All right, so you got to 400 and rejecting again. Let's see where this goes. Carvana's on the low. Both companies have X divvies that passed. Yeah, Euronext said to explore sale. We've been getting that all day. That euro next, I don't think we could play it. There's a huge gap between market pricing and the Fed. In some ways, the hotly anticipated minutes almost feel like a new policy meeting. In a few hours, we will know just how much the FOMC is prepared to spill the beans on how they see the reaction function. While market pricing of peak policy rate has moved towards and then through the FOMC dot plot projection, in some ways, there are very stark differences between the Fed expectations and where stir markets are trading. Today's column is looking at the nuances and the disparity, which include not only the pace of eventual easing, but also whether our star has finally moved higher. Dividends are the most rewarding part. I think the most rewarding is if you get a dividend stock that pays and actually, uh, you know, like grows. You know what I'm saying? Like that is uh, that's one of the best things there. That's the most rewarding because it's like, dude, like you go look at Abivi. There's nothing more rewarding than like you just click on this shit and just look at your shares. Like every single thing is green. So it's like not only did you make money by buying the stock, it's like all of these little drips. You just got paid your dividend. Then you got gains on the dividends of the shares. And it just like over, it just, it's it's wicked actually. You know, it's like, you know, Air, Abivi is one of our biggest position. But at this point, not all of this is money that I, I bought in the stock. Whereas at least like two grand of it, two grand, three grand is just straight from dividends. If you really think about it, which is wild. I think it's like two grand or, or 20, I think it's no 1700 or right so far. I think in divvies a little bit more, but it's just like, that's rewarding. Cause then it's like, you get appreciation, you get the growth, then you get a dividend. Wait till you get a stock split too. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Hmm. Yeah, they will scam you on the drip sometime, uh, but you get the convenience. So, like, uh, the drip will, like, randomly do it for you, but they, they fill you at awful prices. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They fill you at very, very awful prices, but 
um, it's better than sometimes just not actually doing it. You could take off auto drip, but I just don't want to forget. And I like it automatically. But they do, they get you on a little bit of slippage. Abbey too expensive. It will come down. There'll be a period. Abbey Vi is very, very volatile. If you email me Abbey Vi, would you read it? I would, uh, but I'll tell you, it's probably not going to change my mind uh, on Abbey Vi. Like, you know, I've been holding Abbey Vi for years now, and I plan to. So uh, I'm down to read anything, but, you know, this stock, I haven't added to Abbey Vi in about, what, a year and a half now? Our last Abbey Vi purchase was uh, October 21st. I mean, you see, I've gotten shares here through the dividends, but. My last purchase was uh, October 21st or October 12th, 2021. Wow. So it's been uh, more than that. 2020 was almost been two years. Yikes. Eight months away. So just a year, a year and some change. MPW reports results. You guys brought that one up. Aren't they up though a lot? MPW. Do you have live streamers from Europe? Yeah, we have a lot of Europeans, bro. We have everything. We got people in Africa. It's the Chad, bro. It's the Chad. You guys are bringing up MPW the other day, right? And I think it even had a pop. They have earnings tomorrow for February 23rd. BSM, yeah, you guys brought up MPW and then it ran up. I like it. It seems decent, but I still said I need to do more research on it, uh, and I really haven't gotten down to it. What's it yielding? Wasn't it like 12%? Now it's 9 I think when you guys told me it was a little higher. So, I mean, O just had good earnings. If that's decent, that'll be nice. I'm watching from the great country of South Jersey. Wow, that's amazing. Amazon, we don't know why it's outpacing today. I think maybe it sold off a little harder yesterday, but I don't think there's a specific reason as to why it's the one of the only green names. I mean, NASDAQ's green right now. NASDAQ's actually outperforming the Dow Jones, and SPY's the only thing that's red. Market tried to drop. It is. You barely got above 4,000. You're back to the 3996. The candles are getting bigger at 4,000, though. Remember, even yesterday, you were kind of like chopping around 4,000 and it was fighting. Here, you're, just, you're breaking 4,000 and then you're going to 3995. I don't know if O raised their dividend, but they just had earnings and they did good. Let's see. They say income from EPS was up to a dollar from 94. Their sales beat estimate. Mm -mm. They had a deal with Alliance Farm. And yeah, they raised their dividend 2.4% to 25 cents per share per month. So yeah, they did. They raised their dividend 2.4%. Dollar holy pop. Dirt a pop. A UUP, yeah. Let's see the yen. The young yen is actually yen is lower. So last time when we started dropping on both of these lows on the yen, the market was hitting a low. So this time the market's actually holding up a little better. I mean, good news. We have what? 15 minutes till Euro close. The two and a half hours. Yeah, like what? Two hours, 45 minutes till, uh, Till the minutes and then again that thing I just read you there it seems like people are getting excited uh, here's another one. Oh, this one's big you guys want this one Powell how many likes you got you got likes you got likes on deck man I don't know if y'all feeling in the liking mood 
You know, I like to just I like to sell likes here on a daily basis. You know, get get people excited there. You know what I'm saying? It's good to have. It's good to have. It's good to see Coinbase dropping. I say you got ten likes. I'm gonna give you why Powell and the minutes will reveal our our reaction function. I got a long one for you. This one's a good one. That is just simple ten like ten like fee available to all. I think it's very accessible. Everybody has ten likes. You know what I'm saying? Especially with inflation, ten likes is really like one like. You know what I'm saying? So if you got it, you'll be good to go. Mm -mm. You're stressing me out. Honestly, trying to pronounce your last name stresses me out. Okay, so I guess we're even. Now like the video and listen, okay? Uh, Powell, minutes will reveal our reaction function. Uh, the minutes from the last Fed meeting are due at 2 p.m. New York time, and my colleague Cameron Kreiss already teed up the most important parts markets will be watching. I will expect the minutes will show the Fed is going to be anchored at 5.2 to 5.5, a level already priced in by markets and will be and well short of the recently muted 6% terminal rate, but I also expect to outline consensus around holding the line under most circumstances throughout 2023. That puts more upward pressure on the belly and the back end of the curve than the front. In some ways, the minutes are old news simply because the data since has not... Uh, since then have not supported the disinflationary narrative that dominated market thinking around the time the meeting was held. But Fed Chair Jay Powell hinted at a fairly static view of the policy path in his press conference. So the minutes might give us a view to how much it would take to knock the Fed off of that path. The exchange rate or the exchange between Powell and Wall Street Journal Nick Timmerous, it encompasses exactly what we're saying, where they asked him about if they're going to be talking a couple more rate hikes. I take the term couple as an admission that the Fed will be hard pressed to get 5.5 uh, before pausing simply because the doves on the FOMC wouldn't expect it. Then Timorask asks the next question, the conditions for a pause at the next meeting, a question Powell completely dodged by saying, you will see that at the next minutes to come in three weeks. So what will the minutes say that Powell could, can't say directly? I don't think they will contain any new information. They will just reiterate the Fed's adherence to pausing for a considerable period after reaching a mildly restrictive level, but the details might outline what would cause the Fed to raise rates further or cut. Uh, Dreyfus and Mellon chief economist uh, Vincent Reinhardt thinks it would take a lot to move the Fed in either direction. And that makes sense uh, first on more easing because we're at a five decade low on unemployment. And secondly, more tightening because the cumulative tightening has been so large. Uh, Fed fund futures are showing 35 basis points of cuts through January 24. As the year progresses and the Fed's resolve on this plateau is tested, the risk for yields in the belly and the back end of the curve is mostly to the upside due to the Fed's reluctance to cut perhaps for years. So we're looking for clues or we're looking for a criteria as to what would make Powell pause, pause, cut, or even raise even more. And I'm glad to see, but that quote I brought up to you yesterday, if you haven't noticed, everybody has been talking about it today. So I think we're going to be on the right track in a weird way. I'm, I'm kind of worried today becomes a dud in the fact that it doesn't give us much. But otherwise, if we could get that criteria as to, you know, understanding Powell's reaction function, and then we're going to have a big day. If not, this will quickly turn into a dud. Got it. Got 2.30? I thought 2 p.m. flat. No, 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 it's working. Just hold on, hold on a sec. Oh my gosh, it's real. Chatadonia, are yo, 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 man, you thought I was stressing you out before? Wait till you hear this news. Ladies and gentlemen, Bradley Frizzle and the Peach has arrived. It is here. Oh my goodness. Oh, no, let's go. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Let's go, baby. Peach Nation, get your ass up. Stand your ass up. Let's go. He's here, baby. He's here. Thank you, Bradley Frizzle. Wow. Wow. He brought us a gift. He brought us a gift. What a day. 
What a day, man, with a gift. Oh, of a peach, a peach blessing. Oh, my gosh. I love you. God bless you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Amen. Wow. Wow, we did it. We did it. Wow, that's amazing. How do you feel? How, how do you feel? Oh, Steven didn't like it. He didn't like it. He put a thumbs down. Wow. That's it. What's, uh, what's today been like for you? Been a good day? Good day, I think. Dick Sporting Goods to buy Moose Jaw from Walmart. That whole headline sounds crazy. Uh, Dick Sporting Goods to buy Moose Jaw. I don't know what any of this means. I don't want it misconstrued. What? Uh, okay, Moose Jaw. None of them are moving. Dick's or nor uh, Walmart is moving. Dick Sporting Good announced they've agreed to acquire leading outdoor retailer Moose Jaw from Walmart. The acquisition will expand Dick's outdoor portfolio, uh, leading in specialty retailer, public lands, and reaffirm their commitment to long-term business opportunity. I don't know how much they're paying for it, but Walmart's selling some outdoor sportswear to DKS. Peach Candle. It's real. Right back at VWAP. Gilead presents pro positive proof of concept data. It doesn't say the drug. Again, Walmart's not moving. DKS didn't do much. Why'd I put in Google? I meant Gilead. Again, that DKS news is coming out now, but not anything, uh, nothing too crazy. And then nine minutes till Euro closed. Wow, it's almost been two hours. I didn't go to the bathroom. I haven't even went to the bathroom once. Are you kidding me? What a day. What a day. Okay, follow me on Instagram at the Trading Fraternity. I'll be right back. Feel free to say hello to a fellow Chad in the chat today. You know what I'm saying? You can say what's up. Let them know what's up, man. You can wish somebody a blessing. Uh, and that's, that's all you got to do, man. That's all you got to do. We love you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. ECB is there, but it's also an outcome of this mixed data that we've seen both in U.S. and in Europe, creating this confusion around what is to expect for future. So... And the, the reaction of yield curve is the first one and the biggest compared to others. This is what we're experiencing now. So this uncertainty, volatility, and the concern around not being able to see what's ahead of us is the reaction that bond markets are, is reflecting. Yep. So when you look into ECB, the way they communicated about their rate hike was quite firm. And then they tried to bounce back a little bit to ease because they see the market reacted a bit too much. But um, we didn't see any calm after that, a little bit more balanced feedback that came from Milleroy, for example. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, again, I think the reaction is a combination of various factors, not just the ECB. Okay, so that's in the bond market, Zenep. What about in the stock market? Because there was research out yesterday from multiple shops talking about the idea that the stock rally we have seen in Europe is going to fizzle out. I mean, are there multiple asset classes overreacting here? Um, from equity perspective, I think the way that we have seen a great rally in Europe was a, a good outcome of the, uh, the data that we have had, especially at the beginning of the year. And now when we look into the GDP, for example, broader Eurozone, uh, initial fear of recession hasn't uh, re um, realized and there's a zero growth, which is, which is good. But then what you expect after that because there is not a big recession or a big downturn, then there will be not be a big upturn. Therefore, going forward, you will see the reaction on risky assets like equities to ease down a little bit. So there have been this great rally that we had since last end of last year and early this year. But will it continue like this? I don't think so. It feels like we've had all of the year's gains, all of the action in January. And, and now what do we do? So what, what do investors do? If, if we think this is kind of it, we're, we've, we've kind of seen the range, do you just range trade? If you're, if you're a more long-term investor, how do you position yourself? That's a great question because I think the, the biggest issue is being, not being able to time the market and everyone struggles with it. Yes, we had a, a fantastic returns um, all piled up in January, but if you look back from November all the way here, there have been an amazing return of portfolios on risky assets broadly if you were long 
equities in Europe and in UK, you made a, a great return of the three to four months. And now for long-term investors and especially on our portfolios, we take profit on equities and try to reduce some of the exposure, especially starting with US and then gradually into Europe and try to place a little bit more on core investment grade credit yep. within fixed income. Oh, were you doing the credit rally again? Enrique, what's up, baby? Good morning. Good morning and welcome. Welcome back. You got the moon. They mooned you up. FDA suggests adding nutrient label for alternative milks. Recommendations for plant-based plant milk alternatives. What's that one, o Oatly? I feel like Oatly and Beyond would get affected by that. LLAP, that's the... Uh, the Orbit company, I think retail is waking up now. That one's up, uh, hitting a new high, up 78%. They got the $2 billion oil oil order. Uh, Biden is, uh, he did, a, he's meeting with Jen Stoltenberg of NATO, actually. That's good. We didn't, at least we didn't wake up to more. There's just more talks of uh, China meeting with Russia, and Putin said he's excited to meet Xi Jinping, but... Other than that, not as many tensions. Yesterday was a day of tensions, man. I'm telling you. That one came out of nowhere. And then the market. Today, we woke up with Bullard kind of calming things down. And then the market started going crazy. But even right now, I mean, ahead of the minutes, the chart looks crazy intraday. But the Nasdaq's up 0.07. Same thing with the Dow. And then the SPY is down 0.02. Yeah, but like to even understand, like, because even then we were listening to Biden yesterday and people were getting mad. <laughs> Everyone was getting worked up, bro. <laughs> but it was, uh, the thing about it is like in a weird way, I wouldn't compare it to the same way because the tensions are kind of different. But like, you got to realize, like, Biden going to visit Ukraine and going to all these places in its own little way, it was kind of like, like when Nancy visited Taiwan. So you remember when they like everybody got worked up over that in a weird way, you know, the messaging and signaling politically uh, of Biden going and seeing Ukraine after one year of the war and where everything is at and then going to these countries and then going to see, uh, you know, uh, uh, Stoltenberg, NATO, all these again, Poland yesterday, they're, they're in NATO, uh, you know, saying all of this stuff. And remember, remember, it wasn't it was a couple of months ago. Remember that missile? landed on Polish territory and people were like, Article 5, blow them up. Article 5. <laughs> and they were like, nah, man, that's not true. That's not, no, we don't, the U.S., we, we like, we don't see nothing, sir. But it was, uh, it was definitely, um, I wouldn't call it escalation, but it's just more provocative. So it's a provocation. And, you know, it's like, come on, son, what's up? We out here. We out here in Ukraine. Yeah, I'm out here. Come on, what are you going to do? I fucking support Ukraine. And fuck yeah, I don't, I don't need a president's day. I'll fly and see another president. Yeah, what you gonna do, Putin? Your war, I stand, and there's not gonna be a victory for, for, for the Russian, Russian, Russian war, no victory. Huh? I mean it, seriously. And shout out to Poland. Poland held it down. They got, they got a bunch, they got, they got, they took the migrants in, and they fucking, they holding it down. That's a real one right there. That's what I'm fucking talking about. Huh? Yeah, I, I threw them a couple of bands. They, they, they made sure they gave them a home. That's what I'm talking, that's how you hold it down here. I tell us how we get down in NATO. Putin thought, Putin, what, what, what was Putin thinking? He thought NATO, NATO is going to break up. No, we got stronger. We got, we got more bitches in that thing, huh? Yeah, we said load it up. We got, we're stronger than ever now. You think NATO's on, on fucking trend right now. <laughs> you can't stop us. So what's up? That's it. Yeah, I'm here. I'm a bitch. I'm a, I'm a fucking going a world tour around Europe. It's not even a world tour, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah, come on. So that's what happened. That's how I, I envisioned it in my mind. But you got to watch it here. So AXSM on the low. Walmart, that Dick Sporting Goods news didn't do much. Why do you love the Biden voice so much? Honestly, it's a hit. I've never, like I'm telling you, 
it's even to this day, like even the Biden voice, it's hard to even offend people who like Biden with it. And again, I, I try to stay relatively neutral. Uh, if you haven't heard my Trump voice yet, I'm not as good as it. But I think the Biden voice is just a universal hit. That's it. Everybody, everybody likes it. I've tried it on the Internet. I've tried it in person. I've tried it with Republicans. I've tried it with Democrats. Everybody uh, gets a kick out of it. So I'm glad I'm glad that you do get a kick out of it. If you don't, I, I, I mean, I I think it's unfortunate, but, you know, nine out of ten dentists agree. Yeah. Uh huh. It's like a Trident commercial. Spot on. Spot on. Where is Navini? The chump and I don't I don't know what you're talking about. This one I'm working on it. But all I know is I'm terrific. Go buy my SPAC. Remember I went on public in the market. Said we're gonna take over Facebook. It's been about three years, but still we're in the process. You know, fake news, America. Trying to stop you. They can't stop me, I'm the best. I'm telling you, still working on it. Still working. Who, Ahmed? Mm -mm. Oh, man, yes, I could go back to Biden. This one does not do it the same. Yeah, but this one, hi. Huh? I don't know why I'm so good at it. <laughs> Hey Josh, can we can we try to bring down the amount of restroom breaks? I went piss once today, man. What the fuck? Come on. If this was OSHA, they would have been they would, I would have been fined by OSHA. How's this guy telling me one one bathroom, only one break? What do you mean? What do you want me to do? Hook myself up to a catheter? What's wrong with you? All right, high tickers move in. That LLAP now, that's starting to move. That moved up 25% there from the low. Again, this was the satellite company. I'm waiting for somebody to make a TikTok on it and compare it. Oh, one year, uh, one year, 11 month FRS discount margin, 0 0.106. Four month bill draws 4.8. Allotted at high, 93%. This is E-Trade Pro on the screen. That's the one you're looking at. And then we're below 4,000 on the SPX. You haven't been above 4,000 since 7. So an hour and a half ago is when we broke that level and we haven't touched it since. Moderna, uh, are you guys going to play Moderna? I have an earnings preview on that. I forgot, we still have NVIDIA. Have we done NVIDIA earnings preview or no? Should we do that now before we get into the minutes and everything else? We have about, what, an hour and a half? Or no, two and a half hours? I thought we went, Do we already go over NVIDIA or no? Mm, did we? I don't know. I don't think we did. So this one, I mean, this is a premium, premium service here. So we're going to need at least like 50 likes here. I think you got it in you. I think you all got it in you. I, I believe in you. I'm proud of you. I know, I know like inflation ain't hitting you. I say, I know somebody's been waiting. I know you've been saving your likes from six in the morning being a little asshole. So that's, this is your time, bro. This is your time. If you've been saving those likes, this is your time. Because the Chad needs you. The Chad needs you on that like button right now. Again, you could help a little Egyptian boy out by liking the video. Again, if you want a bumper sticker, I don't know how liking a video will get you that, but let's assume it will. But, you know, do it for the bumper stickers. Okay, there you go. Boom. They came in, baby. They came in. 
I was that asshole. Your name is Tyson. It's okay. You can't be that big of an asshole. You're closely correlated to the best meal in the world, chicken. You know? So I like you, Tyson. I stand by Tyson. Everything you do, I stand by it. Mm-hmm. Amen. So here's your NVIDIA earnings results or earnings preview. Uh, NVIDIA to show how AI boom is fueling sales. Uh, NVIDIA is set to report fourth quarter Wednesday at a tumultuous time for the chip maker. Though the personal computing industry, its biggest market, continues to struggle, NVIDIA's prospects in data centers and artificial intelligence have boistered up their shares this year. The stock was up 46% through the end of last week. Investors will look at their latest results and forecast through that lens. They're seeking signs that AI boom and the build-out of data centers needed to support it will keep NVIDIA healthy during a broader chip slump. Fourth quarter revenue is estimated to be six billion, three point eight seven billion from data centers, one point six billion from gaming, professional visualization, one hundred ninety five million, and then two hundred sixty seven million from automotive. Um, adjusted EPS uh, eighty one cents, and Credit Suisse they say outperform price target two ten. All eyes will be on their data center numbers to gauge whether the secular trend of AI is enough to offset the slower overall spending environment, according to Chris Queso. Uh, they're expected to do a 2024 revenue estimate of $29 billion. Uh, NVIDIA has 36 buys, 12 holds, and 3 sells. Average price target is $22.97, 5% upside from current price. One day shares uh, implied move is 6%. Adjusted EPS have beaten 11 of the past 12 quarters. Shares are down 10% in the last year versus the SPX, which is down 7.5. Oh, you're moving up a little bit. And then here is another update on NVIDIA. So uh, where is it? That's from 213. So AMD's results suggest that data center capital spending from hyperscale cloud vendors for accelerators and graphics units have been resilient, while the viral adoption of ChatGBT has raised expectations for NVIDIA sales growth that could help drive average selling price for data cost center uh, segment, even if sequential unit growth is below consensus. The gaming segment may remain pressured as the inventory correction in consumer PCs limits demand for NVIDIA graphics chips. We believe the top line recovery in gaming is unlikely through first half and possibly second half amid the chance of broader economic slowdown export restric restrictions for china still pose a risk for near-term negative revisions given nvidia's higher exposure than rivals due to advanced chip sales so hyperscale enterprise are key customers for data gaming faces headwinds recovery for downward revisions for revenue gross margin could take time and high china exposure adds pressure amid u.s ban so there you go you're moving. You're moving up. And then NVIDIA got a price target raised by Piper Sandler this morning. NVIDIA is, is pricing in 6%. So that's like, like 15 bucks, I think, a little less. Maybe like 10. Then you barely got above 400 and came back down. I mean, if NVIDIA does bad, they're going to dump. I mean, remember, this thing was just at 120. But then if they could do better than any of their peers, if they outperform due to the AI stuff or anything, oh, man gets crazy. Wingstop surges on record sales and sandwich optimism. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm Wingstop. I wish we bought Wingstop. That one would have been a good one at the lows. Wingstop has been like a bulletproof stock. We should have known fucking lemon pepper can't be stopped. So back to 4,000, you barely went above it. Well, look at this. You have no orders except this line in the sand here at the low. That's kind of suspicious. I don't know how I feel about this. Look at this. You have like a 10 point, 13 point gap here and you just have this one line with a bunch of orders just standing there. The minutes, if you go up to like the video next to the like button, we have put the time of the minutes. Should be beginning here in about two and a half hours. Two and a half hours from right now, a little less.
my take on NVIDIA is uh, play the earnings run up, which I already did, and then wait. But I think there's more downside than upside. However, I just don't know how they're going to perform. I mean, most chip people did bad except AMD. But then uh, I think uh, there's a lot more expectations for NVIDIA. And NVIDIA is still just trading at a at an ultra premium comparatively. Is Amazon still up? Wing stops coming down again. Oh, no, it's Wint, not Wing. But Wing stop up eight percent today, and then Amazon still holding. TJX, I like. Uh, remember, it wasn't too long ago. Like it was like last year around this quarter or next quarter, people were getting really, really hyped on the discounted retailers. So I think they're holding up great, actually. I mean, there's literally this low of the year is the high of 2022. So honestly, I think T I think they're expensive. So I don't think you're getting these at a discount. You're paying a premium uh, for a stock that kind of has a nice look in the next five years. You know, any whether you get recession or not, like TJ Maxx, Ross, any discount retailer I think is good. That's why I feel like overstock should be doing a little better, but uh, I think discount, especially discount big box. I mean, you know, TJ Maxx has been a while for a long time. It's been around for a long time, so I, I think they have good history there. There's a girl on my daughter's softball team named Piper, and I made a bad stock joke about Piper Standler and downgrading. None of the parents understood it was embarrassing. Yeah, man. Welcome to my life. As I even uh, like Uncle Answers does that a couple times and people don't get it. Like he said, don't make me catch a case like Schiller. You know, but not too many people understood that. And then you're like, what does that mean? You know, it's like, oh, you're not familiar with the case Schiller housing index. OK, I was surprised. I'm not surprised, actually. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I've been getting better at it, though. I've been saying a lot less like random like because I, now I like I pick up on it when I'm like, no one's going to get that shit. This is a very that's a very niche. Uh, that's a niche joke right there. Uh, no news on Tesla except battery plants this morning. They said that uh, Tesla is going to be focusing on battery plants in the United States a little bit more than Germany due to the Inflation Reduction Act and the benefits they get. Uh, bonds are dropping here. Interesting. So down to 3997. But the bonds are leading a little lower. The yen is hitting lower and lower again. Every time, this is going to be weird because there's still a gap between the yen and the dollar. It was big from the morning, but the first two big drops on the yen pops in the dollar. The market got pretty violent, but ever since this little break right here, uh, the market's been staying pinned. Maybe we're heating up, and now the bond yields are coming up here too, or TLT, IEF down. London tube drivers to strike. That's been big good. How many of you are in Europe right now? Have the sh have the strikes been big? Like uh be or like cuz I feel like uh I saw one video where it's just like Europe is low key like there's a lot of people not working right now and those those uh worker strikes are pretty big, but I feel like we don't talk about it uh, a lot here in the states. I feel like that's kind of escaped financial news for a little bit. In France, price pumps. Habib, UK only. Ah, uh, City, are they red still? Where financials are actually in the green. They've worked their way back up. I don't know if that candle's real. Is that candle real? Are financials running? There's like a bunch of labor strikes about like wages and other stuff. And like, that's why like last week, remember the airline was shut down. They shut up down Lufthansa for like two days or something like that. I 
heading to Taiwan since March. Damn, we haven't been there since March 2020. What's Taiwan like? I've never been to Taiwan. All I've heard about Taiwan is Nancy Pelosi, TSM, and how that's we still supposed to get into a battle. Yo, Graham, where you at, bro? Where, what happened to Graham? Bro, Graham, uh, Graham hasn't asked me about when China is invading Taiwan. He hasn't asked me in about a month and a half, and I'm kind of worried now that I think about it, Graham. Are you okay, Graham? Did you not? You better not have forgot because it's been too long for me to not get that question from Graham. Yeah, bro, what happened? I haven't. You haven't asked me about when China is going to invade Taiwan. A year and a half away. Okay. Uh-huh. We'll see. You may be an imposter. I know the real Graham. I know the real Graham. Could be AI pretending to be him. Mm-hmm. Ah, what was that? I just reset my chat. TJX call volume. I don't know. I think TJX is high, but you're just going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait for like economic consumer data. I think TJ Maxx moves more on that unless there's outside news. Uh, where's RTX? RTX, they're still on the high, but still red. LMT's up, 481, not too bad. Bobo is at 0. 0.5. They're doing, I think, the best. We'll keep effing with AI Graham. We're going to, okay, they're never, okay, he's back. He's here on attack. He said, I heard what you said about Taiwan, mother... You know what I'm saying? My girl is trying to go to Marshalls right now. My girl just discovered it. <laughs> Her fucking Swiss ass, bro. She ain't never seen... She was like, bro, they have everything at, like, the normal stores, but cheaper. She said they had the lotion at Sephora that's, like, $70. They had it for $10. <laughs> she, just, she just discovered this. I'm like, oh, man. Mm -hmm. You have no idea. You have no idea. I said, this is where we grew up. Marshalls and Ross, bro. That was it. I was, that was the only way I could get my hands on Polo Assassin. Mm-hmm. Marshalls, TJ Maxx, Ross lately. I feel like they're all the same. Yeah, Merv, we were talking about Mervin's. Mervin's was kind of expensive. We ain't never been to a Dillard's, man. I ain't been to a Dillard's in a long time. Still got them Nike shorts from Ben. Amen, I do, bro. Amen. I told you, even at the gym, they just, I'm telling you that the gym, I've, I've been going to a new gym, and I'm like 90% sure they think I'm homeless. Because I just I've I haven't worn more than three different outfits, not even two outfits. I just been wearing the same tank top, the same shorts, and then I just I cycle through it, and then that's it. And like it's kind of nasty, but you know I they they kind of they don't look at me the same like other gyms, you know. And like they, they I don't know how it is, but like they look at me with a concerned look when I walk in, and then I'm much more paler now too. So I don't know how they put two and two together. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. You go there to work out. I do go to there. Oh, but, dude, yesterday, I swear, I swear I was on a, bro, I, I didn't tell my girlfriend this. She'll get mad at me. She's going to tell me never to go there again. Oh, I, dude, I swear yesterday, I was on a episode of What Would You Do? <laughs> There was actually two, bro, I, I had the wildest gym experience yesterday. Do you want me to tell you before we drop down here? Oh, I was supposed to tell you another story, too, but I forgot early in the morning. But, bro, I, I'm at the gym, man, and, like, I, like, go, I find, like, a little corner with a mirror, right? 
and I go and I hide in my corner to I take my weights and I start lifting in the corner, right? And then this one chick fucking goes into this corner and then I'm like, okay, bro, you didn't have to come over here. I'm getting really mad at this girl for moving over here because like, I'm, I'm like, you know, just making a lot of noises and sweating and I'm like, you're messing up my vibe here, miss, okay? And then another girl comes up to the other side, right? And then like, bro, within like, 30 seconds, this girl just starts twerking in the middle of the gym right next to me. And I'm like, no. I said, this is a trap. This is a trick. That's it. And I'm over here. I'm like, I'm staring at the ceiling as best as I can now. And I'm like, this, I'm like, is that really happening right now? And I'm like, is this really happening right now? And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, this is a trap. I'm on, what would you do? Yeah, my girlfriend set this up. Oh, no, dude. I was no for real. Like this was like a full on like twerking. And I'm like, this is no, this makes no sense. Mm hmm. They were filming you. They probably were. Uh, but I was I was I was very, very diligent on counting how many tiles and lights were in that ceiling. I was actually getting really into the architecture. Mm -hmm. And then and then it was bad, bro. I went into the bathroom like earlier in the gym and like like earlier in my gym sesh. And then uh, I uh, went and it just, it smelled awful. Like this was like somebody took a dump in the gym bathroom. And I don't know how some human could produce that because it was like, I gagged. I like straight up, uh, I straight up, bro, like, like I almost vomited, right? And then I'm like, dude, that's awful. So then I leave the bathroom and then I come back like a couple minutes later uh, or it's like maybe like 10 minutes later and it still kind of smelled, but then I saw somebody else using that same stall. And then I felt, I was like, do I tell him? Cause I'm like, you have no idea what just went down in there like 10 minutes ago, dog. And he was just sitting there and I'm like, nah, bro. And it was very uncomfortable. It was very, very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So those are my gym stories for the day. TJX popping. Well, y'all were just talking about it still red on the day. But popping into the highs. Oh, my Uber. No, I didn't tell you the Uber story. We're popping. I think the market liked that story. So I'll tell you that one. Uh, I forgot when this was. It wasn't too long ago. I don't know why I needed an Uber like really early in the morning. Uh, and I didn't I, I didn't have my car. So I call an Uber in the morning. Right. And bro. This lady picks me up in like a Tesla with like glittery door handles, like super like she seemed like a super sweet girl, bro. And from the minute of stepping in this car, she just starts telling me about all of the things that are wrong with Uber. And I'm like, what? And then she's like, oh, she, first she starts yelling at the other Uber drivers. She starts yelling at cars. She's like flooring it in her Tesla. And I'm getting like whiplash. And she's like, yeah, man, do you know how much Uber takes from us? And did you know that Uber is getting 70% now? And then when they take 70%, you know what happens? It leaves for a worse experience for the customers. And it's bad for both of us. And straight up, bro, I'm getting, she's telling me, and I'm like, oh, we're about to die. I'm like, for real thinking, I'm like, this is the end. It's like, because this is way too early. No, bro. No, 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 no. She was explaining to me all of the market metrics. I felt, and I feel her. I was like, like, I hope she knew. Like, I was like, I feel you. I, I was even talking to her about it. But like, no, and they like she just kept she was like, you know how bad of an experience this is for the for the people. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I could only imagine. Uh huh. Mm hmm. And no, bro, it was cool. But that's it. That was it was the scariest Uber ride because I was like, that's it. She's she's that's it. She's going to make this a story. She's going to make her point right now. And that's it. And I just that's I don't know how I wound up here. Mm hmm. That's it. I did tell her. I said, that's why I do. I did say that. <laughs> I said, that is why I tip huge. Amen. Amen. I got you. I got you. Don't hurt me, please. Should have told her it could have been worse. This is before I understood that philosophy, but now I will be prepared. But that was a scary Uber drive. It was a very, very scary Uber drive.
Apple, Amazon, the LL Lap stock is coming down. Oh, wow. Bunch of upgrades. I think mean, they're all Canadian, though. Mm -mm. There are tweets circulating that George Soros died. Not confirmed. He emailed it to me. Oh, wow. Let's see. No way. International report suggests that Soros... And W. Eve member has sadly died at age 92. More info coming? No way. It seems very... Uh, that's the only thing I think you could see on. I think it's only circulating on Twitter right now. I don't know what implications that would have. No, it's very quiet on the Soros front. Is that bullish? Yeah, people are talking about it now, but we're not seeing anything. Uh, I don't know. You might hear about it soon, if that's true. I would say I, I haven't heard of George Soros dying rumor, or I, I feel like people already assumed he passed, but... It was, uh, I don't know, George Soros, Jorge Soros, bro, the man, the myth, the legend, brought to you by everything that he's donated to. This guy probably controls more of your life than you thought. Uh, but, yeah, hold on. We haven't seen any uh, great day. If it's, I never rejoice on someone dying, but I just don't know if it's, that'd be crazy. That'd be wild. I mean, guy has been in markets, Holocaust survivor, he broke the the British uh, the Sterling in 1993, amassed a fortune. Uh, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot. He was just at a speech, though. Or no, I think his parents, uh, his parents were Holocaust survivors, and they that's why they changed their name. So they changed his last name to Soros so that they wouldn't get uh, uh, taken by Nazis. But I'm pretty sure he was around the time. I know his family for sure, like, without, that's why Soros wasn't, I don't think it was his original name. That'd be crazy. You, he sounded like that for 10 years. <laughs> Some of you guys are like, he, um, <laughs> you guys are like, I don't know. He didn't sound too healthy, bro. He sounded like that for a decade. Solidly. Go look up videos of Soros in like 2012, bro. He sounded it's exactly the same. Mm hmm. Yeah, his original name was Schwartz. And then he changed it to Soros. I mean, there's a lot of things that Soros has both done and allegedly done. I mean, he's a legend. I would say that whether you like him or not, he has definitely like just like you see it as as everybody describes him. The guy is a legend in that sense of he has legends. They're like, I heard he turned his family in. I heard he did this. I heard he did that. Did you know? And then he actually did a lot of stuff. Again, this guy actually George Soros has inspired me with currencies back when I was younger, because once I fit, once I learned how he clapped the the uh, the. Sterling in 1993 that changed my life bro you have no idea 
you have no idea. I've always been. I'm, I'm, I can't wait. I hope one day I could do something of that nature. I don't know if that could ever happen, but I mean, he's definitely, uh, definitely inspired me in some ways, uh, whether I don't necessarily agree with a lot of the stuff he does, uh, but you know, you could, uh, the guy definitely knows his shit in some areas and back, you know, definitely a pioneer. And you like him? I respect him, uh, but I don't know if, like, he wouldn't be on my list. Like, I don't know, maybe, you know, more conservative people won't like. Like, I'd rather go to dinner with Jay-Z. <laughs> like, I, I can't understand that motherfucker now. I'm not like, Soros, what the fuck are you saying, dog? Come, Jorge, can you write it out for me? Can you Do you know how to use Google Docs? Fuck that, man. I'm going to just chill with Jay-Z instead. I mean, I respect the guy, but he's not, like, I'm not inviting him to my birthday party. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I don't know. Like, there's other people. I'd definitely, uh, I'd be like, I like him. I like Allen Iverson more than George Soros. So take that how you please. <laughs> how can you respect someone so power hungry and greedy? Because I don't know him personally. So, I mean, I could assume that he's power hungry and greedy. Uh, but I don't really know him. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Just like the people who fucking smile at you and tell you this and that and then scam the shit out of you. You know, you never know anybody's true intentions, but, uh, you know, the stuff he's accomplished, I respect it. I, I respect somebody surviving the Holocaust. I, I respect somebody going from, you know, nothing to billions of dollars. I respect somebody who understood the monetary system and was able to exploit it and actually, you know, do something with it uh you know there's a lot of stuff i don't respect but at the end of the day i mean what he has actually done i i think it it is earned respect i mean you know we it doesn't mean i think he's a morally upright person or, or anything but again i mean who am i to 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 judge on that you know what i'm saying mm -mm. You respect the man and hate the position. I don't know. I just, I think it's y'all just trying to find something where I just, I respect him. That's all. You can respect it. As simple as that. No respect to evil. I mean, I respect the devil, my friend. You should respect anybody. I think respect could go any way. And that's the, that's the, you always respect your enemy, my friend. But no, I think it's, it's very simple. He's done a lot. Even in finance, I've learned from the guy. Uh, I've got to pick up off of it, and that's it. I don't know if he's dead. I mean, that's just a rumor that's been going around. That's how we got in here. But I think it's pretty simple. They deleted the tweet? Yeah, because Soros made sure they deleted it. <laughs> they called it to get that shit down. Oh, he did. What about Jesus? How the fuck we bring Jesus into this now, man? I'm glad we got Jesus into the conversation, but I don't know how we just rabbit hole down here, bro. That's the problem. We just, you guys realize how quickly this devolved? We went from, oh my gosh, he might be dead. Oh, he did this. Now, do you respect him? What about his moral uprightness? What about the Satan and then the evil? And now we in Jesus, man. Where I don't know. We got Allen Iverson. We had Jay-Z. I'm glad Jesus came up, though. Amen. Amen, baby. Amen. <laughs> No, it was just uh, it was a Twitter account that they deleted the tweet. Mm. Yeah, we did tell the uh, Uber story.
Let's go. Am Amazon's giving up. Bro, you guys haven't noticed? We've done nothing. I've given you like three or four life stories. We just pondered on a rumor of George Soros passing away where the tweet got deleted. And now we are still just right below 4,000. So it's not a good sign. Remember, we were saying 4,000 below close wasn't pretty. And now you're just barely above that ahead of the minutes. You got what, two hours? Two hours and uh, no, one hour, 55 minutes. So back above 400 now. Baba's going down. Lazy boys on the high. Nerve movement. The minutes known technically. So we talked about it. There's, there's two things we're looking for in the minutes. One, any clues that could point to 50 basis points, which isn't going to be as likely. And then number two, people are looking for a rate reaction mechanism, a.k.a. we want Powell and the, and the board of directors there. We want in the minutes for them to explain how they would go about raising the 50 or 25 and when they would pause. So the two questions you want to answer, like if we could get answers today from the minutes, the questions we want to answer is, does it explain how we could get to 50 basis point hikes if that's even possible? And then number two, can the minutes explain how the Fed or when or why the Fed will pause rates? Now, the problem is when the Fed minutes were actually written up, that was three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, you didn't get the inflation report and you didn't get all the other PPI and everything else. Now, granted, you know what happens. You knew now we know the data was bad. So whatever they say, that'll give you an update on it. But that's pretty much uh, uh, what we're looking for. Pause will be in that. That's what we want to find out. So that's why it's like people are want to see if they outline, if they outline a process to how they're going to react. That's it. That's a, that's what they mean by rate reaction mechanism. We want to see, like you remember back in 2022, early 22, when Powell outlined the three things they were looking for, unemployment, inflation, and then there's one more. Um, it's kind of the same thing we're here, we're, what we're looking for on the minutes. We want to see do they explain it? And that's and the reason why people are thinking that is because one of the questions at the FOMC, somebody was saying, are you, have you guys thought about pausing? And Powell said, wait till the minutes come out and you should have more answers on that. Now, then again, it still might be very, very vague. Uh, and we may not really get that answer. Uh, but for the most part, this will be uh, potentially what we could be getting here today. We're actually moving a little bit, a little bit. Just a little bit. Why wouldn't it be as typical data p dependent? It, well, that's what people are ex expecting, something static. So that's the whole thing he's been saying is that it's going to be just a static way to view it based on the data. But now they may explain it in further depth, essentially. In a weird way, the minutes have the potential to explain how data dependent is going to operate, right? If So if this data comes in, this is how we'll react. If this doesn't come in, this is what we're going to do. But borderline, you know, yes, we got to get the job done. hibbity bobbity boo
some bonds fill up mm. I forgot about Nvidia yeah AXP is running Disney's on the high right now too let's go we chi we're chilling man honestly 4,000 chilling very very interesting because we took so long to get here you danced around it a lot but pretty much since what since like 11 o'clock yesterday you've been around this price and now we've been holding it for the last couple of hours. Again, pre-market, you had Bullard being very bullish or comparatively bullish to his last statement. Market ran up, had a little bit of a shock there in the morning. But overall, the day is tiny. You're barely in the green. You're up a tenth of a percent uh, on the on the Dow, 11th uh, on the NASDAQ, and then 0.06 on the SPY right now. And then utilities, materials uh, are the best. And discretionaries and staples, they've kind of flip-flopped. So there's still a couple of defensive names that are down. Only thing red is barely healthcare, tech at 0.17, real estate 0.5, and then energy uh, down 0.45. But energy was down a percent and a half earlier. Now I'm out. City is space nearly doubles contracted launches with SpaceX. Don't know what that is. Uh, the expected move for NVIDIA is about 6%. So I think that's like 10 to $15. Ah, oh, damn it. Let's see. Let go for minutes. It's on the way. It's going to be exciting. It's actually wild how big. Yeah, it's about $14. $14 priced in. Sidious explores launch. They're public. SIDU. So they double the amount of uh, launches. It's a penny stock. Uh, Carvana, I haven't looked into it. I think Carvana is probably going to trade like the Shopify's and Redfin's and even DraftKings will be a good example. I mean, that's the thing, depending on the, as long as the, the company just doesn't have an abysmal earning, it's going to hold whatever price it's been at until the market changes its opinion, broadly speaking. So like Redfin held up, uh, even DraftKings, like DraftKings wasn't the best earnings, but you could see how it's kind of held. So I think that's what's going to really happen there. Even Coinbase too. I think Coinbase is another great example of that. So Carvana may do bad, but I feel like they may get relief alongside of everyone else. If we go to war with Russia, will that be bullish or bearish? I think it'll play out like 2022 where it would be, you would get shocks overall for a little bit and then it would eventually turn into uh, some industries benefit more than others. And then commodities would go up. Um, they're not, well, I don't I want to say bearish initially. In a weird way, there is some very uh, bullish elements to, uh, to war. Two years ago, we thought there'd be commercial flights to space for 200K. Was that supposed to happen now? I did forget about that. Was it supposed to be in 2023? Yesterday was exciting. Today, not as much. It sucks because we're doing nothing now. The morning was a little exciting. I mean, these these candles were big. Some people were getting stressed out. Eh. But <laughs> we're not doing much now. But then it's like, like I said, uh, you're going to get excitement right after the meeting. You know, people are really, really hyped on that. And then it's only going to be for like an hour or two. And then that's the end of the day. So we'll see. But the candles in the morning, I mean, it was like a almost a 1% shift, but now 
This is dead, bro. Tenth of a percent is your biggest gain on the Dow right now. Yeah, Branson said 2023. Well, the year just started. The year just started. I mean, I remember the year was like 2018 or something. I was supposed to be getting a cyber truck, but you know, fuck it. It's cool, Elon. It's cool. You brought the shares back above 140, man. That's all that mattered. I hope you're doing good, man. Thank you for buying Twitter, even though I don't use it that much. I still love you, man. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Why do you like Elon? Oh, it's, it's evil. How do you like Elon? Oh, my God. Elon. Oh, my God. How do you like Elon Musk? Nah. Oh, my God. You support Elon. Elon puts brain chips in people's brains and babies and tests on monkeys. Elon doesn't unionize. Elon's not good for the environment. What? Y'all gave me mad Elon bipolarness. I don't know what, yeah, where this alert stuff's coming from. Everyone's waiting on the minutes, yeah. I mean, people were talking about it, you know, even the analyst comments already leading into it. Uh, some people are actually like, People are surprised that it it kind of feels like a uh, it kind of feels like a FOMC today, in a very very weird way. Yeah, I don't have messages. Yeah, that's weird. But in a weird way, it's kind of like the FOMC. At one fifty, uh, ten minutes before, we'll get you more analyst comments leading into it. So you guys should all be prepared by now. We've discussed it, like I'm saying, the rate hike mechanism or the rate reaction mechanism is what we're looking for, whether or not 50 basis points is a possibility, and the criteria, that rate mechanism to understand uh, what would actually make Powell pause. Max paid. I don't know. We could check the bubbles. But I don't know, man. I feel like I feel like Max Payne has been letting people down. I mean, last Friday was a total cuck. But yeah, we're gonna see. Mm -mm. Sam, no one's blocking you, man. I think it's uh YouTube's just stopping some of your comments, bro. But you know, with that type of energy, uh that's not gonna be allowed. So, you know, just I'm saying, just calm down, bro. You know, we have a nice, beautiful family here. You know, most people have fun. They smile. They share info. You know what I'm saying? But, if, you know, if you're trying to get into a gang war, I highly suggest you join a gang instead. Because some of y'all would be way better in a gang than on stock market chats. I've 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 noticed that as of lately. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all, if, if y'all held down your side, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all stand for the bulls, the bear... Like, y'all are willing to beef and, like, run it up on people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, for real. I'm surprised some of y'all haven't got involved in, in gangs. But I, I wouldn't want you to get involved in a gang. And, you know, it's not good. But honestly, I think you would excel. I, I, that's all. I'm, I think you would excel. And maybe, I mean, there, there is opportunity and advancement. Like, you would get protection as well. But at the end of the day, you know, that's that's really what I'd be aiming for. Otherwise, you know, if you want to have fun, calm down, you know, get a long term, save 10 percent, you know, and be around people who kind of want the best for you. You know, it's, you got a good opportunity here. But otherwise, no, 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 not an Internet gang. I'm saying just go the real way. There's a lot of calls, dude. Do you see this? There's 396 puts, 395s and then 397. But there's a lot of out of the money calls right now. You're actually like heavily weighted to the call side. And then the biggest open interest for today is to uh, is to 405. But then you have 395 calls, 396, 397. The 398s get big. Then 399, 394 puts are huge. 396 puts are big. And then 395. But then again, you have those on calls too. I'd say you're leaning more to the call side, low key. Mm. 
Ulta has eight red days in the last two months. Ulta has been unstoppable. Hedge funds sold out of Ulta the most, though, because everyone's been taking profit on it. I wish it came down. That was one we only put one deposit on it, and then it never came back. I didn't even get the chance to buy it on the uh, big account, which I wish we did. I think Ulta is like one of our best. We have 128% on Ulta in the long term. I only bought two shares way back in the day, and then it just was like, I'm going to 500. Thank you. It's actually wild. Ulta, one deposit turned into your top three biggest positions on the small account, but I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. No, I never made it free. I just, I bought it on the small account. See, I only bought it once, August 30th, 2020. We bought two shares of Ulta at 230. So I actually put in a decent amount. I put two deposits into it. And then I said, I was going to, I don't think, uh, did we have the, yeah, we had the big account, but I think I used the deposit elsewhere. I needed to balance it out more. And then uh, I just didn't buy it on the big account, but we bought it on the small account and it was, it's up 128%. And then Spy's kind of been working its way up here. Uh, we're barely back up on the NVIDIA for the pre-earnings. Yeah, 406. Remember, 407 to 410. This is where it gets stubborn. 417, you're good. The yen bounced. And now this gap between the yen and the Spy is closing up a little bit. And bond yields have been selling off though. Look at Grek. What is it? Global MSI Greece ETF. Yeah, that's gone straight up. But Greece is like super risky. You know how many times like Greece is almost like defaulted? <laughs> I was playing it in 2015, 2016, even like I think it was like 2018 as well too. Greece Greece has a meltdown every three to four years. Or if anything happens in Europe, Greece and Italy are the first ones to clap. At one point, they wanted to get rid of the euro, and they said, fuck it, we're going back to the drachma. They were really about to just abandon the euro and go back to their old currency. And this was like in like 2016. You bought real estate in Greece? Nice. How's that? That sounds interesting. Vacation rental or what? ALTX. Altex. I don't see nothing. Oh, ATLX. Atlas Lithium. All of them. SGML and then that other one. Well, this one's not lithium. They just had that news, the satellite one. You fund an account at somewhere else to get away from options and try out the micro futures. Why don't you just do it the right way and go to TD Ameritrade? But hey, I hope it works out. <laughs> That's, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's just, no, it's, you're still skipping it. You're still skipping around. Just do deal with, deal with the $2 commission for a little bit. You'll learn with it. Trust me, but it's your life, my friend. It's your life. Be wise. Be wise. Gang, 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 gang. Here's an IPO rotation. Uh, we'll see, man. We'll see if we even get any IPOs. Uh, again, banks have been losing so much more money by just not being able to to, <laughs> to sell IPOs in mass. Oh, you guys want a TD Ameritrade hack? You want a T? I got a TD Ameritrade hack for you. It's still a little scammy, so that's the problem. But I got one for you. 
I got one for you. Uh, I'm going to have to charge you mad likes for this one, though. It's a good hack. It'll save you money instantly. But I feel bad because you're all going to bug them. Oh, you already have 2,000 likes. So I don't know. Just whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. You know what I'm saying? This one just like it's a tip jar. You know, like whatever, whatever you have available. Trust me, I'm going to save you instant money on this. Instant money on this. Mm -hmm. Get ready, you'll see. Do you feel really bad? Do you feel bad? Yeah. I just feel bad for the service people because you're all going to contact them. But like, and they're really nice. Honestly, I love TD Ameritrade service, bro. I like chat with these dudes. And like, they, they're the homies. I'm telling you. Low key, I haven't had one bad service uh, thing ever. Oh, yeah, it's, it's great. It's, you're going to like this. Just say it. I was going to say close it. Yeah, they're all cool. All right, so here it is. If you go, I don't know if you could raise your uh, your money market. You can always ask them to increase it. But if you actually go and message TD Ameritrade and ask them to lower your interest on your margin, they will. Or they'll at least do a case considering how much you trade or not. So especially if you've traded a lot on your TD Ameritrade, you can message them and tell them to lower your margin interest. And they'll cut it in half pretty much. Mm -hmm. So like literally a lot of margin accounts are at like 12 to 15. You could get it lowered to like 10 to 5% depending on your activity. But that, that can make a big change depending on how you're trading or especially if you're doing a lot of shares too. Uh, that's what I, I was like, hey, I'm doing more shares here. I'll give me the lowest possible margin. Uh, they And again, I just sent a message and then they lowered it. I mean, you're inst literally instantly saving money. So yeah, fun fact. You just got to message them. A lot of people aren't aware of that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask them every three months, I feel. It's still like, I mean, it's still uh, like it's charged annually. So like even most margin, even if you're holding a lot, it shouldn't really run up too much. But at the very least, I mean, no one likes paying interest. I think you could write off all interest payments, though. They won't lower mine, really? Ask them, try them to say, hey, can you lower it 2% lower than where it is now? Start, you. Uh, that's the thing. If you ask them to lower it too much, they'll reject it. But if you ask them at like a fair rate that's a little lower, they should comply. Coinbase, man, what happened? So there's the Coinbase flipped. You went up seven to down six now. Yeah, if you're new to TOS, I mean, I think once you get like three month trading activity, it's the same thing with futures. So it's like uh, even when that's what happened, you know, my futures, they cut mine in half after just doing it for a couple of months. You got to trade 100 plus. I don't think I traded 100 at that time, but I think I was just active for like 30 or 60 days. So maybe. They saved you 25 cents. They cut mine in half. I was paying like four bucks and then they lowered it to two dollars. And then make sure I don't I don't know if I if you want more margin on futures, you guys saw me. They you have to go and do that. Mm 
and it's a small account. They only charge you 50 cents, 25. I just think those are all traps, man. Just be careful. That's all I'm saying. Even then to trade. Because remember, you could lose more than you put in with the future. So even though someone's trying to tell you you only need $50, I mean, either they're going to stop you out really tight or you could end up paying more. I, I Honestly, man, bite the bullet. Do it the right way. Trust me, you're not going to regret it. You know what I'm saying? Even though it'll be a harder to get started out with a small amount, but you're just way better off starting on something that'll be universal. Again, like I'm even telling you, the support level uh, and everything else there, but I've only seen people get trapped by, like, again, trying to go towards the, uh, like the cheaper future ways or methods or stuff like that. And just, again, I mean, it's going to always be presented to you as everything you want, but that's kind of, you know, what you want, how you want it isn't usually the best combination. So, uh, again, I know the futures are a little more expensive in terms of fees on TD Ameritrade and all of that, but, you know, just do your thing. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I, I hope you understand. I universally apply this to everywhere. There's good brokerages out there, but I think we've seen enough over the last couple of years. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like TD Ameritrade going through Schwab as well. It's just a very, this is a universal standard that it's been around for a while. It's not going to hurt you. And if you start off, you know, start off at that level, but you know, trying to, uh, you know, pretty much cut corners. That's all it is. Trying to get in cheap, trying to get it in in a way where it's like, trust me, in the back end, you're you're going to want to do it. But I'm universal about this. You know what I'm saying? That's at the end of the day. I say this about every, I don't care what the brokerage is, whether it's one, somebody advertising and scamming, you know, trying to say, well, fund your account all the way to these little cheaper brokerages. But I'm just saying, be careful on it. But my, that's, this is just my universal standard on it. And I like it because it's universal. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, no matter what, I don't discriminate. It's just always, if you want to get into this game, you want to get into that route. I, I encourage you do it the right way. Start off that way and then do it. But hey, it's, it's your life. You guys, you know, you'll either understand why I'm saying this now. Maybe down the road, you'll understand or maybe you know, you'll realize you had a different path ahead of you and you were able to perform with that path regardless. So I do wish the best for everybody, but you know what I'm saying? It's just, this is, we've seen this throughout many, many years of many different things. And it's, it was the same similar discussions, but when it's all said and done, if shit hits the fan or sh things change up on it, I mean, when, whenever you find out that answer, it's not going to be uh it's just too late. All I'm going to say is, Oh my bad. Well, you know, this is what we, what we would say, you know, true, tried and true can't go wrong. Mm. Don't have to draw the map yourself. It will be there. It just again, I mean, this is this is where you guys grow in financial maturity. You know what I'm saying? Just making these decisions. And like the first thing I go back to with futures is start small. I mean, you've watched already crazy trades so far. You've seen what could happen. But I think I, I don't think I think a thousand bucks is a great place to start for the micros. I mean, trying to get into high levered products, you know, on a smaller amount, especially if they stop you out. It may hurt you more than harm you. You know what I'm saying? But. Uh, it's, I think you start off small, you're not going to regret it. Otherwise everything else, I mean, it's, it's up to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not as uh you know, small, good decisions, a hundred percent. But you know, if you try to force it, try to pick the fruit before it's ripe, it's always going to end up bitter. That's, that's just all it is. Yeah. One micro is enough, bro. That's I'm telling you, even I started playing with them too. Uh, and, and even then relative to even my balance, it was small, like I said, paper trade first, definitely. Once you're ready for that, G7 is readying new tool to boost inform enforcement of Russian sanctions. But, you know, start off small, work your way into it, uh, and you're gonna you're not going to be disappointed. But like I'm saying, I think the, the best way to look at it is the fruit is always bitter if you pick it before it's ripe. And that's what we see a lot with, with a lot of different approaches, methods, 
stocks, investments, you know, everybody wants the fruit, but they don't want to wait and they don't want to actually plant it and water it and take care of it and, you know, let it get to that point where you could pick fruit off of the tree and it is sweet and it is what you intended. But, you know, it's it's your decision. So I hope y'all make the best. Whoa, DXCM, Dexcom, dying. Apple has breakthrough in secret bid to track glucose. Oh, my gosh. Oh, diabetes monitoring for Apple? You're kidding me. Damn, that's already down 4%. That's 25, 4, 5, 5 bucks. It'll be 100. We could do 25. All right, I shorted 25 shares, 109.20. Oh, they gave me a good fill. Yo, that's huge. Apple has breakthrough and secret bid to track glucose on the watch. Yeah, boomer Apple held till I die, bro. That's crazy. That's crazy. So let's see. Again, that's 4% down. That's the only thing I'm sketched out about. But DXCM, that's definitely who would pay for it. Even Abbott's getting clapped on that. And Abbott's already a little weaker. Holy crap. Apple to track glucose? That's crazy. I mean, it's coming out now, breaking. That's huge. You would have to prick the skin, right? Or I guess they're saying they have a way to track it without it. That's wild. Apple's kind of moving, but it's more it'll hurt Abbott. Like, look at Abbott. Abbott's not down as much if you want that one. DXCM got hit 4%, so that one's a little more risky. I mean, I'm still up on that one here, and I think it has a level, but Abbott is the other one. Let's We're going to replace the bonds here for a little bit. Abbott's already bouncing, but Abbott's bear not even down 1%. I got a decent fill on that. You just dropped to 105, but now I'm around break even here a little. I'm at 109.20. Uh, it's not happening the way people think it is, probably. Yeah, right, because don't you need a, a blood sample? Top tick puts. Honestly, though, if you buy calls on that, if it bounces, it'll fucking go crazy. <laughs> so on it, the shares, I think at 109, it goes back to I like I lose 100 bucks if it comes up here. If it like fully bounces back. That is crazy. That's big. I prick. <laughs> You don't need blood sample. Well, I guess we'll find out. Dude, Apple Health. All right, there it is. So DXCM's bouncing. I'm negative now or break even. Again, I, I they actually filled me good. So that was decent, but it's still down 4.7. Talk about Fibonacci, bro. There are a lot of Fibonacci's here, dude. You've been right at the Fibonacci all day, dude. Now the market's hitting a high, dude. Like 409, dude. Like cleaner 409, dude. Oh, dude, like get harder, harder take out stains, dude. Totally, dude. Look at that. Oh, yeah, dude. You're approaching the high of the day, dude. Even the yen, dude. Totally off the Fibonacci, dude. The news hit. It's hit on uh, Bloomberg. I don't know where else. Apple has secretly made headway in monitoring blood glucose without the need to prick the skin for blood. That's the headline. So they're saying they don't even need to do a prick. So no more eye prick. Mm hmm. And then Samotis and United Healthcare expand pack to five states. I'm surprised that Apple's not going up on that. Speaking of blood sugar, uh, Papa John's is running. Now Abbott's getting clapped. So Abbott is giving up there. Abbott was uh, only down a seventh of a percent. Yeah, Abbott's paying for it a little bit more. 
Now you're getting Dexcom Part 2. So wait, I think it's going to circulate. I think we're very early on that one. And I think people will, there'll be a reaction and then it'll bounce. And then Papa John's is bouncing. I don't know if that is good to mention in the midst of this. Um, Apples is getting into Theranos. Doing good. 104 now. They're down 7.8. That's a lot. So I already got another 3% off of that. I guess they're at a key level in earnings. I don't think Dexcom even had good earnings. But it's going to bounce. So it's going to like people are going to digest it. It's going to but like 7% is crazy. I think Abbott has more meat on the bone now. But then Abbott was already is already weak. That's the difference. So Abbott's at a way lower price. Abbott's been dealing with the baby formula investigation. And then Dexcom, they bounced a little bit off of earnings. They had a bad last year. And then pretty much if they break below 100, it gets ugly, as always. But then again, it's already down 8% here. 6.97%. Yeah, all those orders. It's still chilling out. And then Apple should benefit off the news. Apple's getting volume, but definitely these other sympathies are moving way more. Yeah, Papa John's ripped on all that. Mm -hmm. Same thing as uh, the last year's satellite news. No, I think satellite news, people speculated on this, but this would be a, it'd be a new segment for Apple. Apple's not going up too much on it, but anybody trying to compete, those are the ones that are paying the price right now. See, so it's already bounced back up. Literally, I had my $5 a share. Now I'm only back up a dollar a share. Mm. Deer raises quarterly dividend five cents. Abbott, big bounce. So Abbott's recovered 2%. Uh, I guess Dexcom recovered three right there almost. Main Street monthly dividend, main, like Main Street Capital. Is it a financial company? I'm not too familiar with it. Make that call. That's what I say. If that bounces up, though, those calls, I could definitely see that one going crazy. I'm back to break even now on that. So I was looking for the downside. I probably should have taken profits there. But we'll give this one some time. But now it's coming back up. MDT upside on Apple sp uh, speculation. Damn it, Medtronic. Just when we wanted it for the long term. Yeah, so Medtronic could be a winner on that. They're not moving as much. Can I crash it? I don't I don't know if I can. No, I don't think so. Tessie volume. The volume. K and W, no. I don't know much about them. K and W. Live and direct. The government's going to come for Apple Health. No. Nah. Yeah, so there's DXCM. It's already bounced now. It's only a dollar above where it was, but... I'm going to give that one a little bit. If it comes back down there, I'll close it out. We had a quick quick moment to take those profits. Every time the news hits, it drops, and then the digestion 
it allows it to bounce. And then Apple's just been going low key nonstop from it, uh, but just not as aggressive. We are near the opening highs of the day. I think we're above it, low key. Yeah, 410, you're above the high right now. This is technically a new high. And then 411, remember 417, 4017, 4034 is really bullish. But then we have what, an hour and 15 minutes? Whew! Hour 15 minutes until the event. This is old news. Uh, this is a new one. So I don't know, uh, like the other features of the iWatch, but this is seemingly a new, uh, a new secret breakthrough they were working on. So it's saying they hit a major milestone in creating blood glucose monitor. Apple disguised the work behind a secretive healthcare startup. Apple has a moonshot style project underway that dates back to Steve Jobs, non-invasive and continuous blood glucose monitoring. Uh, the goal of the secret endeavor, dubbed E5, is to measure how much glucose is in someone's body without needing to prick the skin for blood. After hitting major milestones recently, the company now believes it could eventually bring glucose monitoring to the market. According to people familiar with the effort, it perfected such a breakthrough would be a boon to diabetics and help cement Apple as a powerhouse in the healthcare. Adding to the monitoring system to the Apple Watch, the ultimate goal would make the device an essential item for millions of diabetics around the world. Uh, there's still years of work ahead, um, but the move could send the multi-billion industry. Roughly 1 in 10 Americans have diabetes, and they typically rely on a device that pokes the skin for blood samples. Uh, there are also patches from Dexcom and Abbott that are inserted to the skin but need to be replaced every two weeks. Apple is taking a different approach using a chip technology known as silicone photonics and measurement process called optical absorbin absorption spectroscopy. Uh, the system uses lasers to emit specific wavelengths of light into an area below the skin where the interstitial fluid substances that leak out of the capillaries that can be absorbed by glucose. The light then reflects back to the system in a way that indicates the concentration of glucose. An algorithm then determines a person's blood glucose level. Hundreds of engineers working on the project as part of Apple's Exploratory Design Group, or XDG, uh, or a previously unreported effort akin to Google X. It's one of the most convert, covert initiatives in the famously secretive Apple. Even fewer people are involved in it than the company's self-driving car. They have a lot of this, man. So it's a big report. It's new. It's all new. It's just years out, though. That's the only thing. So I think it's a good news project that is going to have people hyped on it, but I think they just said they hit a milestone. And now we know they're working on it. Yeah, they shine a light. <laughs> they're like, we shine a laser through your skin. And then based on the laser, we tell the laser to send back a mirror. And then based on that mirror, I have my AI tell me how much mirror equals how much sugar or glucose. So then that's it. Boom. wonder long-term effects of shooting lasers into the skin hey man just stop the spread of diabetes so they're asking too many questions asking way too many questions you clearly don't care about everybody with diabetes so apple everything is catching a red off of that it could be worse it could be worse Who makes the laser? You just told your ex he had diabetes. He was happy. That's good. Why are you talking to your ex still? Come on. No I'm kidding. <laughs> like, I don't need this advice right now, Josh. What do you mean? I'm just letting him know about a breakthrough technology. Tell him it might take a couple of years. It might take a couple of years. Edgar, Edgar, I see you in the chat, Edgar. Edgar, can I interest you in a membership for yourself, Edgar? Edgar, how come you don't have a member? Edgar, I love you, Edgar. You know that? Damn, Edgar, you make robots? 
Edgar, you're the man, bro. I see you, man. We need to get you a badge for yourself. Wait, I think I can, I found Edgar. Edgar. He's a good guy, man. Good guy. I know I'm trying to gift him one. It won't work. Because like some people, if you click on their name, it says buy membership and it won't let me buy him a membership. Google. Yeah, Edgar is a good guy. We love you. Yeah, it won't let me. Edgar, a real one. He's a real one, man. You have to turn on the feature to receive gifts, but honestly, I'm not even seeing it on anybody. I think they took it away. They used to have it where you click on names and it would say buy membership. On Twitch, you can. They had it for a little bit on YouTube when YouTube was trying to copy everything. The benefits of membership. Uh, you get to be a part of an elite squad. Um, I forgot how the rest goes. But something about an elite squad. You get to be a part of it. Uh, NTSB to issue preliminary report on Ohio train derailment on February 23rd. So initial report on the derailment tomorrow from the NTSB. Four month bills draw 4.83 allotted at high 93%. Alan McCombs, my guy, and Tim Whitman holding it down. Let's go. Woo. <laughs> Get ready for the minutes, Chattadonia. Locked in, loaded. These are their stories. One month from the Leo. That's good, man. You make making it past Elon's a big deal, bro. Not too many people make it past Elon in the stock market land. So it's good, man. Mm -mm. What are you looking at when reading the news? So we have our proprietary methods. I have old videos that you could find on the main channel of how to find news. But unfortunately, uh, people have reported us several times so i'm not allowed to share uh how i get everything believe it or not i wish i could i have other videos that could train you uh, and there's other tools out there that you could use uh but the best thing is at this point i mean i don't think you're gonna get it any faster than uh sitting here and there shouldn't be more than a a one second delay so that's why we encourage you tune into the stream subscribe and like the video uh you know seven years or seven years seven hours a day uh, and you know, it's, uh, it's not bad to have a, a good audio there that could break down everything for you, but we'll be good. Yeah. And please don't mention, I mean, there's other things, but like legitimately I've been in trouble. So for y'all who snitch, snitch me out, man, uh, that's unfortunate. So please don't snitch us all out. Uh, you know, I hope y'all could be with it, but actually though, cause it's not, uh, I think if, you know, we do I I can't share a lot of stuff unfortunately mm -hmm. uh, Roblox is great could be worse it could be worse well yeah like people report you and then other people who get access to it if they abuse it we get in trouble from their behavior as well too so like even then even other Twitter accounts that have been created we get in trouble for that too just because people have tried to associate it. So we keep it low-key. I mean, I did it. I only do this for you guys at the end of the day. So uh, it's, uh, you know, you'll be here. You'll be here. You'll get it quick. And that's about it. Highly sophisticated carrier pigeons. That's honestly what I've been working on. My carrier pigeons can monitor your glucose levels too. New apple pigeon, eye pigeon. It's beautiful. Mm. 
news sources tell you no I, I'm allowed to give it to you but you're just not uh, really allowed to talk about all of it I do get news from other areas too but so it's it's fine for me to share it uh, but it's just you're not allowed to disclose it <laughs> it's a very weird concept actually it's kind of like being in the mafia to be honest with you it's kind of like fight club Pigeon catheters. Wow. Honestly, it's just chat GBT. I can't even say chat GPT anymore. I don't know how to even say it. We ain't supposed to talk about Fight Club. Man, some of you would be so bad in Fight Club. I can already know the chat. I'll be like, first rule, don't talk about it. One day later. So, so the thing you said not to talk about, Josh, Justin, I just have a real question. Are you still in that thing? No, no, no. I, are you still in it? Are you still doing it? You're still doing it, right? You know, the thing where you meet up and you beat the shit out of each other. Y'all still. Yeah. Uh, just real. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. No, just wondering. My bad. I missed the watch list. So I just thought I'd ask you on here. And I, I missed the other 50 times. You've clearly explained it. So I figured I would spam it to you now. I'm like, man, just stop. Bro, you gonna get it? Just, just calm down, dog. Just, just chill, bro. Chill. It rhymes with smite scrub. <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry. Cesar. Amen. We don't know, but go look at the old videos. There's old videos on how to find news, and there's a lot of good sources out there. You don't need anything fancy. I mean, again, I was giving it to you guys fairly quick uh, before we made any, any other upgrades, and it's honestly just like slightly faster, if that, but usually if you know how to use RSS feeds, if you know how to utilize both Twitter if you know how to use any other wire services out there, there's other wire services that you could get. Uh, you know, it's super, super efficient. I mean, it's not like this isn't a hidden secret. We try to teach people. I mean, that's how anybody in here with news, some of you have learned through that and you've been able to bring your skills to the chat as well. So it's fairly easy. And yeah, there's other places on Twitter that post it. The rules are there, but I got in trouble for Twitter account. Pretty much they try to blame me for every Twitter account that posted any news, assuming it was me. So I had to say, no, nah, man, that's not me, sir. I don't know who that may be, but it's not me. I can tell you that here, sir. So that's it. I just try to keep a low profile. Uh, at the end of the day, I mean, worst case scenario, I could always keep it. Uh, but it just, again, I love to share it with, uh, you know, we're able to get news pretty quick to everybody for free. Mm. There's a there's a bunch of services out there. You got to just know which one's good. Like try it out, see, but again, I mean, I'm telling you when and if you have the time to be on the stream or click in, I mean, I'm I'm going to save you a couple hundred bucks a month and chances are I'll probably get it faster than you too. So that's that's kind of the the downside more or less. That's why it's all about optimization. That's the way I look at it. Even then, even it's like <laughs> at this point, I would know exactly where to go even if I didn't I would that's what that's kind of how the game works where it's just like if there is something that does get faster or better, I wouldn't even waste my time and I would just use that. Does that make sense? It's like so it's kind of a catch 22. Where it's like once you kind of know where where to get it fast and where it shows up, then there you go. Your problem is solved. But that's kind of even my game plan with everything else too. All about optimization. Yeah. 
Yes, Jimmy. God bless you. Caesar has blessed you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Caesar. Caesar and Edgar. My guys. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. FOMC. Uh, scroll up. You'll see the time frame. Apple news is Apple barely. I guess it did kind of lift up the market, but I mean, the definite other names came down a little bit more. But you know, they ain't Apple. DXCM. I wonder how that's playing on both sides now. Caesar again. Caesar. Caesar's trying to find Edgar. Hey Amen. Apple stole technology from other watches. Wow, huge. Man. You're already back on your other account. See, man, you gotta come in with like good vibes, bro. So I'm gonna call you out again on the new account. And what you're gonna do is not call me a puss puss this time, okay? You know, somebody even yesterday they got mad. Because I instantly banned them on something. And I was just like, you got to be pleasant, you know? Like, think about it. Maybe this is why people, you know, if I don't know how your personal relationships are going, but you want to try to be pleasant. You know what I'm saying? If, like, you're unpleasant and always have, like, a, you know, sarcastic attitude, you know what I'm saying? See, look, you can't even wait. It's okay. It's okay. You clearly want to participate, though. That's the thing. So it's like, I, you're like the cool kid, but you're not cool. <laughs> you know, I get you. You're a rebel. I, I understand. OK, we tried. I'll try again. Don't worry. We'll get there. But yeah, just, you know, try to be more pleasant. Uh, and, you know, especially if you have a deep desire to engage with the Chad, we would love to have you here. But hopefully, uh, hopefully you remain pleasant. And that's the that's one of the best things you could do. You know, it does require some uh, some self-control uh, initially. But once you'll realize it's super easy, it's super easy to do. Respect and positivity, two top characteristics of traders, two top characteristics of successfulness, man. I'm telling you, it'll take you a long way. Five-year notes draw 4.1, allotted at high 57%. That seems very low. When's uncle coming out with another track? Oh, he got uncle got some good ones, man. He's brewing it up for you, man. The diving deep, the initial will be different than later. I think you're going to get a big initial reaction and then it's going to cool out. But unfortunately, you're only going to have two more hours after the market. So we're going to find out. But it really just depends on the level of what is actually stated. So like we talked about just when you saw, uh, you know, Powell last time. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He went crazy. He straight up just like you knew it was dovish right when it came out. And then afterwards, it kind of uh, it kind of did its thing. No uncle email. I got you. I didn't forget. Once uncle uncle still he's, there's a lot of work. There's a lot of work to be done. So there's only like very, very rough drafts that aren't finished. So I told uncle he has to finish them. He said, fuck you. Don't tell me what to do. He said, fuck, fuck you. I, I'm going to do what I want to do. Yeah, fuck, I need to take a nap. And he took a nap. Wait, why am I still talking like him now? No, man. <laughs> Doing some hip extenders. Yeah, it's good. Mm-mm. Does the court does the cult believe in shorting real estate like with DRV? I think you have you could do whatever you want. Uh, I'm not against the idea, 
I think real estate, remember, they were quick to decline and then they were kind of quick to rebound middle or end of last year. But it's, I mean, I don't, I, I think with the right approach, right balance, I mean, it, it could be a good idea or even at the right time. So I don't know. I, I've really just stayed away from real estate the way I look at it. I mean, I've bought, been buying physical real estate, but I've said it. If you think real estate is a short, it, you just short the bonds. I think that's the easiest way to go about it and not have to deal with the guidance and nitty gritty of all these companies and everything else. Trying to build, would you start with futures or stocks? Definitely stocks. And then once you learn how to trade, all, all futures is, is levered SPX. That's it. So futures, like straight up, futures are just like trading a thousand shares of SPY rather than trading a hundred shares of SPY. That's it. But trading the SPY, trading the SPX with shares, you know, it's the same exact thing. So it's just like I would go with, uh, I'd start with stocks and then once you feel comfortable, uh, and then obviously I would paper trade with futures for a little bit or a lot of bit, uh, but that's it. Same as options, not necessarily. Because options have different factors influencing price. So, you know, so st options have a break even where your break even on a stock is what you bought it at. Whereas a break even on an option is, is not what you bought it at. You know, it's based on how much you pay dictates your break even relative to the strike price. So there's just no premium. Exactly. And actually futures have some level of embedded premium into the, you know, the contract date. And it's a future contract. But other than that, I would start with it. Good futures for a small account, MNQ. Uh, actually, MNQ is really big. I'd go MES slash MES, a micro future. Solid, dude. Can't can't go wrong with that. I really don't think so. You refinanced your condo and bought 200000 worth of DRV at thirty eight to hedge the down. Okay. Okay. I see you. I see you. Mm -hmm. MES. The only future. It's a great one. It's solid. You could live off of MES. You could... Um, I mean, my thing, I wouldn't necessarily buy anything too crazy unless uh i would just if i ever did a cash out refinance i would buy another house i would have just bought it in cash how do you qualify you gotta you gotta make it sound like you're a degenerate the smallest move on the es can make you 200 i mean same thing with the mes though you could do good micro futures are great honestly i i really think you should I think you should, uh, but again, you have to just work your way into it. Like I'm saying, you know, if you try to try to pull the fruit before it's ripe, it is always going to end up bitter. So if you're not paper trading and jumping into futures, my, my love you, but you deserve what is going to happen. You know what I'm saying? And trust, you've already watched it. You've watched me get in plays that have ran crazy. And again, we've been able to make good money too, but it's just not something where that's why I just I think the biggest trap with futures is get, is is the small accounts where they try to get everybody like hey do it for fifty bucks do it for a hundred bucks like trust me do not fuck with it it's it's a trap you know what I'm saying like it's it's very very simple like if you go paper trade get your ass a thousand bucks start with the micro go with that micro you know turn that one thousand into five thousand with micros. Then you're then you know what I'm saying. Then you could work your way up through there. Maybe go to two micros, and then after you work that one up, then you could maybe move to a ES or maybe a YM uh, as the, you could trade the Dow with a little bit bigger of leverage. Yeah, the NQ play is crazy because that one. I mean, this piece of shit. I was only supposed to do that jobs day play, and then I was gonna close it out at like 1800 loss, and I didn't, and then it just it went crazy. And now, granted, you witnessed, you know, a pretty wild <laughs> event in the market, but it does show you how fast uh, things can go. And that's with massive size. But even on the small ones, that's what I do. I think you need like 1500 or 1600 for an MES. So that's where I think you start. I think you go and then do honestly, I think realistically, $3,000, $1,600 for one contract. 
and then sixteen hundred dollars in reserve, thirty two hundred bucks. You do that, you start on T uh, Think or Swim, call it a day. And if you don't, if you can't get thirty two hundred dollars, fucking save up two hundred dollars a month, uh, maybe more, a couple hundred bucks a month, and paper trade until you hit there. Paper trade teaches you nothing. Only if you're a fool. I would agree with that. Only a fool could practice and get nothing from it. You see what I'm saying? That's it. You take, you give a wise man practice. You give somebody who genuinely trying to learn a new skill, trying to understand how something works and put them through a simulator. That person will become all the wiser. You take a fool through it. And if you really do not care about anything, you will, you will walk away just as foolish, if not more impatient or with more problems. Mm. Yeah, understand uh, that's what I say understand just how it moves just get used to how it moves you get to even have an idea of how sizing up that's that's it that's what you do you are very kind um I am kind uh you know what I'm saying uh I think it would be actually I don't know if I'm the kindest person but I think it's unkind to hype people up on their dreams and aspirations that are false and getting people to end up losing their money and wasting their time and energy. And, you know, it's, I'd rather for my own sake and for my judgment, I'd rather tell you what is the truth and right as that way I could clear myself of any guilt rather than telling you, no, okay, ignore paper trading and get into a highly levered asset that you could lose more money than you put into it. So, uh, it may not sound pretty, uh, but, you know, I, I genuinely, you know, I don't tell this out of any interest. You know, think about it. You're watching me with hundreds of thousands of dollars of these future trades. You're watching this right in front of you. I mean, what do I benefit after out of telling somebody to start with $2,000? Uh, you know what I'm saying? So it just I, I hope it helps people. And it, I think it's it's very nice if you could start a career. And I would love to see people advance to a level where, they build it naturally. They learn the right way, build a solid foundation. But, you know, the, the immaturity of rejecting practice, the immaturity of trying to skirt around the rules and getting into somebody or getting into something very, very, you know, cheap that will harm you and not reading the fine print. Uh, you know, I think that's horrible. So I, I hope, uh, you know, you could get sensitive or not about it. But in, in all honesty, I say this out of the, the benefit of others uh, because I don't I don't benefit off of telling you what I've already done. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's not as if I paper traded. I paper traded in front of you. I've traded small futures. I've worked my way up with it. I've shown you it. And even then, I don't even trade with a, a sizable amount. Any my You know, my long term is as big as my trading account. And we didn't start with this much in the trading account when it's all said and done. But it's super simple, man. I just, I hope people are wise about it. And, you know, we live in an online culture where people don't really encourage it. And I, I, I hope I can, but I also know it's, it's on you guys to make your own decisions. So, you know, let's go, uh, and take it as it is no harm, no foul. I'm not here to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm here to help people out and help them get better, smarter, make more money, and hopefully push you to become the highest form of yourself that exists and t tap into that potential. Anything else? I mean, maybe maybe this won't work for you or I. Maybe we don't vibe well, but that's it. You said you would stop addressing the micro questions with no research. I did. I haven't answered one of these in a while. I kind of threw everybody to the wolves. Um, but I agree. Uh, I, I agree with a lot of stuff. You know, I think it's a good reminder. I haven't reminded you about this in like four or five months. So I think it's a good one. I mean, I have, you know, I'm not going to definitely, there's no need to like quite simply, it's, it's very simple. Fucking get clapped. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's it. It's just very, very simple. Like, if you don't want to listen, we've definitely outlined this. It is very nagging when we go over it, but it's super simple. Uh, it's just like, yo, if you don't want to listen to the right way, if you don't want to put in the practice, just, yeah, just get fucking clapped. That's it. You'll learn. That's how I learned. That's, I mean, my whole life, I didn't have, I did not have Josh answers. I did not have anybody willing to give me something for free and willing to tell me the right way. 
and even get to the point of like going against you know I don't I don't care how you view me that's like you know what I'm saying like it's not like I'm not trying to be your friend right here I'm not trying to get you to sign up and support for this and the and do this and do that it's like no it's like I didn't have that so my only thing was I either learned it and I did it the right way or I got fucking clapped that's it and that's how I learned this game is that so that's why honestly even if you don't listen I do have faith in you for the back end because guess what I am a result of getting clapped over and over and over and over again and learning and losing money and learning and losing money and having to to go get do that I was stubborn as well too so it's not like your hope is lost but it just it's on you to do it but that's the only options that's like you know you either approach it with wisdom and discipline or just do whatever the fuck you want pay the price and hopefully you you know again they say if you want to be stupid you better be tough and that's i i'm totally down with that hmm Thank you, my friend. God bless you. God bless you. That's what I'm talking about. I hope it helps. Mm -hmm. You need to teach risk management. I mean, my risk management is very simple, and I think it just I think it comes down to maturity. And just quite simply using your balance effectively. And what I mean by that is the best risk management is don't use money that affects you. That's it. That's where they scamming us. And the money that does affect you, you fucking put that, uh, you put that into your long term. And then at least it's there. It'll be stable. And then that leads to the conversation of not buying dog shit. But the only way you're going to get like the where risk management, like everybody, like I would go get, get a million stop losses do go read the fucking book on risk management, right? But the minute you put in all of your money or you put in a bigger amount that you're not used to actually moving around, that right, you've just violated every rule. <laughs> like, you see what I'm saying? Like, that's it. Risk used, like, serious, like, straight up. Like, that's it. Like, you could have every stop loss, and then you're telling me, you know, that $5,000 you have saved up, you're putting all of it in at once, and you're, that's what you're starting your account with. And that's what you're it's like, dude, you just violated every fucking rule in the book. That's it. You're walking to the poker table with your whole, whole entire savings account. That right there is that that's like one of the best things I think that you could do uh, is that you just control that amount and start small. Like I'm saying, plant, plant the seed, water it, take care of it, fertilize it, trim the tree, you know, that and, and let it actually grow below, before trying to pick the fruit and, and eat it. And that's just the, that's what we have is just fast money, fast money, big money. Everybody wants to boom, boom. I put 5,000 in, I get, I get a hundred percent. Boom. I got 5,000, 50%. I made 2,500. It's like, yeah, I, I understand the appeal, but that's just not the way to, to, to truly survive. And it's going to be, that's a game uh, where you're kind of at the mercy of a lot of things. And, and again, you know, some people will do very good. Some people do very bad. You're going to learn either way, depending on your, your, your resolute personality if you're very determined to actually stay in there and you make it where you have means to do that but you know risk management 101 dog don't use more than you could genuinely afford to lose and don't put in an amount that is going to make you emotional that's it and you start there watch what happens with that that's what you could do that man it's so it's it's a different game like that's it like I you know you're playing a different ball game when it's somebody who doesn't care about the chips on there or knows they have extra chips versus not. It's back to richest man of Babylon. When you got coins in the purse and the coins make a jingle when you walk, you feel different. You know that, right? Like go right now, like go walk with nothing in your account. Imagine you got nothing in your pocket. Walking in the street feels different than having $10,000 in your pocket, $5,000 in your pocket. You know, walking around the casino, losing all of your money feels different than walking around with five, $5,000 chips. 
It's just when you ha so you see what I'm saying, and when I'm telling you, don't go sit down at the table with all five thousand dollars. Take go with one thousand dollars and keep the four thousand. Even if you lose that one thousand, you know you got the four. And it's a different mindset. It's a different approach to to life and money when when you're able to do that. And I'm not saying you have to have a lot of money. I'm saying you need to break down your money into a smaller amount. And that's how you can work your way up anywhere from there. You got a hundred, start with twenty. You got a thousand, start with two fifty. You got ten thousand, start with twenty five hundred. Yeah, I, you see what I'm saying? You can break it down and build it back up again. I'm you gonna make me start sounding like Biggie Smalls here if I break it down for you. I'm just that's how you gotta do it. Two fifty to a half a million. You got two fifty million to half a million. There ain't nobody y'all can play with me, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Come on, you got it. Money psychology, hundred percent. That's risk management. That's where I think it starts. Otherwise, I'm not. I'm not gonna get into the. <laughs> I'm not gonna have the argument of a of a of a stop loss, do this, do that when we're violating rule number one in general. That's it. I've said it. Even a, a lot of things people don't like to hear it. People get offended by it. But I'm just saying, if your trading account is is your biggest asset, you have a problem. And why? Because you should your your house should be more, your long term should be more than your trading account. There we could go down the fucking list of things. That if this is a speculative account, you know, when you fill out the questions for options and I say you sound like a degenerate, they ask you these questions. What is your goal with this money? My goal is to grow it. My goal is to speculate. If it is a trading account, no way this is your biggest asset in your life right now. There's no way we got. And guess what? If you did good trading, the idea should be take that money then and put some of it now to work in other areas, a long term or whatever else it should be. But then it's just like that says a lot right there. I could tell how emotional people will be 100% invested versus 10 or 20% invested. It's a whole different mantra. It's a whole different mindset. Mm -mm. I trade with my bill money. I'm broke. I don't have any extra. I'm a college kid. You could build up from it. I mean, I started trading in college too. I would hustle. I would do stuff. It's just like it's it's all about, you know, set it up like I'm saying, save 10 percent for your long term first, then go take another 10 percent for trading. That's fine. And then live off the rest. Do whatever you need to do. But, you know, it's like you it's it's kind of how you break it down. That's all like everybody touches money at some point unless you like totally are in college living off of mom and dad and you just have a meal card. You know what I'm saying? But even then, I'm sure you touch money. How else do you smoke weed? How else do you how else do you go and go out to drink or you know what I'm saying? I've been in college, man. Like, wait, like, hold up. Oh, people are talking about Dexcom and Abbott face scant risk from Apple glucose. Analysts are saying uh, Abbott non-event, Dexcom non-event. It looks like I'll read it for you in a little bit. If you still live with mom and dad, you should be. I think you should be. I mean, you should invest for sure. Uh, like, I don't think you, uh, I don't think you have any problem, you know, doing anything to the contrary, but I'm just saying like everybody touches a dollar. That's all like that. That's, that's the whole point of richest man in Babylon. You know that my guy goes up to his homie. He says, I had this dream. I had an awful dream. I had a dream that I was rich. And then when I woke up, I wasn't rich and it made me feel awful. And then he goes and he's talking with his homie about it. And then he tells him, he said, yo, he said, haven't we not touched money in our lifetime? Haven't we been here on this or on this earth for X amount of years? And haven't we not had money come through our hands and we actually touch a dollar and you had money? Like, think about it. You touch money. Every single person in here is the one that is touching money. So it's like you got to break it down. It's just like, what are you doing when you when you touch that dollar? Like, where is it going? And that's what I mean by starting to break it down. And that's where you start with that. You'll be good to go. And the spy is hitting a high. And you got 30 minutes till the minutes, Chattadonia. That's fun to say. 30 minutes till the minutes. All right. You're five points away from 4017. I have all my money day trading. But listen, I will promise you. You are not the only one. I probably could promise you I've been like that in my life as well. And that's it. It's just like the point I'm saying here, I hope you could heed the wisdom, but don't like at the same time too, no one's trying to like 
you know what I'm saying, bring anybody down. I'm just saying, though, if you really want to stay in this game for a long time, you guys have seen me do a lot of ups and downs. I've been here for years. I'm able to provide all of this for free 99, and it's amazing to see the support we have too, but it's still like, you know, I've been in this game for a while, and eventually you will be tested, and you will get put to the test on it, and it's just like the quicker you learn this, the better it's going to be, and then the more likely this is going to be a very profitable segment of your life that nobody could take away from you, and that's why you got to do it. Uh, but take uh, in your due time and there is hope for everybody. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and that's, you know, n everybody's at a different stage, but I hope you can, uh, you learn to build this and know you have the answers in front of you, uh, versus not. And that's the thing. And that's why it's like, everybody's like looking for the, the shortcut, the trick, this and that again, analysts are pumping Abbott now in Dexcom. I'm full port because I desperately need a down payment for a new place. You're not. That's not it. That's not like desperation. Desperation is when you have nothing. Uh, you know what I'm saying? In a weird way, you may be trying to, you probably just don't even want to buy the house. So then that way you're like, okay, if I fucking full port it and I double it up, I'll make enough money and then I probably won't even want to buy the house. And then if I lose it, I could say I lost it and then I don't have to buy the house. So it's okay. I've been there. Trust me. Tell the market makers to make my puts go up. Jay, I don't know how you view me, man. Jay's been in here for a while, man, and he's just been like, Josh, make it go up. Make it go down. I feel like he thinks I'm like a duende. <laughs> I think he thinks I'm a duende. I'm like a market duende, and I don't know. I think he's just he's watched me go to the bathroom and the market went down. He watched that happen way too many times, and now he's like, nope, I believe. He's like, I believe. That's good, man. Honestly, bro, you should put that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, man. For real. We need we need more. You need more servants in the Lord like that. Because I don't know what I did to earn that, man, because I don't think I deserve it. But, like, for real, bro, that's that's very admirable of you. Because, like, you've been mad consistent on, on this, this Josh superstition. Yeah, for real. Uh-huh. <laughs> he's been straight up. He's like, yep, no, Josh knows. Josh can do it. I like it. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I'm kind of disappointed I can't do it for you, but mm -hmm. Josh GBT because my joke was good. I'll take it. I'll take it, man. Thank you. I swear, man, he thinks I'm a duende. He got a little picture of me as like a leprechaun in his room. He got like candles next to it. And then that's it. Be like, I'll sacrifice a put once a week. I'll let it expire worthless. Just bring down the other nine. Please. I know he could do it. Make the make it print, Josh. Make it print. That's it. And he does it. He never, like, stopped asking. He kept, you know what I'm saying? Like, he never held back. Like, it doesn't matter. Even if the put didn't print, he would still come back with faith. I'm telling you, it's super inspiring, man. It's super inspiring. Y'all need this. Amen, Jay. God bless you, bro. Mm -hmm. No, for real. He's like, it's okay. I still believe. He said that was not the will of the puts printing. I, he will make it print. That's it, man. He, he'll make it print. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. <clears throat> okay, well, let's see. Maybe you have an opportunity because I do need to go to the bathroom. So let's see how this plays out. Option income ETF on Tesla. All right, they're going to sell you an ETF here. Well, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Follow me on Instagram. I love you. you know, BRB. LY, which is the Yield Max Tesla Option Income ETF. And I think all words really describe this thing. It's looking to maximize yield. It's writing options on top of Tesla to get you income. Um, it's a still a small ETF at 1.6 million. Um, the fee is almost 1%, which is a little on the high side, but for a trading strategy like this, it's not that, that high. And then we look at the inception date. Uh, it's only a couple months old. So let's look at what this does, right? The idea here is to go long Tesla and then write call options that are about 5 to 15 percent out of the money on a weekly basis. That gives you a lot of income unless Tesla surges. That has this thing yielding 65 percent annually. Not totally guaranteed, but that's what it's yielding. 
And this thing, they also write options on an ARC product that's yielding 75%. That's where the yield max comes into play. Now, here's what you give up though. You give up upside to Tesla. So let's look at the returns of Tesla versus TSLY. And you can see, since this thing came out, it is underperforming Tesla by 13 percentage points. But you can see the, the yield, 16% down on price. But once you factor in the yield, the returns get a lot better. But still, Matt, Katie, you're going to miss the upside to Tesla if there's these extreme moves up, which there has been. But the income is definitely going to appeal to some people. Eric, thanks so much. And joining us to talk about this ETF is Jay Pescicelli. He's the CEO and founder of Zega Financial. Jay, when you created this ETF, you know, ultimately, what do people use it for? Do they use it as a one-way bet against Tesla? Or do you find yourself being a fairly expensive hedge? Yeah, thanks for having us on. This is such a unique product that uh, we find the use case to be more of an alternative approach. Most of the investors that are talking to us about Tesla uh, are interested in a different way of growing their portfolio that isn't directly tied to the direction of the market. And as you mentioned a minute ago, the dividend at you know, tracking in the 65% range is going to give you an alternative income. You know, the, the investors that look at this kind of a fund have been interested as a way to add dividends to an ETF portfolio without adding all of the risk that might be associated with, a, with an underlying stock like Tesla. What do you make of the performance that we've seen, Jay? I mean, as um, the Dow turned lower for the year, it's up fractionally now, but um, still flat. The S&P is only up like 4%. The Nasdaq's only up 10%, and Tesla's gained 61% year to date. What's going on? Yeah, you know, quite frankly, for us, we don't care all that much what Tesla does. Good it's nice answer. when it goes up. Like, this is a covered call strategy, right? It's almost the first option strategy that everybody learns, right? Options 101, we learn about covered calls, and we learn we could generate premium. This is more about... Yeah, we didn't learn that. We learned to the moon. Different era. I'm just scared that that guy's name was Jay, and then Jay, who thinks I'm a duende, is like, that's my name. It's a sign. Josh is going to make Tesla put sprint. No, I didn't say that. What? Mm-hmm. We learned the ghetto spread. Ghetto spread hits, though, man. That's, you know what I'm saying? No, that's ghetto spread, man. That changed the world. That changed the world. It's still effective. That's it. I'd be ghetto spreading all day if I was hitting those options. Well, I kind of ghetto spreaded uh, that one uh, option that one or that one future. Remember? I remember I had the ES future calls. We learned 10% first. Yeah, it's an ETF based on covered calls. That's like Jeppy. So a lot of the chads have brought up Jeppy. That's a covered call ETF. That's why the yield is like 9%. But Chad, are you guys ready, man? It's 30 minutes. So literally since that Apple news, we've been running up here. You didn't get to 417. Remember, all day yesterday, you were not able to break 417 once we got over there. So I get those spread in every day. Calling GM on the watch days. So we're gonna see, but this is uh the jitters, the jitters here. I'm gonna have analyst comments in about uh, 17 minutes. So get ready. The long term is your friend, Habibi. Mashallah. Let's just go to Habibi. Oh man, I love the long term. I'm excited, man. Long term is gonna be great. Chad, I hope y'all are all excited for the future. You know that, especially if you young out here. You know, I hope we had good talks on trading and getting in this stuff. I think what a lot of y'all should realize, though, is like, fuck the bullshit. You have a lot of time, God willing. You know what I'm saying? So I just hope you maximize it, man. And, you know, there's the, the level of opportunity. And I just remember being young and starting out in trading. And it's just like it's wild to think how many things have happened. You know what I'm saying? All those things. It, it's just crazy. So. You know, uh, just make sure you realize your potential and your opportunity, my friend. It's out there. So, yeah, stay in the game. That's another another big lesson, regardless of how you want to chop it up and how you want to look at everything we said, man. Woo! You just stay in the game, baby. Mm -mm -mm. Other books, The Richest Man of Babylon. Intelligent Investor is a boomer book, but that book changed my life. I feel like that book made me like immensely smarter. 
and it helped me out with uh, investing a lot, actually. Let's see, what are we pricing in even for today? SPX. $24. That's like what? 2%, 1%, not even? You're actually not even pricing a lot. What is $24.43 divided by 4,011.92? That's like zero, zero. No, did I do this right? Did I do it right? I don't know. 4011.92. Oh, wait, no. It's February the 22nd. Divided by 24.43. No, no, no. What? So we're pricing in 90, yeah, 0.6. Oh, yeah, so this might not even be... That's average. Yeah, that just seems so low. So, honestly, the event risk on this is pretty small. Yeah, it's like half a percent move. It's really not even that much. And that's average, just like I was showing you guys yesterday. Let's see, we're waiting for the minutes. Well, whether we believe it or if it does more than that, it's going to shock everybody. So let's look at one hour. I think that's a better gauge. But yeah, on average, if uh, actually, it's a lot considering. So here are the other times. So average is about a uh, 0.03 gain. If it's good after one hour, 0.34. And then if it's bad after one hour, it's 0.21. And then the most of the moves happen in the first 30 minutes. And then the average, on average, you're down in the first 30 minutes. So realistically, that first 30 minutes will probably be where all the action happens. And then it's going to like level off and then get you into the close. And here are the last like four or five. Uh, you pretty much, the worst one was January. So last minute's. First 30 minutes, you were down about 0.8, and then you closed at like 0.3 negative. Uh, the blue one, that is October. After the first hour, you were up a quarter percent in the first 30 minutes, and then you were down about a tenth of a percent, and then the other two were positive. So like pretty much it's either. It's very, 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 very minimal. Around the world, and Joseph Yovin. What's up, baby? Holding it down. Let's go. Rocking the tank, too. Are you in the tank top right now? Because that's hard, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's my tank top, bros. I'm still... I st I'm pale as hell still, though, man. I need a... I can't wait till the sun comes back. It hasn't even been that cold of a winter here in California. I don't know what the rest of y'all doing. Laser extends 18% on Mercedes packed. Isn't that old? Hold on. Laser and Mercedes? We had this. They said Mercedes to integrate next generation... Of iris lidar across broad range of next generation cameras. Yeah, laser and we saw that move. Remember a couple weeks ago? When was that? It has to show up on the 14 day. I think it was one of these. Hmm. Lasers running though. So it don't shine forever. But as long as we here, then we might as well shine together. Better now and never. Business before pleasure. Long term in the chat. Who you know do it better. Damn right, no matter what, we airtight. Before you hear something, make sure you hear right. Don't make yourself ass out of yourself by assuming my music keeps you moving. What are you doing? Mm hmm. Josh is low key Rihanna. Word. I've never got that one. Day after minutes is kind of, uh, it's in the air. So I think it's about the same. The average reaction day hour, day after, uh, it's pretty much, it's actually borderline the same. We don't really do much. I only think like last year, 
I'm pretty sure there's only one Fed minutes that actually made us move big. So that's the problem is like there was in the last 12 months, 18 months, I'm pretty sure there was only one Fed minutes that made people like go crazy. But other than that, like nothing really happened. So like, let's take a look. I think it was February. Yeah, so like February 16th, this was minutes. And then you drop for the next like 10 days afterwards. Then you had April 6th. And we drop there and then you p bounce back up. And then that was the Fed meeting on the 22nd. So actually the, the early in the year, the Fed minutes would clap us. Then May 25th. Again, April 6th, this was a minutes day. But like you could see it, it like it was already down before that. It barely moved and then it took two days to react. And then you did all of that. Yeah, laser's still running. And then what's the next, next one? May 25th. So May 25th, these minutes from the bottom, you actually rallied up and then you didn't drop until July 6th or, or June. But then the next minutes was July 6th. You popped and then sold off. So... After like June, July, the minutes stopped doing shit. And then August 17th, uh, this was the minutes. And then we dropped and then you had Jackson Hole and then you had the Fed. And then October 12th, uh, actually day before we got clapped, we dropped. The uh, day before the bottom was the last minutes. And then November 23rd, uh, you kind of did nothing. You like went up a little bit, then dropped the next day and then popped back up after that. And then January 4th, 2023, uh, we already had our minutes actually. So the last minutes was January 4th and I showed you that. And that one you did, uh, you dropped, dropped the next day, then popped up by the next week. Yeah, Luminar and, uh, Luminar and your boy Mercedes made a deal. So really, like it was just last year in the beginning of the year when we first started doing the rate hikes, that's when the minutes really had an effect. But I'd say the second half of the year, three quarters of the year, the minutes don't really do anything. And that's why, too, I mean, right now, options are only pricing in uh, a half of percent move. And like I've showed you here from the last ones, it doesn't move much. I think the first 30 minutes will be wild. Uh, other than that, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I think I can interpret it very well when it comes out. Uh, like we're saying, we want to look for just immediately bullish or immediately bearish. So just like, uh, just like when we were listening to Powell, during the press conference, you knew he was bullish. I mean, you should go watch the recap of just listening to me, listen to Powell. I'm like, oh my gosh, like he was so bullish. Like you, you got it off of there. So what we're looking for is clues on 50 basis points, which is pre pretty much you're, we're not, it's not going to be as clear cut as you would expect. And then other than that, we want to see uh, the criteria towards what would make them uh, pause rates or even cut rates or even raise them. So that's all we need, uh, just those two things. If it's because if it's really not, if it doesn't explain a lot, which which is a possibility, the market's going to go back to doing nothing here, and then you know reacting to whatever else there was. But any sort of guidance towards that stuff will be great. Hmm. <laughs> You immediately knew. Yeah, because what it's like when you we'll see if like, let's say they don't say anything about uh, 50 basis points or let's say they even if like in the minutes says something where no, you're not going to get any 50 basis points. Yeah, then there you go. It's like they're most likely not going to talk about it, but it's like imagine if they said if they completely reject it, that's bullish. Uh, but then also, too, we want to know, is there more of an answer and, and this is what Powell was alluding to at the last, you know, uh, FOMC. He was alluding to the fact that, hey, this is a, you know, we are going to have an answer to that question on the minute. So we're going to find out. I think airlines already reported there. And then the gold companies, 
I mean, some people are getting bullish on gold again. I mean, the crazy part about the gold is you still don't know anybody's positioning. That's the wild part. So even like we're saying with that CFTC pause, you still don't even know how posi people are positioned in gold and or uh, bonds. Minutes were before CPI and PPI. So that's why there's a, there's a chance the potency is taken out. But now let's say Powell and, and the gang, let's say they explain their rate mechanism, right? And let's say they talk about, you know, their response mechanism and discussing that, hey, well, if there was a higher PPI, a higher CPI, we are going to raise rates even more, then the market will know how to immediately take that in within a couple of minutes. So the data, there's data that's missing. This is supposed to be three weeks old, technically speaking. But like I've told you, people argue this. People argue, even though the minutes is old, some people argue that they, they try to make changes. I, I, I don't know when they produce it, even though it's supposedly the, the meeting minutes from the FOMC, there is a chance that they could adjust some things. But most of the time, this is old data. That's the thing. But like we've seen in the beginning of last year, it had big moves. Other than that, the minutes don't really cause a reaction. So I think just given how the market has moved, given hot PPI data, given the, the recent increase in the Fed futures towards 50 basis points, and if you'll notice, no matter what we did today, it stayed relatively stable. This is what is going to make it all, all important, more or less. Canadian dollar. I think it's because people are expecting the dollar to, uh, the dollar is going to take over. And Canada has been calming down with their rates too. There's no way in heck they're pausing or lowering. That would be stupid. Well, hopefully we get insight into, again, a mechanism for how they could do that. Like that's just, that's the number one thing we want. Is like if they could give us more guidance into how that's going to come about. That would actually say a lot, but the the and and I hope you guys get it. I think a lot of people miss out on this, even though I've said it a lot. Like, do you understand why pausing is so important? Let's see, Chad. Let's see. Do you know why pausing is so important to the Fed or to the market? There's something really important about pausing. That's why when you know when the when the Fed is going to pause, it has a very very heavy implication. Let's see. There you go. There you go. Chad's listening. I love it. There you go. I love it. God bless you, Chad. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And I hope you guys get this because this is why everybody and their mom starts to front run everything. The, the whole thing about them pausing is that it leads to an immediate rate cut. You guys are aware, very well aware. I, I love it, man. Beautiful. So the problem with cutting or pausing is that right when you pause, on average, it leads to a rate cut within 30 to 90 days. That's just how it's played out in the last 30 years. So the minute they signal pause or the minute they admit the pause, there there you go. You know it's going to – it's actually like 20 days on the average and then the median – or on the median. And then I think on the average, it's like 90 days or something like that. So it all just depends. But the logic there behind it – is that there's a short time period. The minute you pause, the next step is cut. And that's where people front run it. And that's where people try to get ahead of it all. So that's it. That's why, you know, that's why Powell doesn't want to reveal his card. Does that make sense why Powell's a dickhead? 
and why he doesn't give it to you as clear cut and why it seems like why is the Fed doing this? Why are they bullish one day? Why are they bearish the other day? You know, think about it. Powell doesn't want you to know his card because the minute there's an ace on the table, you know Powell has the other ace. You see, that's all it is. The minute you see the rate cut card or the rate pause card, you know Powell is holding a rate cut card as his only other card. That's it. So that's why Powell and the rest of the Fed, they're going to just, you know, make you go both ways because they don't want you to have the right. Because then, boom, the minute you know what's going to happen, markets are going to rally off of it or people are going to start positioning, you know, very aggressive towards it. So, Chad. Mm -mm. Yeah, Powell may not even know, but that's the whole point. Even if Powell doesn't know, the minute you stop, your next step is already telegraphed. So even if, let's say, Powell didn't even know, that's where it gets crazy. All right, 10 minutes, Chad. Are you guys ready? Uh, I got a couple of breakdowns for you ahead of the minutes here. So uh, you could do us a favor by making sure you like the video and make sure you are subscribed. Uh, and I promise you I won't disappoint you. Uh, and we're going to have all this information every day. We're going to get all of this for you. We're going to do a little bit of work right here. So show some love. We are glad that you're here. I hope you're having a good day too, man. You know what I'm saying? It's always good. It's always a good day to have a good day. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So uh, with the Fed's last meeting just three weeks ago, a lot has happened since the wave surprising economic data. While today's release won't be completely dead on arrival, we will have to take some aspects with a grain of salt. The two big themes likely discussed at the last meeting were disinflation. There was a mounting evidence of the end of last year that inflation uh, in some parts of the economy was starting to cool in a meaningful way. We'll be on the lookout for how this was discussed among participants, especially in regards to the timing of rate increases and then the pace of tightening. We've learned from several Fed officials since the meeting that some non-voting members would have preferred to hike by 50 instead of stepping down to a quarter point. That was ultimately delivered. Any conversation around this that shows will be of interest as we've discussed. It's also been on the lookout any discussion uh, it will, will take, again, increase on the pace of rate hikes. That is what people are going to be looking at, back to half a point moves, for example. It has become apparent in recent weeks, especially with surprises in inflation and jobs data, that some officials support moving away from a linear path in rate hikes. The head of the Cleveland and St. Louis Fed have both said that they saw the case for another half a point increase at the last meeting, and the Dallas Fed president said he could see a scenario where the Fed resumes increases even after pausing if necessary. So again, this is all stuff we've discussed here for now. Nothing should be new. I'm still going to sell the NVIDIA before close. Yeah, well, that's the pre-earnings plan. I'm up on it though now, huh? Where'd it go? My, I still have the Dexcom too. NVIDIA. Oh, break even. So would the Fed potentially reaccelerate its pace of rate hikes and going up by 50 in March? Unfortunately, the minutes over the past year haven't really given much by ways of clues as to the committee's discussion of the appropriate size of their policy moves. But given they did step down for a second straight meeting in February, perhaps we might get some indication about how participants think about calibrating the size of moves. So that's why I remember that that calibration system. That's what we are looking for here. It shouldn't, we're not guaranteed to get it, but if it does come up here, that's that's going to be the money shot on this one today. If you get calibration mechanism, we're going to all get hooked up on that. Uh, the running assumption may be that while some meeting participants wanted a stronger 50 basis point move on February 1st, there was also a discussion about when to suspend the rate hike cycle. That is a, after a specific comment by Federal Chair Jerome Powell at the February meeting. He said, quote, I've read you guys this on the watch list as well. The minutes will come out in three weeks and we will give you a lot of detail. We spend a lot of time talking about the path ahead and the state of the economy, and I wouldn't want to start describing all the details there, but there was a sense of the discussion that was really taking, uh, talking quite a bit about the path forward. Again, while the discussion predated the latest strong data, any hints about the participants were thinking specifically about the path forward could help inform expectations of rate moves in the coming months. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So the key problem with these minutes is that 
it, that the meeting they uh, memorialized preceded a series of strong data points that came in. The 517,000 surge in January payrolls that blew away estimates, the reacceleration of month-on-month -month CPI inflation in January, the biggest jump in ISM services since mid-2020, and then the largest increase in retail sales in nearly two years. Against this sort of backdrop, any suggestion from the minutes that a February discussion was more hawkish than expected could be particularly painful for stocks and treasuries coming even before that slew of strong data. So that's the crazy. So pretty much what they're saying is that if this shit reads hawkish right off the bat, and that was before even seeing that data, it's going to be double, double hawkish, essentially, because they didn't even know all of that stuff came in. So keep that in mind. Uh, while the discussion around uh, the economic data may be a bit stale, given the blowout jobs report and the new inflation numbers, we can nevertheless glean some insight from how officials have talked about last year's nascent disinflation. The Fed has indicated that it is now carefully watching the so-called super core measure of services inflation, which includes housing in addition to food and energy. You could see how this has flatlined a bit over the recent months and hasn't moved down nearly as much as overall inflation. I got a picture. Oh, they ain't giving me my pretty picture. There it is. Please hold right here. So this is the super core measure that people are talking about. It's flatlined, but it's still up. Super core. <laughs> uh, so here is what, what uh, Bloomberg's economics is expecting. Uh, they say the minutes will show the decision to raise rates by 25 was not unanimous among FOMC members, though it was unanimous among a narrower group of voting members. That disagreement may have led to the compromise of retaining references to ongoing rate hikes in the policy statement. Most participants likely agreed that disinflation has barely begun and that it'll take a while to return inflation to 2% target. Participants likely agree that a sufficiently restrictive level of rates is near and a lot has changed in the week since the meeting with inflation. Inflation now picking up again. Any signal the minutes offer about potential rate pause may already be obsolete. Damn, so they're saying nothing. They're saying they're expecting nothing out of that. So Bloomberg saying dud, bro. Uh, Anna Wong, chief economist, says minutes of the January meeting will show just how strong the prevailing dovish sentiment is on the committee, or at least how strong it was a few weeks ago before data showed inflation picking back up. At the time of the meeting, inflation seemed poised to undershoot the FOMC's forecast and favorable inflation news dominated the headlines. Officials likely considered scenarios where price pressures would ease faster than expected and discussed when they might consider pausing rate hikes. A lot has changed since then, however, and any signal that the minutes about a potential pause in the hiking could already be outdated. So they're saying anything, even if it is a pause, they're saying it's outdated. Damn, I'm kind of leaning hawkish now because they're saying it's going to be a dud. Even if they mention anything about pausing, they didn't get the 500K jobs report. They didn't get hot PPI. They didn't get hot retail sales. They're pretty much saying even if they sounded dovish as hell, it still might be behind. Yeah, we got about two minutes here, Chad. Two minutes. So Ira Jersey and Will Hoffman said that although the data hasn't been friendly to the Fed's inflation fight since January to February, the expectation seems to be for the minutes to be modestly more dovish than December's. The minutes of December's meeting actually had a fewer dovish sentences, causing the FOMC sentiment indicator to rise, even though Chair Powell's opening marks were, uh, uh, were, were hawkish. So again, here's the sentiment score. Interesting. All right, Chad. You got about two minutes. It's game time. You're not going to see Jerome Powell today. No, no, no. All, all that's coming out is going to be a text. So that's it. I'll read over it here for you. I mean, I would keep an eye on the bonds. Again, Laser had that news with Mercedes. Uh, let's get Apple up here just in case. But game time. One minute, Chad Adonia. One minute. Like that video, man. It's like a, it's like one of those old emails. Like the video for good luck. If you don't like the video, your puts and calls will get smashed. Okay, now send it to ten friends. That's a, I don't I don't make up the rules, man. I, I actually I do make up the rules, but still. All right, thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Like the video. Get ready. And again, first thirty minutes, you're gonna get more moves. And then really after the first thirty to forty five minutes, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if things just chilled out after that. So right now, market check, uh, S&P is up 0.32. Dow Jones is up a quarter, and then NASDAQ is up 0.52. And this is 15 seconds before the release now. 
get ready. Mm -mm. 15, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bond's initial bounce on it. All right, hold on. Refreshing. It's not up there. Everyone's refreshing. I don't have it yet. You're getting a reaction. Wait, is that a statement on longer run inflation goals? Almost all Fed officials back 25 basis points at the last meeting. Few saw upside uh, or officials favored. They could have backed 50. And then Fed saw upside inflation risks as key factor shaping outlook. Come on. Is this the statement? It was on February. No, no, no. Where's my minutes? I only see the other one. Again, those are the top headlines for now. All officials back 25 basis points. Uh, few officials favored or could have backed 50. So that's kind of a new one there, or that kind of confirms what they all said. There it is. Now the minutes are out. That sucks. That took him almost a minute to get it on the website. So I'm going to read through right now. Now, nobody got a full read on it. So, so far, it's coming in as expected. Policymakers having with some policymakers favoring 50 basis points. So here's the here's the deal. There's one mention of the word pause. So over the period, some other central banks commuted. They were at or near policy where it would be appropriate to pause and assess. Uh, let's see. The manager pro term turned next to a discussion of monetary markets. Hold on. I need to read from the beginning. In emerging markets, Japan unexpectedly widened its yield curve in December. Some other central. There's only one mention of pause. And then that's it. So the headline suggests there's another one. Fed notes importance of financial conditions matching policy. This headline suggests some dissatisfaction with the new year rally in stocks and bonds. There's only one mention of pause. I don't know. You could go back and check it. I'm trying to see. I'm, I want to get that discussion there. So you're reacting. I think that first one right there, what I just read you, though, the financial condition line is negative. So watch out, though. This, is, this still isn't that big. Market. Why dispersion in views about the extent of a potential slowdown? Market participants interpreted incoming data as pointing to moderating inflation risks. Against this backdrop, they judged the FOMC would likely slow the pace of rate increases further at the current meeting, and respondents at the desk surveys of primary dealers widely expected the committee to implement quarter point increase in the target range of the Fed funds. Survey respondents assessed the uncertainty around the likely peak level. Uh, narrowed relative to the comparable results of the December surveys. A significant share of survey respondents anticipated the committee would hold the policy rate for 2023. Um, let's see. Here's key phrasing from the main story. The minutes also said almost all officials agreed it was appropriate to raise rates by 25 at the meeting, while a few favored or could have supported a bigger 50-point hike. That's the biggest development there's something on there. Uh, again, several Fed officials discussed the risk of higher rates to commercial real estate. But that one right there, that's like pretty much in a weird way, uh, Bullard and Mester warned you by them bringing out their 50 basis points. We knew that because of them now. So that one's like the only bearish thing that's not surprising. But right now, it doesn't even seem like he discussed. I'm trying to I'm reading the paragraph now about fifth, about one when they're going to pause. But it doesn't even look like they're doing anything. Inflation outlook, signs, and less severe downturn in Europe, ease concerns about global growth. Money markets were stable, ORRP. The labor market remained tight in December with unemployment rate at historical lows. Consumer price index uh, changed out. Again, that's still dated. Mm -hmm. Officials are worried about doing too little and that stalling progress on disinflation. This is the line we would have had recently from some officials uh, that they well may need and may, may raise rates higher than previously thought. So here's a word count. Zero mentions of the word disinflation. 
and then 91 mentions of inflation down from 103 at the last meeting. Uh, so global strategist Win Thin at uh, BBH, he said a few means that it wasn't just Mester and Bullard favoring 50. I take these minutes as more hawkish than expected. Remember, they didn't have strong January data in hand, so they probably even gotten more hawkish since the last meeting. I'm bullish. I I think it's just I think it's neutral with uh, a hawkish tilt, but not that not that hawkish. But I'm not done with it yet. No, again, everyone's reading this. You have to really pick this apart. So again, I don't even think you know if you took basic hawkish versus dovish, it compares just like the last meetings. But we need our clues. Something interesting. No, Kermit and Rain Bonley. Tesla. Apple's hitting a high. A couple names are moving much more. upside for beyond this year the staff can continue to view the risks around inflation projection as skewed to the upside reflecting concerns about the persistent potential persistence of inflation but that was before they even said that. they said participants observed that uncertainty associated with their outlooks the labor market inflation was high regarding upside risk to inflation participants cited a variety of factors including possibility of price pressures to be more persistent, uh, to be more persistent than anticipated. For example, labor market staying tighter. Participants also saw the number of upside risks surrounding the outlook of inflation, stemming from China and COVID zero. And then that leads into the financial stability. They discuss vulnerabilities. Again, they brought up CRE, commercial real estate. Mm, Tesla, Apple, Nvidia. In a weird way, it seems like they kind of, you know, even though it's dated, they seem like they almost addressed everything. I Sadly, I think the biggest change right now is just that it was we found out people were, were backing 50 still, but a lot of it still sounds the same. I don't think we're getting anything on the rate mechanism now. So that one, the two things we were looking for, honestly, they just, it, if anything, you got 50 basis points. It seems like Loretta and uh, Bullard, they weren't the only ones. And honestly... You guys should be thanking Bullard now because remember when he brought the market down two days ago? If they didn't say that, we would have gotten shocked here. But it, uh, do you understand? It doesn't shock the market as much. So in a weird way, they talked about 50 basis points, but there's nothing on the rate hike mechanism. It's not looking like we're we're having – and then, again, the only mention of pause is related to – there's only one mention of the word pause, and that is uh, how they mention other countries pausing. Let me see if I can find the other one. The candles are big. Well, it's been about, what, eight minutes? So, I mean, in a little bit, all of this is going to be over. It's still even a tiny reaction. I mean, remember, we were up at 0 0.51, 0 0.3, and then 0 0.15. You, you've barely moved right now. That's the crazy part on this. So don't get too caught up into it. That's actually interesting. So last meeting, they didn't mention pause at all. So last FOMC, even this year, no mention of pause. So I don't know. I feel like that's going to be, I, we might have to go read over that one again. But that I didn't really get anything out of that paragraph. If anybody wants to take a jab at that one, go look at where it says pause. Yeah, none of the other Fed minutes have the mention of pause. So technically, this is your first mention of pause, but... All they talk about is the other, uh, all they said is over the period, some central bankers communicated they were at or near a point, I guess, where they would pause some other central bankers. They were mentioning uh, their, no, like if you go over the Fed minutes, I've literally, I've just searched the last three months of it. If you go and search in the text for the words pause, they don't mention it once, except for today. But they were they talk about it in reference again direct quote quote over the period some other central bankers communicating 
Uh, some other central bankers communicated that they were at or near a point it would be appropriate to pause and assess the efforts of cumulative tightening. Yeah, that's my computer. Every time I, when it goes bling, not pause, slowing. Yes, that could be another one. So there's four mentions of slowing, but pause is a very, it's a very direct word. And they only said it once. But in this report, they said slowing four times. A few participants remarked that business counter contacts appeared keen to retain workers, even in the face of slowing demand. They said the number of hour, average hour numbers working fell and growth in wages and employment costs are slowing. Many of participants observed that a further slowing in the pace of rate increases would better allow them to assess the economy's progress towards uh, the committee's goals towards maximum employment. Okay, this one's actually interesting. So here, this is page 10 at the bottom of the page. In their consideration of appropriate monetary policy at the meeting, participants concurred that the committee had made significant progress over the past year in moving towards a sufficiently restrictive stance of monetary policy. We already knew that. Even so, participants agreed that there were recent signs that the cumulative tightening effect and the tightening stance of monetary policy had begun to moderate inflationary pressures. Inflation remained well above the committee's longer-run goal of 2%, and labor market remained very tight, contributing to continuing upward pressure on wages wages and prices against this backdrop and in consideration of the lags in which monetary policy affects economic activity almost all participants agreed that it would be appropriate to raise the target range for federal funds at 25 basis point at this meeting many of those participants observed that a further slowing in the pace of rates would better allow them to assess the economy's progress towards the committee's goal of maximum employment and price stability as they determine the extent of future policy tightening that will be required to attain a stance that is sufficiently restrictive to achieve goals a few participants Participants stated that they favored going to 50 at this meeting, so they could have supported raising the target by that amount. Participants favoring 50 basis point increased uh, noted that a larger increase would be more quickly bring the target range close to levels they believed. All participants agreed it was appropriate to continue the process of reducing the reserve security holdings and described it as previously announced in the plans of reducing. So in discussing the outlook, so that one we already read on that one, but that's, I don't know. Uh, in discussing the policy outlook with inflation still well above the committee's 2% goal and labor market remaining very tight, all participants continue to anticipate ongoing increases in the target range. So they all expect higher. So again, most wanted 25, some said 50. And that's the only big thing that's new here is that, again, Loretta Mester and Buller told us that. But that would have been a shock if we didn't know. But that may start to weigh on here. But in discussing policy outlook as well as above being above the committee's 2% goal and the labor market remaining very tight. All participants continue to anticipate ongoing increases to the target range. Participants affirm their strong commitment to returning inflation to the committee's 2% objective in determining the extent of future increases in the target range. Participants judge it would be appropriate to take into account with uh, monetary policy effects and economic activity and inflation and economic and financial development. Participants observed that a restrictive policy stance would need to be maintained until the incoming data provided confidence that inflation was on a sustained downward path to 2%, which was likely to take some time. Participants discussed the heightened... Un this is kind of like the rate mechanism, but it's not... It doesn't give you that much on it. But I hope you're listening to this. This is the closest we're getting to that... That rate hike again. I think it's neutral with bearish tilt. If we didn't get, if we didn't get Bullard and Mester, this would have been very, very hawkish. But again, now in writing, it's it's not a, there. There could have been more Fed people who stood by fifty. They all think we need to raise the rates, so that's why the bond shifted and they're staying there. But now we're we're trying to get clues on the twenty-five or fifty. But that's what I'm reading now, and it's not really giving us. Uh, too much it's just or at the very least based on the data this is saying they're going to raise but it doesn't necessarily put 50 in the bag versus 25 but it's kind of clear they're not going to stop raising rates so i think we should believe that 
Uh, participants discussed the heightened uncertainty regarding the economic outlook and a number of factors that could affect inflation and real economic activity. Participants generally noted the committee's future decision regarding policy will continue to be in favor of incoming data and implications for outlook on activity and inflation. A number of participants observed that financial conditions had raised in recent months, with some noting that could necessitate a tighter stance of monetary policy. I think that one's bearish right there, but they kind of already reacted to that. AKA, not everybody on the Fed likes the financial conditions loosening. Participants also discussed the number of risk management considerations related to conducting monetary policy. Almost all participants observed that slowing the rate in the current juncture would allow for appropriate risk management, and the committee assessed the extent of further tightening needed to meet the committee's goal. Several of those participants observed the risk to economic outlook was becoming more balanced, with inflation still well above the committee's longer-run target. A number of participants observed that the policy stance proved to be insufficiently restrictive, could halt recent progress in moderating inflation per pressures, leading inflation to remain above the target for longer. Participants also noted that a runoff on the balance sheet had been proceeding smoothly. Few participants observed that the money markets uh, experienced some temporary reserves. Mm, modest growth in spending. Yeah, I think uh, hawkish neutral hawkish honestly if we didn't get bullard it would have been there it seems like i mean here's the thing i guess if you really want to be a hawk about this they didn't rule out 50 so that's i think the at the end of the day you know the data that we just got doesn't help they kept themselves neutral but yeah it's it's definitely data dependent but here's the thing they didn't rule out 50 so in a weird way 50 is still on the table and now if your next two data sets come back up here, I mean, I think the market's at the mercy of the Fed futures again. That would be like if you really want to dive deep and get bearish, they didn't rule out 50. But now it seems like they are just pausing because they want to be paused. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying 50 is on the table because the data has been bad. And they were saying all of this when the data was good. But other than that, though, the, the most hawkish thing that you got from this, you already knew about it, is that simply there's people on the Fed who are calling for 50 still, but they went with 25 for the voters. So again, if, if you got this news today without hearing from Bullard or the other girl, Mester, you would have been clapped. But I would say this is hawkish neutral and now the next PCE and the next data sets, that's probably going to be your fuel. So again, uh, here's the summary and recap. Fed inclined toward more rate increases to curb inflation. A few officials favored stronger half a point hikes. Policymakers warned of disruptions from the debt limit showdown. And reaction in treasuries is muted as the dollar extended its rally. So there's a couple of quotes here. But yeah, I think if the Bears really want to read into it, they're going to point how 50 is clearly on the table. The most bearish part that you've got from this was simply uh, 50, people are considering 50, but you should have already known that. And I think that's kind of softened the blow here today. Uh, but it's it's kind of cool to know. Uh, at the very least, though, it's not like Bullard and Loretto were the only ones. It didn't come out of nowhere because that means a month ago, three weeks ago, they actually had a discussion on 50. So maybe that's what Powell was alluding towards where he was like, well, listen, I could sound dovish as hell. But in the minutes, you know, again, it said some. They didn't say a few. They said some. And they said most backed some most back 25, some back 25 or back 50. And that's it. A few is like one to three. And then that means the all the voters were down with 25. And then they said they did it from a risk management point of view, too. And then again, the data has softened a lot. So I think it's neutral. I think neutral with a slightly hawkish tilt. And then now you got a, a little bit more event risk uh, leading into PCE and maybe GDP tomorrow. But I say PCE on Friday now. That's going to be the money. So I, I wonder if given the January data we've gotten, this conversation will take a different tone at the March meeting. Moreover, with core PCE having slowed in recent months, along with cumulative upward revisions to core inflation over the past year and the expected softening, the staff now viewed the risks around the baseline forecast as this year is balanced. So that was three weeks ago before anything came in hot. Again, the Fed staff doesn't see inflation moving back to 2% until 2025, 
quote, with steep declines in consumer energy and a substantial moderation in food and expected this year. Total inflation was projected to step down markedly this year and then to track core inflation over the following two years. In 2025, both total core and PCE price inflation were expected to be near 2%. A couple of uh, participants observed that some consumers were shifting their spending. The group of policymakers may include James Bullard, who said on Wednesday he was encouraged by the prospects of disinflation. Here's another statement of concern on the debt limit. A number of participants stressed that a drawn-out period of negotiations to raise the Fed debt limit could pose significant risk to financial system and the broader economy. Mm -mm. So a lot of debt limit talk, but yeah, that's about it. That's, let's see, are they saying anything on it? Mm-hmm. All right, let them talk about it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go pee real quick. I'll be right back. You're pretty much right where we started, and it's been about 20 minutes. Uh, again, nothing too crazy, surprisingly, and now uh, we got to wait for more data here on Friday. But I'll be right back. Follow me on Instagram at the Trading Fraternity and like that and video. And a lot of the language that was Glad that was highlighted it. by the team here highlighted that uh, that those softer data points started to raise concern from the Fed about whether growth was actually slowing down and decelerating. Now, of course. What that means on a forward-looking basis is after that meeting, we've gotten a slew of very, very strong data, probably stronger than the reality. Um, but the, but the, the overall economy is doing pretty well, and inflation, if anything, is, has been restated to be above what the Fed, you know, above what the Fed knew in February, or in, in, at the beginning of February. And so you put those two things together, a data-driven Fed is looking at this set of, of outcomes and saying, you know, tilting towards the hawkish side relative to where they were on February 1st. Oh, Bob, a, a one question for you about um, sort of what your business and previous business was. In these minutes, Fed officials talked a little bit more about financial stability than they usually do. And they mentioned commercial real estate as an area of concern and obviously uh, the debt ceiling as an area of concern. And they worried so, uh, somewhat about the functioning of the Treasury market and uh, the fact that the RRP numbers are, are very, very high. Uh, do you see from a financial participant's point of view the same kind of concerns? In, in general, it makes sense that the Fed, the, the key thing that would hold the Fed back from continuing to pursue tighter monetary policy is a real problem in the financial markets. So far, if you look around, there are some elements of stress that you're starting to see, particularly in the in the riskiest type of lending, say your subprime auto loan, something like that, you're starting to, to see default rates start to rise. But those are mostly a function of the macroeconomic dynamic, less so any con All right, a few policymakers favored half a point. That's the main story. Man, you guys should thank Bullard for hitting you with it. Because if he didn't, that would have been way more shocking uh, than getting it a week early. So they kind of did good, man. We hate it when they tell us it, and we're like, why did you wait so long to tell us that? But they told you a week before the minutes. Otherwise, that would have definitely, you. this would have been like a 1% day. Two out of 12? Uh, no, I think it's more. So they would have said a few. The, the Again, the language they use is very, very, uh, uh, actually, wait there. I think they did say a few. So it is two. It's two or three. And then they said some were worried about it, and then most did it from a risk perspective. I think there was one more who backed 50, so 3 out of 12. Muhammad says it's hawkish. Muhammad El Aryan. Let's see. Mm. But it's. I think it's just still... I think it's neutral with a slightly hawkish tilt because now... You got to realize everything they were saying, it was still like, you know, playing in the middle. But just remember, you've had a lot of inflationary data in the last three weeks. So it's not anything too new. But if you if you plug it into new data, I mean, it, it's definitely uh, it's it's a little bit different of a tone, not the tone of the Fed speakers. And because, again, this is three weeks old, but you got to really think about it is that if a few of them were backing that then. How do people feel now with a 512,000 jobs report, hot PPI, hot CPI, and then everything else? So there's a couple of things. Like I hate to tell you this because I know people don't like it, but it's very simple. Now you got to wait till the March data, that March non-farms, that March uh, 
the March, uh, what's it called, CPI, and then now PCE tomorrow or on Friday. It's like now the data set is going to be there, but they even said it. They responded based on the Fed, you know, the Fed futures, but it's really coming down to, uh, I think the, uh, the the bonds can move us a little bit more. Pretty much, I, I, I think it's just flat out. If you really want to read this, kind of both neutral but more so leaning hawkish this idea of of both a bigger rate hike of 50 is not ruled out that's it it's just they didn't squash that so that's where you could kind of view it as as bearish but then also somebody in the chat put it here and i think it's a very great point maybe they don't do 50 but they just keep doing 25 for a long time but now again this goes into march because guess what happens in march chatadonia you get the summary of economic projections. So then that way, summary of economic projections in March, by the next set of data, they are going to outline where they believe the Fed funds rate should be. We're going to have GDP and they're going to give out their estimates now. So that's something you got to think about. But the door for 50 is still open. They didn't kill it. And I think they did it from a risk management perspective. But it seems like we're we're kind of now on the rails for it. But it's the reaction is 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 muted to a degree because again, you got a warning. Uh, you you really got a warning from uh, Bullard and all of those guys. Ah, uh, my Fed futures not moving too much. Let's take a look at the Zaza. I barely move. Everything's still the same. Rate hike odds, but. Watch for the close, and then overnight, we'll see how those move. So there's an observation on financial conditions that Powell pointedly did not make. Several participants observed that some measures of financial conditions has eased over the past few months. When Powell said financial conditions didn't really change in December, he also said that the Fed focus wasn't on short-term moves and that financial conditions have tightened very significantly. Again, there seems to be some difference of opinion between Powell and others. Dollar uptrending. We're back to where we started. It just sucks because where we started this morning was still low. Oh, FedEx getting dumped on. Good call on that check FedEx FedEx extends drop pilot leaders okay strike authorization so FedEx FedEx pilots approve strike FedEx pilots are going on strike stock is down 2% on that UPS, a little sympathy. So Ira Jersey's sentiment model displays a significant move in the dovish direction. Ooh. So here it is. Damn. This was the most dovish Fed meeting. Ah. If you look at the text. So again, February 2nd, moderately dovish. I think we're at 30.31. And then anything that could have been hawkish, the hawkish words used, they definitely, I mean, you were last ha this hawkish in February, but slightly lower. Anything they said that wasn't there, again, just on was very, very dovish. And then Fed sentiment, I mean, last time was August 17th, uh, and I believe we did have a rally there. So just if you took the words and, and you know, gave a, a equivalent value like one word means hawkish one word means dovish this was a uh, 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 overall one of your more dovish uh texts so that's what's crazy though because it's not only was it dovish oh yeah fedex is below 200 now getting clapped that's another 0.8 of a percent and then dexcom's holding up It's clear there were three Fed members supporting, yes. So, but that's not a lot out of 12, but now that was off of three months of strong data, and that's the thing. This is still old. So that's why it's like it, you could you could try to assume 
and extrapolate the hawkishness from this. But at the end of the day, uh, it, I, I, the thing I'm looking at is what they all said. They, it's very simple. They all supported 25 out of risk management. They said that last time too, but it just seems like, you know, there's still people who are advocating for it on 50, but for the most part, every, everybody, every, all members think it's a good idea to slow down and assess what's happening. And now what's happened in three weeks, their assessment bought them time because inflation pressures came back up. So now you, but you have to really, uh, you have to extrapolate that. They explicitly talked about a disparate labor market. Mm -mm. The bond market reaction is still muted. S&P has paired gains uh, now down uh, or up less than 0.1%. Uh, NASDAQ has given up half the gains and then Dow went, resident, uh, went negative. Mm. Oh, BBWI, what, what is this, Build-A-Bear? Bath and Body Works? Yo, BBWI, Bed Bath and third point to launch proxy fight for Bed Bath and Beyond. Third points taking a stake in them. Again, you've seen them kind of go crazy. Actually, they're holding up pretty good. Third points taking a stake in Bed Bath and Beyond. They're they're to launch a proxy fight. Mm -mm. That one could be good, but the and then watch that news might hit after hours and move more on that. I'm not Bed Bath and Beyond or it's Bath and Body Works. I don't know what the fuck it do. It's the same company in my mind. I don't know why they made it so confusing. Sounds like stupid branding, and one of them's awful. And the other one has really good smelling body lotion. I'm telling you. Yeah, that's hitting third point to launch proxy fight at Bed Bath and, or Bath and Body Works. Wall Street Journal's dropping it now too. Yeah, they got some great smelling. I'm going to go to Bath, Bath, Bath and I don't even know what it is. I glitch out. Amazon down on FedEx. I didn't think about that, but that could be. But FedEx got like, it kind of looks like they're reacting the same, but also kind of following in line with the market. Again, that's hitting again is breaking. FedEx extends drop. Pilot leaders, okay, strike to vote. And then third point, Fed, a few officials favored or could have backed 50 basis points. So that's hitting now is breaking news. So it seems like the headlines are coming in negative now on the minutes. Again, we're about 32 minutes in. Like I told you, this is 30 minutes. Maybe give it another 30 more minutes, but the volume is still a little higher, but I'd watch for things to fizzle out. I don't, and then... We'll kind of just carry on in whatever direction we've been at. So right now you are on a negative reaction. That's what, 20 minutes in? So yeah, this is following a negative reaction in the first 30 minutes. We're more towards the downside right now. So comparing this one... Uh, you're right around here now. This is like going to be like five, ten minutes delayed. So this is where you are right right now. And then give it a... It's either it bounces from here or five minutes it bounces. If it doesn't bounce from here, so there you go. You're getting a bounce. This is either where we're going to bounce from or it's going to die and then just continue down. And then this will be a surprising one uh, in terms of performance. Well, you just, you just Clifford into the low. You're approaching 30 minutes now. So it might be able to go up. Dump. I mean, here's if it doesn't dump, I think we're going to bounce right back up to, to around these levels. That's just how the other minutes, any of the minutes that decline, that's how they played out. Otherwise, if it keeps dumping from here and we start going 30, 40 minutes of dropping, then that will that will be a decisively bearish uh, outcome, which would I think be a little bit surprising. But 
it seems like people are getting hung up on that 50 basis point thing, kind of realizing that Bullard and Mester, there may have been one more. The Fed's not ruling out 50. And now, again, the data is considerably stronger. So even though they sounded dovish, now what's going to happen once the data, again, if we get two more sets of very hot data, it's going to be a little ugly. Ah, there you go. Now they're calling out what I told you first. Uh, David Wilcox noted on Bloomberg TV that there's only a single mention of the word pause, and that one is in reference to other central banks. So I wasn't the only one who picked up on that. Again, that mention of pause is new. I, uh, they've never even said the word new. Mm -hmm. So when re February 1st, reporter asked about pause, Powell suggested looking at the minutes, but not seeing a sign of any such discussion. No pause suggested in the language. Yeah, because that's very weird. I mean, pause was a very, very weird one. That And then Powell said to do it. Sadly, though, it just doesn't seem like he there was... Powell's a little dickhead. <laughs> that's all. All that, all that. I think what Powell was alluding to was 50 basis points. I think Powell was like, well, you'll see some people were, were going for 50. But then he, the only thing about pause was uh, related to other central banks. The data be turned back on? What do you mean? For CFTC? I have no idea. They said until they like get changes or something like that. Ask a simple question. Has there been any good news anywhere you look at lately? It could go up, but it isn't going up much. Let this mother effer die. I, I agree with you till like the ending point. I just, I think, I don't think we need to die, but I also, I agree with you where I was saying this for the last like week and a half, two weeks now. It's just like every single chip in the armor was just kind of deflating the rally little by little, but uh, I don't necessarily, this one is, this one's a little worrisome. That's why I'm saying neutral hawkish but it's not uh, now let's get if that pce comes in hot and then anything else by coming into march i mean there's a potential to give you death data but as of now we're, we're in a nice balance so bloomberg's putting on all all of the algos are getting hit they said fed saw inflation risks as key factor shaping outlook almost all fed officials backed a 25 basis point hike why is Bloomberg dropping all these Fed comments late? So there's an algo dump right now coming through with all the Fed comments. Why is the Dow getting clapped? That one is interesting. Could be some of the earnings there, but I think staples are up. It's honestly just the mixed bag. I mean, it is getting clapped more than the SPY, but... I think it's just a weird uh, victim today, mixed with everything else. If we get death data on PCE into March, I think you would have to get bad PCE, bad CPI, and bad jobs report. If you get all three of those, we'll be back at, I mean, we're at 390 now, 398. I think you'll be, you'll be back at 380, give or take. But that's still like it's weird because we're so close to that already, but so far away. So maybe even lower, though. But you need you need back to back to back bad. And I'm talking really bad. Like you need all three of them to uh, to be awful. So we're coming down here a little bit more again. Uh, it's been about 40 minutes now, just under. So if this keeps dropping, this is starting to get a little atypical. Mm, 25, 30, 40. So no bounce by 40 minutes. This is, uh, we'll see. Atypical means not typical. This is where it should bounce, though. We'll find out. NASDAQ K only gave up, uh, I guess three quarters of the upside, but it's still, I mean, it was down a lot more. Uh, yes, we will have NVIDIA earnings after the bell. So a read through of the text of the minutes offers a few more salient insights. 
Uh, first, most of the discussion, or at least the text, was about current conditions rather than policy path moving forward. There was a general agreement that inflation pressures were moderating, but the current run rate is still too high. Moreover, risks remain skewed to the upside on balance. As for growth, as of the meeting, that the perception was that risks were skewed to the downside. In the interim, the data was perhaps shifting that perception given the apparent rebound. All right. See, either bounce or death and destruction. It'll be one or the other. And then that Dan Loeb news is coming out again. Earning. We're wrapping up earnings. You only got a couple more. So keep that. This is going to pretty much be your last big week of earnings. Everything after this just starts getting smaller and smaller. Yeah, Staples and the Dow are dumping. Now healthcare, your safety names are dropping. And then tech is actually barely about to be green. And then materials and consumer discretionaries are the only things that are up. NQ's holding, but SPY and Dow are red. Again, you're at 3991. This is still very low on the SPY. And then the minutes have allowed the yen to kind of catch up here. Uh, Walmart's dropping even more. That's another value play. And I think FedEx, too. That could be affecting some of those names. But Boeing's still green. You know Boeing, man. And then even Apple. Or is Apple still even holding up the gains from the healthcare stuff? Yeah. So they still got a little bit of that stuff holding them up. I think DXCM is just chilling. And then NVIDIA is holding up decent for earnings. You hate Boeing. Boeing hates you, bro. Trust me. Boeing, Boeing that's it's a very wedge issue. Dutch Bros, I'll have all the earnings after hours. I think NVIDIA is going to be the main one. And then now we got to see how this plays out. And I see on the low, it is slowing down. And 3992, we've bounced, I guess, technically, little mini bounces around this price point earlier in the day. That was big volume into the sell. There's nothing else in that. Look at this, this little order. This shit's been here all day. All day, futures are holding four. This is 4,000 on the futures, so they should either bounce from here or die from here. But... The last minutes are saying we bounce. Otherwise, you know, if people are really feeling bearish about this, they're going to sell this shit off. And then we'll kind of have our own little category. Yeah, Unity's after hours. There's a couple. There's a couple of, there's actually a lot of earnings here. All right, you're breaking it. That means 4,000 on the futures are coming down. 3989. You're about six points away from the low. And there's just this little order here. Just been that's been there for hours here now, actually. I was at like 7 30 in the morning from the first low. And volume is picking up into this low, surprisingly. Uh even right now, you're about 48 million on the day with about an hour 15, actually. Volume's still kind of low overall. You have a lot of volume coming in here, but this volume is still actually low. And then NASDAQ's about to go red on this. Again, SPY and Dow, they're giving up here. 3987. Still a little bit more cushion. And the yen, they were just matched up. Uh oh, hot dog. Yeah, the bonds didn't do shit. I mean, it you it looks like the bonds did a lot, but in a, in the grand scope of things, you've seen bonds just go insane. And that's just not happening here. So in a weird way, this idea of higher rates and, you know, getting worried about that, nobody was really shocked in bond land. I'm glad we caught up. That's what I'm saying. If the bonds didn't already lead into this, and then if, if Bullard and Mester didn't already kind of guide into it, this would have been a way different day. But as of now, I'm still kind of shocked, depending, you know, if we end up turning this to like a 1% sell-off, I'd be shocked because I'm still kind of leaning more neutral on this. I don't think the only problem is what you extrapolate they didn't squash 50, and then now you have all of this strong data. But then, we've again, we've confirmed this whole 50 basis point narrative. Uh, this wasn't just the new phenomena, since it seems like they were talking about it last month. But the text was very dovish. The text was very, very dovish. If you've read that, 
and compared the words they used, compa co you know, compared to uh, any of the other meetings. It's it's like actually this is one of the dovish writings that they have ever ever put out here. So there you go. You may get your bits. What forty five minutes? Maybe we're five minutes behind schedule. You're still where the futures. Futures are below 4,000. Look at that line is just sitting there. So maybe we test it by the end of the day. Or if it wants to bounce up here big and then test it. Otherwise, I think you're close. You might as well go and hit it. BRT on the low. Follow the momentum, though. Which momentum? To the downside? It is low volume. I mean, it's not. And I think people are, are kind of, like I'm saying, you, you could tilt this shit hawkish if you really wanted to, but you got to reach for it. Um, but that's why I'm saying I, I go with a solid neutral hawkish tilt where it's, just, it's more neutral than it is hawkish. But if you really want to drive home the point that the Fed – is not taking 50 off of the table. You want to drive home the point that they are really discussing 50 and that they didn't completely remove it out of their discussion. It's like you could focus on that. And then granted, like I'm saying, if you didn't have Mester and Bullard commenting on that 50 basis point, this would have been an absolute shock uh, comparatively to how, how bullish or how dovish uh, what's his name was. And then, yeah, that's the, the, the biggest part about it is no matter what you read today, just remember we're coming off of about two weeks now, three weeks of hot inflation data, maybe two weeks. It was like one week after Powell, inflation data was chilling, but then everything afterwards just got really, really, uh, you know, uh, taken out more or less. Mm, nothing is ever truly worked out. Uh, ruled out well that's what people were hoping for remember at the last meeting remember we were looking for a word and i told you uh ongoing increases if they take out that word that's them ruling out uh that's saying pause pretty much right so it's like people are looking for that language and that language there it didn't seem like they you know they could have extrapolated upon that in the writing but they didn't uh, and again, they, they kept on going last time. And then in the minutes, it just seemed like, I mean, it didn't seem like 50 was uh, totally ruled out or they didn't try to word it differently. Yeah, we did go up on hot inflation data a couple days ago or a couple weeks ago. Market doesn't know where to go. There's your first bounce. So get ready though. We're 15 minutes on power hour. Uh, I'm I was ex I'm expecting a bounce here at one point. So this could be it. And if it does, this is just going to neutralize the day. So the idea is if we bounce, I don't know if we're going to bounce towards highs, but we kind of overshot a little bit. But now you're going to where did we like first really drop? You'll like come back up to VWAP. So if the bounce holds, I think VWAP a little higher could be a solid close still. It might still be below 400. Uh, but we still have, I mean, we got a decent amount of time here. We'll see when the volume comes in. But now this is playing out like a negative reaction. Again, down for 30 minutes. Uh, this case, we were down for about 48 minutes. So about 20 minutes extra of downside. And now you're bouncing up. So let's see how that turns out. I'm going to sell the video before close. Yeah, that's the game plan. Hopefully we could uh push the uh you know the the end of the day day before earnings hype. I hope it just gets bid up. That would be the best idea. Uh updates on long term. Uh first link, you could get free text, uh but we haven't changed anything in that. And the long term is still positive, uh, especially the small one. He's loving life.
So again, here's the five key takeaways. Fed officials indicated that perhaps more than two non-moting per participants thought half a point was appropriate. The language says a few and not a couple. And there could be at least uh, one more person outside of Loretta Mester and Jim Bullard who could have supported 50 basis points. Fed officials saw the risk to inflation remained a key factor driving policy, and a number of them noted that it is that an insufficiently restrictive policy could stall recent disinflation. Given the stronger than expected inflation data we've got since the meeting, it's likely to be an even greater fear at the March meeting now. Uh, participants noted several labor dynamics. While wages had subdued a bit, the overall job market was still tight, and there was some evidence of labor hoarding by employers afraid to lose talent. They noted the labor market pain would likely fall disproportionately hard on minority workers. Policymakers discussed the potential of the partisan showdown over raising the federal debt limit to disrupt financial markets and the broader economy. A drawn-out negotiation could pose significant risks. Uh, to the financial system and the broader economy. Several participants also pointed to potential challenges in addressing core treasury market functioning. And then the S&P paired gains following the release of the minutes with the index now down nearly 0.2. Well, switch gears. What the fuck was that? Uh, I don't see any news, but you just got hit with the Clifford out of nowhere. Mm. But yeah, that's your key takeaway. Netflix cuts subscription cost across the Middle East. Egypt? They don't like... No, my mom doesn't like Netflix. My mom hates Netflix. My mom say, who watches Netflix? You think it's going to be around? Even my mom's a Netflix bear. She doesn't even have Netflix. She still uses a TiVo. This is, I, wow, you got some bid support, though. This turned into a sell out of nowhere at 4000 on the future. I want to see this one here. At thirty nine ninety, man, you got people waiting on that. That was a big candle, man. That was 3911 to 39, uh, 39841. That was almost one point in a minute. You're coming back down there. Nah, Bookmap just put in a fat order, and then that's it. You just hit above here, and then somebody just dumped a shit ton of contracts, and there's now a big order kind of blocking you in here between the other one. But let's see. That's still kind of chilling out. What's happening? I think everyone's still digest. You have a lot to digest here, bro. You're digesting the past bear sentiment, the past bull sentiment, the new data off of old words, and now you're forecasting what the fuck you think the Fed is going to do. And then the bonds are like, yeah, we already got ready for this. We don't care. And then the currencies are kind of moving all over the place. So, And then you're on the cusp of one more set of inflation data on Friday. So I think we're kind of just, it's a mix of what we've already been doing, where the air is getting lifted out of the market. But I don't think anything is uh, too crazy yet. We're going to find out. What is there to digest? They just gave away the next basis points. I disagree. I don't think they did. Uh, I think, again, they didn't rule out 50 uh, and they said 25 seems to be the base case, but also they did it out of risk management and they even commented on how they responded to the Fed futures. I think this is just wherever the data swings us into to March. So and then I think you're getting to the point where everyone's kind of uh, cooling off on both sides. Like I'm saying, uh, yeah, it was three weeks ago. I could agree with that. And that was hot. But until the Fed futures move, I wouldn't really uh, I don't think it's that it's, it's not a done deal just yet. I mean, people may not like it. I know it gets confusing at times. Uh, Fed futures have gone up here now. There you go. So there, now that that's what you need right here. If you know what I'm saying, this is what you're talking about. Like this shit goes up. I'm with you. Uh, they gave it away, but until this could shoot up tomorrow by the time we wake up. Yeah, that that's starting to increase a little bit. But like I told you, I respect the bears and bulls now in this in this realm where I think the downside and upside are both going to be limited, but. This is gearing us up to respond to data or any of the Fed speakers now. Let's find out because if we find out one of that, that other 50 basis point guy, if he ends up being a voter, which I doubt it because he probably would have dissented, uh, but that could definitely give us some insight. And then we'll see if the data here shifts it, but they're keeping it balanced. They're keeping it data dependent. We're slowly squeezing the air out, but not too fast. And that's where I think we're at now. But we're still within today's range. Nothing is down more than a quarter of a percent right now, except the Dow Jones, and that is barely. 
Tomorrow morning, you have GDP. So if that comes in hot, then there you go. But other than that, PCE is inflationary, and that's going to be it. I don't think nothing got determined, but I think today it just it, it warrants some of the fears now. It just kind of put people on, on notice that, you know, the, the initial situation we're dealing with isn't as over as, as people thought. And that's that's fair. I think it's I think it's fair to say uh, you just you know, that whole the the excessive rally was unwarranted. But now you're still at the mercy of data and your Fed. You don't know if the Fed is there to help you or not because they don't want to reveal their card. And it seems like they've just been doing this out of a uh, risk management. You're coming down now. This is breaking that trend. I thought we would have bounced right here. If this comes back, this is going to be very unique. Because any of the other ones, if they've ever bounced like this, they don't usually come back down. Yeah, well, okay, you're selling now. I don't have any news there. Nothing. Uh, Elon meets with California Governor Newsom. That's about it. But nah, now this is a... No other meeting has looked like this after an hour. That's it. So what you were... You were on pace. So in the last six now, this is going to be your worst minutes here in like six months or since like middle of last year. But take a look. Last time, it, it, it like you were popping right here, but now you're shooting back down. So you're going to hit a new low. So there you go. You're dumping there. But that's now this is different than the last six months. Let me check the SPX. Yeah, most of the minutes haven't really done this. You, you That was your chance to bounce, and we've given it up right now. And then look at that's that little line there that we we're looking at all day. It's getting eaten up 3990. You hit a new low 3982. The next level is 3984. Uh the Zaza's not moving, but the bids are kind of moving. So Zaza's barely down right now. It's at 20 which is again, it's been dropping all week. So right now Fed odds are of 27% uh of 50 basis points and and that has we've seen an immediate market reaction to that. So that could be it. So you need a bounce. This time is a little. This time is different, uh, but I don't. I don't think it means it in this in the way you're looking at it. Apollo weighs seven hundred fifty million first Boston leveraged finance bet. A APO. The bonds are chilling. The bonds are. I, I, that's the crazy part. If you actually look, this is like what a half a percent move, and the bonds are have moved a tenth of a percent. So the bonds are already ready for this. Nothing is bonds are pricing in higher than the Fed now. So there's not even the bonds have no they shouldn't have. If the bonds went down, I would have been pissed because <laughs> I would have been like, you fucking scammers. Uh, I think is that related to Credit Suisse, the first Boston leverage? Mm -hmm. Apollo, they're 750 million leverage finance bet. And I think Credit Suisse is there. So watch out. You're hanging out at the lows right now. Now everything's red. NASDAQ's red. SPY and Dow are about a third of a percent. And we have two minutes till power hour, my guy. So you need to fucking bounce here. Otherwise, this just gets hideous. Kind of exciting. Kind of exciting, huh? Yeah, you hit the low. That's very weird. So this is, again, going even back to April. So from April 2022 to today, this is your right now. If we stay down here, uh, it, by the end of the day, this will be one of the worst uh, minutes, believe it or not. And now it's already moving out, I guess, besides uh, January, though. I guess last January we were down half and then it dropped even more, but you bounced two days later. But this is borderline... Uh, I wouldn't call it an outlier, but it's definitely not your. It's definitely uh, just different. But we'll see if it drops even more. This will be again. We were talking about the market was pricing in half a percent, half a percent coming into this. And you've definitely moved uh, uh, almost 50 percent higher than that now.
if it holds 0.75. If it rate hikes back to 21, that's going to update. Watch the both slash ZQH23 as well. If you look at the rate hike odds, they start ticking up. Yeah, that's that's the whole problem. That's why the bond curve's not moving. That's the whole idea of the bond market went from pricing and rate cuts to now pricing and more. Those minutes smush the market very oddly, though. I mean, like I'm saying, I think it was neutral hawkish, but it doesn't show that big because we were green. But this is like it's almost like a 0.7 reaction. Very wild. It just didn't seem like you were going to get that there. But then it is still we still got one more hour. So you'd be surprised. Ten minutes could change the whole look of this. Yep. Power hour is opening up. The low of the day is uh, 39.81. Now they're putting orders back on the bid after you you spent all day to test this line and you broke it. So let's see. And now the orders are starting to come back. Yeah, they remember there was more people on the calls. They got smashed. There was a lot of 396 and 397, like puts will get in the money here, but I mean, they don't have much time. I'm sure if you bought your break, even in the morning, you're going to get clobbered, but it's definitely, there was more calls to lose on the daily today. Power hour is just the final hour of the day. There's a lot of, act most trading activity occurs in the first hour and the last hour. Yeah, the puts are smashed. So as I'm saying, if you bought your break, even in the morning, now at the 398s, 399s, these are where a lot of position, people position. So unless you bought here in the low, but if you pretty much bought any time from open till 12 a.m. or 12 p.m., first like three hours, your break even on your puts. On the dailies, though, I'm sure the other ones have better premium. And then everybody bought the 411s and the 410s. What is that? Lot of bids, man. Lot of bids. So thirty nine, eighty one, eighty four. The dollar keeps eating. The yen it closed the gap there, a little bit. But this is, I mean, you're what five points from the next level. If we keep selling off, you are going down here. Three nine to seven. Is this three nine eight one? Yeah. Okay, I did one. I did the small one. I did the small one. I only have one hour. One hour bet. I did one hour. I put twenty dollar. I put twenty dollar. You know, twenty dollar. I did a spy daily. I went for a spy daily call. Don't trade it. Not a recommendation. You'll lose money. Twenty bucks. Oh, it's already down to seventeen cents. I'm. I give up. Why not put? Because I have like fucking 40 grand of money on puts that is going to come back to me. So I think I could put $20 on a, on a daily call. <laughs> so don't worry. I, I'm I'm chill on the put side. You have no idea. You have no idea. I'm chill on the put side. 
Uh, it's all I, I get all my money back and then all the profits that I was able to take on other stuff. So even if I go back to break even, I get all the cash back and then any other thing was net minus like one or two uh, losses that I took on like Meta and the other one, but I've already made those back up with the shares. So that's the crazy part. If I just go back to break even, I make money uh, on any of those plays. And even then, I mean, we're still using the other ones. The bonds make me a little sad, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I went to 399s. Don't trade it, though. Pretty much right. That's what I'm telling you. I'm saying if we bounce, I think we close around here if we get any sort of setup. Otherwise, it just turns into a very ugly day. Netflix partner with NFL. Oh, run it. Netflix docu series. Just chill the fuck out. <laughs> Netflix reports first partnership with NF. The headline's way better than the fucking news. It's a docu series called Quarterback to feature Mahomes. No, no, no. And and then Cousins, Derek Cousins, Devin Cousins. I don't even know his fucking name. Kirk Cousins and Marcus Mariota. I thought that guy's on the profit. Yeah, Netflix, but it's not. The headline reads way, way. Bam. It's a docu series. Yeah, the headline is not. It's good. Good news. Thank you for calling it out. I'm glad we could. Conf I was like, what? You gonna have NFL games on Netflix? That shit's gonna double. Oh, now you could pay five bucks and get all NFL games, or fifteen bucks plus nine, fifteen ninety nine, and you can't share anything. Blah, blah, blah. But no, this is this is a docu series. Derek Cousins, Kirk Cousins. Who the fuck's Kirk Cousins, bro? DeMarcus Cousins, yeah, man, like, say amen. Amen. Uh, Netflix dropping off of that. I think they all have the same realization. Like, why are you spending money for a fucking quarterback documentary? Now they're, Netflix is just trying to get in the door. Yeah, Netflix fell on. I would never pay for that. Or P I'm out of PRVB, so I think they're gonna have good earnings, uh, and you just gotta be watching out for anything else negative. But we are we are done on PRVB. Demarcus Cousins. Oh, was we have Demarcus Cousins in the chat? Oh man, that's my guy. Good guy, bro. I like Demarcus Cousins. Good guy. The F1 show. F1 just has weird fans. Like, you know, my girlfriend loves F1. Like, my girlfriend would, like, get up and, like, turn on F1 races. And my girlfriend watched all of the F1 series. She's watched all of it. I'm like, you're fucking crazy. I'm like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, why do you like? It's not even like it's a sport. I get it. But I love cars, too. But I'm like, wait a minute. You're really, like, into this shit, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Formula One. Hot guys, I guess. I told her she's not allowed to look at the guys, though. So I have a custom patch. I censor it. It puts a burqa on all the dudes in there. I say, you can't look at that. Haram. And she said, okay. Way stronger jaw lines than Josh. Honestly, they're richer than me too, bro. So, like, I don't know how to defend myself. So, it's like, I, you know, maybe not being insecure will help me out. But at the end of the I can't even, like, clap back. You know what I'm saying? They got nicer cars than me. They got better jaw lines. They're all, like, six foot 12. They make more money than me. So, like, I, honestly, I'm at the mercy of, the, of, of any other dynamic there. But I can't even clap back. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, I hope some of y'all take note. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to know when and where you could clap back because I can't I can't you know what I'm saying I gotta I gotta hold my L right there that's it mm -hmm. drivers are short okay we got a shot mm -hmm. they're not tall wow I always they just look tall you know what I'm saying you got jaw lines like that they just look tall you know what I'm saying There's, that's it could have been worse baby could have been 
Amen. And then how much time? 50 minutes? Thirty-nine eighty. My option went up 10% for a little bit, but if you didn't make money in first 90 seconds, then... First time in the... Well, welcome, man. Welcome. Uh, definitely be here on Friday. Tomorrow will be interesting with the... Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, the uh, GDP. But Friday after this minutes, it's going to move some things. Bro, these are the... We I'm getting the la the latest updates now. There's more headlines coming in on the minutes. It's the old headlines we've already ran through, but I've never seen data just per like out this late. They at higher risk of death than your job, to be honest. Honestly, man, that's not how I rationalize it. <laughs> I'm like, listen, man, they could die easier than me. That's on it. It makes them cooler, bro. It makes them cooler. You're not helping my case out here. Okay, I just let my girlfriend watch the show. And then I go watch the real estate agent shows with all the hot girls and the boobies. What? I'm just kidding. I'm not allowed to watch it. She won't let me. I'm like, what? I'm trying to find out about selling Sunset. I, I had a lot of interest. Maybe I want a house in Tampa. I don't know. Shit, it's real good real estate activity that they going over. Man. Teladoc earnings after hours. This was the low from earlier, 3996. You got one more little order thing here. That's 3985. Futures are still below 4,000. NASDAQ went green again. So that's good. Sideways for another year. Well, that's what some people were saying. I mean, we played it in the morning. Some people were saying all of the gains for this year have happened in the first month. First month or two. So now this will barely go up a little higher for the rest of the year. And then play this game. Which is a really wild concept to think about. But it would kind of make sense if you went up and then went down and then went up and then went down. No takeoff scenario. We'll see. I'm dude. This is not even holding. So now it's been what? It's twelve twelve. Shout out to long term. Let's get an update. Yeah, that's it. This is how I look at. Look how different it is. So like I was showing you. You haven't hit the same low. And that was, what, 60 minutes in? So it's not accounting for a slight. I think we've dropped even more. This was on the hour. So you're a little bit. You're, like, right around here. But comparative now, this is that bounce I was talking about. We started to come up a little bit. You could have had that, but you didn't get it here, even at this moment, too, the inflection point. So this is this is about to be one of the worst, uh, one of the worst minutes if you hold near the lows. If it bounces, it's good to go. Banks and Dow. The Dow is a weird victim of today because that means, you know, the safety stocks have been holding, but then this could also be the start of something too. I think it's just too early to tell. Like if we now, if the Dow's down and then you get another shitty day out the Dow tomorrow with tech and everything else selling off, then that's people kind of borderline panicking again because of the yields. And then that's everything catching up to bonds. But otherwise, the last couple of days, the Dow has been, uh, it's been holding up a little bit better. Yeah, the Nasdaq's actually the strong one. Uh, and discretionaries are still green. And then tech is like in the middle at 
Mm, Mercado Libre, they have earnings. Melly. Uh, Mercedes says half of autonomous net sales to be shared with NVIDIA. Um, again, Mercedes sees 1 billion of EBITDA on software sales by 2025, sees healthy margin, and NVIDIA is getting half of that. So that's coming out now. Mercedes and NVIDIA, Mercedes announcing software sales, and apparently NVIDIA gets 50 of that. Philip Morris. I got to check those names, but those they've been coming up here. Again, Philip Morris, Ultra. Again, some of that defensive shift they've been holding up. APLS on the high. OPM, APLS. The minutes was, uh, I think it was neutral hawkish. Emphasis on neutral, but then it kind of turned pretty hawkish here as people are reacting. Again, Liner Tech extends gains on, Mer or Luminar extends gains on that. China and Russia are challenging the world order, Price says. U.S. Washington, uh, or U.S. watching closely for Chinese support of Russia. State Department spokesman Ned Price speaks, speaks in briefing. Damn, Philip Morris. They came down, though, so Philip Morris and Altrail were leading. That's what I'm saying. The Dow Jones names and some of those defensives holding up, they kind of just got clapped out of nowhere. The yen gave all of that back, all the gains from the morning. Yeah, they filled their gap pretty much. And then yen is saying we close at 3997 which I think will be around here. Again, that VWAP is very intriguing. No, where's Navivda? Navivda. Hey, Amazon's running a little bit off the bottom. Where's Coin? Coin might make its comeback. I mean, it was down 6%. It was up 7 earlier. It scares me, though. It kind of reminds me of DoorDash. Microsoft sold. I'm Dizel. Teslaunian. Walmart was selling off pretty hard earlier. Elon Musk says Tesla picks California for global engineering headquarters. Elon, something about Elon Musk and Cali. He, Tesla is actually very strong. I agree with that. Redfin, I don't, all I know is just, actually Redfin looks like it's getting news, but I just don't know. I wish I could tell you. There's news in the morning. They said total value of U.S. homes is $47 trillion. Oh, 3 o'clock, Redfin CEO Kelman buys over 300,000 of shares. So Kelman purchased 35,000 shares at an average price of $8.62 on February 21st. The transaction increased the directly owned shares by 3% to 1.22 million shares. Redfin insiders hold a 3.5% stake, according to data compiled. Historical data may include 10B5 sales. So let's see. I don't know if this was regulatory. No. What the fuck? Yeah, bro, he just bought Glenn Kelman, the guy on the, on the, he's, he's on the Netflix show too. Yeah, he just bought three thirty five thousand shares at eight sixty two. So he just went positive on him. But it wasn't even a ten B five. So it wasn't even like a scheduled purchase. Like he just bought in uh, just bought in to buy in. This wasn't a part of his trading plan or anything. Bonds I have can go red, but 
As long as it doesn't fucking go red when the market turns green, you're fine. The CEO of Redfin yesterday, that's when it came in, yesterday bought th uh, 35,000 shares at 862. And it wasn't a part of a trading plan. That's the only other, that's the only news. I just see that came in. The filing came through. Because it looks like they've been running here and now you see it. So he bought in at 862 right here. GDP will be important, but I don't think, especially after today, especially with the Fed futures moving and all, I think PCE is going to be the money. Uh, that That's going to really move you. Because that's what you guys got. Do you guys realize now this is starting to get very interesting? Do you understand why? What's the number you're looking for here? There's one number that where things get very, very shady. Let's see if you know it. Let's see your Fed futures test. Look at that, Chad. Y'all fucking smart, bro. <laughs> look at you already know. 40. 40 or 60, depending on which way you look at it. So right when it gets to 40%, you need 60% to confirm it. But right when it gets to 40, that's when you're in the danger zone because 40 is not guaranteed now. And then once you start pricing above 40% on the other direction, that means the market is uncertain. 60 is a majority. That's what they use over the last 60 years. So you're 13% away from that on both sides. 13% to go to, to 60, 13% to go up to 40, right? And then what happened, and look at, you've done 13% this week. You've done more than that. So that means in this, you could do this very, very quickly. But now how the market's kind of balancing out, that's getting interesting. So we got 40 minutes left. The guy didn't want to buy his stock in the threes. I don't know when he did. I could check. But that would be kind of funny. <laughs> he was like, nah, I'll take it at $8. Zero chance to raise him by 50. Fed is bluffing, so market respects it. I mean, let's just get to the reality of the situation. Powell doesn't make this decision anymore. That's why I'm saying this is very fascinating. Because guess what? Come March 22nd, if this number says 60%, Powell is going to do it. That's it. So that's your problem, is that if the market scares itself into it, then there you go. So, but I, I wouldn't be so quick to rule anything in or out of it because that's all. If the data pushes the market up here, people will respond. And, and that's what they did last time. Remember, the market bullied it down to 25 and they did. And there's, yeah, you have wait. That's three, three weeks, six days, 21 hours. So that's the, the thing. I think that's the variable you got to be worried about is that it's part one part, the Fed, the other part there, FTI innovation. This thing's at a high right now. FTAI. FTAI. This is the shares rise. No, nothing on it, though. Do that again. What, the 20 uh, I'm just trying to, I don't know, man. I'm just trying to, I don't know. Stop. Filing date, where's Glenn Kleinman? Let's see what this guy did. Twenty seventeen. So Glenn Kleiman was selling shares. Believe it or not. One point eight. Yeah, so the last couple of times, the last all through last year, Glenn Kleiman was just selling shares. 
Actually, CEO's average price is $15. So he likes it at a high price. He's just been selling it. This was actually Glenn Kleiman's like first buy in a minute, it looks like. Yeah, he sold in May 22. Yeah, Glenn's been selling, dog. Arc on the high. Decent pop. VWAP is lowered there. Let's just see. I think now you, you're rear. You 3980 is its own little level there. You've seen that a couple of times. We'll see if we match up with the yen. You still got one more lower level, but, I mean, you have now about 35 minutes. And you haven't had a bounce since the meeting came out. You had this one little one, but now you're starting to string this one here. Let's see how it plays out. Market on close indicating flat. Damn, 47% of you guys have voted for green today. Let's see. And then the unchanged crowd, 10%. You guys might win. Redfin's bouncing because news came out that the CEO made an open market purchase of 35,000 shares. That's Glenn. That's who we're talking about, which is weird because it wasn't a planned purchase. But that's the only reason why it's going. Because I was like, why the fuck is it going up? I'm even surprised they held up from their earnings. I didn't like Redfin's earnings at all. <laughs> they, they were like, yo, we made more money than expected because we sold houses that we had that we overpaid for. And we plan on making more money kind of next quarter. But we're going to lose double the amount than we did last quarter. So I think it's good. So you get what I'm saying? Like, you know, we made a lot this quarter. And we still have a lot more to make next quarter, but we're going to make half as much net profit as last quarter. So it's like, it's simple. So I think it's, it's good in the real estate market. And yeah, thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Idiot honked at you because he didn't go in the light turned green. Was that the second was the light they gave me? Honestly, you know what you should do? Just fucking slam your brakes as hard as possible and let him hit you. And if he doesn't hit you, just throw it in reverse and back into him. And then, you know what I'm saying? And then be like, why'd you hit me? You know what I'm saying? Like, screw it. Like, screw a peaceful life. You know what I'm saying? Just get out there, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you're going to react, bro, just like, nah, just turn it up then. Screw all that. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, awful advice. I'm just trying I'm just trying to listen, man. I don't know. Like, it, wh wh don't lose any sleep over it. Just like, you know, at the end of the day, it's like if you're going to get stressed out on it, that's it. If you get a dad, if he has a dash cam, find it and take it out of his car and step on it. What do you what do you mean? That's it. It's very simple. Very, very sick. Otherwise, you just you move on with your life. Otherwise, you escalate that shit. That's it. I'm sick of people being stuck in the middle. You know what I'm saying? If you really gonna let it bother you, man, you just hit him. That's all. <laughs> that's clearly not good advice, but I'm just trying to say that's supposed to be a motivational speech on why you shouldn't get mad over little things if you're not really willing to make it a big thing. So hopefully you are able to uh, live in peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Snaps. Amen. Thank you. Very motivational. Mm-hmm. I'm from California, but living overseas 10 years. Honks are like, hi, I'm here. Yeah. No, nah, in America, it's really offensive. If you honk your horn, bro, that's like it's borderline waging war. The series I've seen, I've seen too many problems from from a horn. Yeah, I think they'll shoot you in Houston. If you do that, they just don't even hesitate. 
I think they just clap you immediately. Say, how dare you? My friend has been dollar cost $20 daily in the 10 stocks for the past six months. Is it better to build up a cash balance and buy monthly? He's listening right now. I mean, I'll tell you, time in the market beats timing in the market. So I, uh, that's it. I love what he's doing. As long as he stays consistent with that, it's not going to be as bad. But now there, there should be some discretion where like, you know, it just depends on the valuation and the rest of your balance, but especially the valuation of those companies. But in a weird way, if he's actually stayed consistent for six months, I could respect that. Uh, it's a way easier than trying to find, because you might miss out on certain things if you're trying to wait for the best price. But the thing with the dollar cost averaging is not everybody stays as consistent. So I think if he's there, it's, you know, it's good to go. Yeah, sh Jim Chano shorting Sunrun. And then third point, plans to nominate directors at Bed Bath & Beyond. Damn it, Bath & Body Works. Damn it. Mm-hmm. Then you're hitting a new low. My daily option is failing me down 50% now. Glenn by 35,000. Yeah, I spent 300K for 35,000 shares. GE pairs gains after he says he's short on it. Hold on. Was it Sunrun 2? Jim Chano short on GE as well. The minutes were decent. I mean, there's a it leaves open a lot of questions. And it's going to make the market a lot more sensitive to data. But borderline, I would say it was neutral hawkish. He's still short in coin as well. Oh, shit, we got to do something with NVIDIA here too. He's shorting everything. He really does. You're stuck in the DMV line. I hope you're good, man. They're going to be like, did you fill out the form? Well, clearly it said fill out the form. Please go fill out this form and then go wait in that line. No, I understand. No, you need to fill out the form. Did you not fill out the form? Okay, you could get the form over there and then fill it out and then go wait in the other line. You see, there's other people waiting as well, too. You do fill out the form, I could help you. You don't fill out the form, I can't help you. Thank you. Next. That's it. Did you fill out the form? That's all you got. That's honestly the number one question you should be asking yourself. Did you fill out the form? Did you fill out the right form? And then did you stand in the same, in the right line after you have filled out the form? That's it. You got that down. Life is going to be good, bro. Otherwise, they'll fucking they'll destroy you. <laughs> I don't know how they how they be like that. It's honestly crazy. Honestly, though, if you ever want a good time, you should go to the DMV in the Valley. That shit was exciting. You get to see so many characters. Bro, you see, like, rappers, punk rock stars. Like, it's crazy. To go to DMV in the Valley, bro, like Sherman Oaks. There's, like, another one, too, bro. I waited there once. I was there for, like, two and a half hours. You go outside, bro. You need weed. You need cigarettes, whatever. Bro, they got people outside. It's crazy. Honestly, it was like a little mini Coachella in the valley i liked it i had a guy had a great time that's it bro it was actually wild this little ass parking lot all this traffic everywhere it was honestly amazing not seriously bro they got weed outside and everything uh-huh that's it you forgot your pen or something somebody will give you a hit i'm just you say what's up man Mm-hmm. then you guys just all come together under unity of hate in the dmv Do they got push-ups? Nah, I think they were pushing a tire, though. Like, I swear I saw one dude flipping a tire in the parking lot. They were just doing, like, jailhouse workouts in the DMV out there. It was actually kind of crazy. I was too intimidated to get involved. But it was, I mean, I, I think 
there's a lot of possibilities, man. You should check it out. You want to visit California? Yeah, it's dirty and it smells bad. And that's not the clouds, it's just smog. And you'll be like, why does everybody pay this much to live here? It's honestly an acquired taste. So it just depends. It's kind of like the stock market, to be honest. Because, like, you love and hate it at the same time. You're like, this is beautiful. This is amazing. The land of opportunity. Everything's a scam. Everyone's scamming and it's dirty. Why don't they fix the potholes in the market? How come they don't just patch this right now? I don't get it. And then how come all the rich, like, this straight up, bro. You'll One minute you're looking at 10 Rolls Royces in the market. Next minute it's like 22 T100 Toyotas. So you got to be careful. It's just it's really like the stock market, to be honest with you. So I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I earned your like today. Thank you. I worked really hard for it. You know, in between slang and the likes, you know, that's good. That's good. They must have hurt you. Nah, man. You know, I'm still in San Diego, born and raised. I've been here for a while. I got a lot of conservative people who ask me, they're like, why do you still live there? I'm like, because I got in really, really cheap, and I like good weather, dickhead. Okay? It's very simple. The hell, man? You've ever seen the weather out here? It's beautiful. Man, I'm not going to go live in Ohio and hate Joe Biden. What the fuck? <laughs> Shout out to Ohio, though. They play in you. They play in you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. I feel you. Somebody in Ohio just got mad offended. It's okay, though. We'll get through this together. That's why it's called the United States of America. Well, you know, we a team. So okay, can we just be a team? That's all. Let me. I'm I'm on team good weather for now. I got you. Timmy, what kind of? I thought Timmy was tweeting a meme for a second. He's not. Two economists both served in the top post in Obama. Karen Dinan of Harvard and Janice Eberly are under consideration for Fed vice chair. They got rid of that Chicago guy real quick. Oh, bonds are slipping here, though. This one gets interesting. As long as the market doesn't go green, but this is a, this is a nice move here. Not really nice, but we're going to find out. Cali sounds like the hood. Kind of, but there's just too much nice stuff and too much hood stuff. It's just a weird place, man. Honestly, it's worse than Vegas. I was even trying to explain to my mom, like, yeah, Wall Street Journal, yeah, that that's coming out there. The who they're put, doing for the Fed. I was trying to explain it to my mom, bro. Like, you could get anything you want in California. Like the worst of the worst of the worst or the best of the best. So it's like, it's just up to you, man. You could get everything but snow. Like actual snow, not, you know, fucking blow, you crackheads. Um, somebody's like, what? Yeah, you can. No, shut up. It's okay. You're doing too many drugs, sir. That's why the stock market is more exciting to you than you think it is. But you can't get snow like precipitation that freezes. Mm-hmm. Last of my points, I'll be sure to subscribe. You're still holding me with NVIDIA. Why are you baiting me with I'll be sure to subscribe? It's okay, man. The NVIDIA plan is still the same. I'm going to sell out right before close. That's the beauty. I don't care what the stock does because wait till the last like 10 minutes. It's just going to dump $10 or run up $10 and then we close out right before. So it's a good game plan. We just played the plan and then hopefully it stays up. Google seems so cheap. 91, if it hits 90, that'll be a good one. Three, dude, new low. 20 minutes remaining, daily contracts killed. And then that's the second line test, 39.85 on the futures, 39.78. You're four points away, ladies and gentlemen. 
four points away, and the next level is 3960. And welcome to uh, January 24th, man. That's it. The last time we were here and did the 3960 dance. Otherwise, uh, even the beginning of January, first 10 days, and then last Fed minutes, you were at 3871. Wow. So there it is, 3978, another new low. You're not even getting your end of the day run up there. Gap down, then cash open. Probably. It depends, though. GDP in the morning, that could move some things around. That's GDP and then core PCE and then initial jobless claims. And then Kansas City Fed, we've seen some movements on that. But realistically, I, I don't even think tomorrow matters now. Because like I'm saying, you know, I was telling you, be cautious because next day we could be back up at 4080. I still believe in that. But I think now the range is just going to be wide. I think tomorrow is going to be a dud unless it goes lower. Because then if it goes lower, it just adds to the bearishness. But otherwise, it's a dud till 4080. And then PCE is going to be the driver. And then after PCE, we gap up or gap down on start the week. And then we end February. And then we get into March. And then data becomes two weeks away. Earnings wrap up. And then we see if the dollar keeps strengthening. And then everybody tweaks out every other day. And then throw in a rally here or there. Or again, uh, give us the right set of data. Then everybody ignores everything that was negative. And then we begin to rally again. Uh, but it still gets limited. Kind of rally with a crutch. I don't know. I might have gone a little too crazy on that. It's kind of how I'm thinking. So we'll see. But tomorrow, I mean, unless the, the – I think that's the sad part. It's kind of like when uh, Graham was saying, like, what news is good? It's like right now you're pretty much – you've gotten a lot of good news in the last couple of weeks and months, but – it's getting to the point like if anything's going to happen, it's going to be a negative surprise. It's going to be GDP negative or whatever. And then any good data gives you a relief rally. But now you're still going to be, you know, trapped in the cuck zone from November to December here. So that's where it gets interesting. And then Friday, you get your data uh, with inflation. And then we go from there. Recession over, my man. Motherfucker. <laughs> Askia, for you to come in here seven hours later, bro. I love you, man. I love you. That's the same guy in the morning. He's like, I hate to say it, man. I think the recession is over. That's it, bro. We went up for two seconds. You were like, it's over, dog. I'm pretty sure it's <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, I love the stock market. I love it. We'll see, man. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so, yeah, man. I think it's over still. I like it, though. I respect it, man. I'm telling y'all. Seriously. Some of y'all need to be praying, and y'all need to be worshiping the Lord because you will be blessed 10 times harder than I have ever been blessed in my life because y'all are consistent. You know that? It's for real. If y'all gave the same faith to the Lord, your Savior, as you do to the stock market or thinking I'm a duende, y'all would be just like, your life would be so fulfilled. You have no idea. I could, are y'all don't give up. Y'all are, y'all are, you just, y'all, y'all have faith, you know, for like, honestly, I'm gonna pray like, forgive me, Lord, for my faith has been weak compared to some of the things I've seen. I've seen a lot of people in the stock market exhibit way more faith than I've shown in God at times. And it's honestly quite humbling. So y'all just, y'all keep doing that, man. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. I think your Twitch bears came to YouTube. Nah, you would know, bro. You would know. The, the Twitch is just a different type of bearish. It's like real bearish, bro. Like, for real. It's like real, like really, really bearish. Like, it'll be like, uh, mm-hmm. You know that. Where's my cyber truck? I ordered 60. I have no idea, dude. I have no idea. Mm hmm Twitch has reasons. Yeah, it's like dark emo bearish. But it's also like very, you know, it's it's very like it's smart people, honestly, though. It's not like 
It's not even like stupid bearish. It's not like, ha ha, fucking bulls. It's like, no, like it's straight up diving into like 17 years of economic data. It's like, it's very wise. Like it, that's the thing. That's why I respect the, I respect my Twitch bears uh, very, very highly. Cause it's not like, uh, it's just, it's just not even like stupid arguments borderline. I'm like, he got a point. He got a point. I've just, I, you know, again, I've been jaded by modern monetary theory for the last decade of my life. And I've, I've gotten used to, to how people behave in these environments. So, but it's definitely, uh, you know, definitely, uh, there's, there's, they got their reasons. They got their reasons. I could, and I could support it. Mm hmm. I'm moving to smarter Twitch. I'll just tell you this now, though. If you move over to the Twitch, chances are in like three months, bro, it's going to like, that's it. Like one day after watching Twitch, you're going to be like, oh, did you know that like you could get information on Zero Hedge? And then like one month later, be like, the dollar is all fiat money. Why would you own any of this? I buy, I've already full ported into gold. At least 40% of my net worth is in gold. If you stack it up, it's good. And then like six months after Twitch, you're like, why would anybody buy real estate right now? Do you not understand that the wages haven't gone up? This is unsustainable, this. And then you're going to start bringing up the yield curve in a bunch. Like that's it. Six months later, bro, you're not even going to be on the Twitch because you moved off grid. And then you have solar panels now. And you clean your own water and you, li you live in an earth ship now. That's what happens. So I'm just telling you. And then your role models will become Peter Schiff and Nassim Talib, which I like Nassim Talib. He's great. But mainly Peter Schiff. And then you're going to have like 17 random accounts you follow on Twitter. And you're like, nah, this is it. But you only follow them if they support your background on gold. And if they just, that's it. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... It's good. It's good. So just be careful. Yes, yeah, look at the Twitch is like Earth sh Earth ships are no joke, bro. They're dope AF. I'm sure they are. I'm sure it is Twitch. They are dope. I actually that's how I know I know what they are. I, that's why they're actually pretty dope. Mm -hmm. Who's Nissan? That's why you're on YouTube, dog. Okay, it's okay. He said Nissan. Nasim, Nasim Habibi, Nasim. Who's Nasam? I see you just taking random Arab words that sound like they're Arab and putting them together. You're like al algebra, algebra. What? It's algebra, dog. What? That's not even Middle East. I think it is Middle Eastern. I don't know. Algebra. Nasim, Nasim Taleb. Look into him. He is the inventor of the black swan. All right, you got three minutes till ten minutes. Get ready. He said Nissan. <laughs> Silver, one, two, three, four. Let's go, baby. Let's go, Silver. Uh, wait, why are you on YouTube? Your name's Silver One. He said it's as easy as one, two, three, four. Buy silver, nothing else. Boom. I came for the bears. Amen. Amen. It's good, though. Watch. You guys are laughing now. Market goes down 17%. Y'all going to be looking at the Twitch like they're damn oracles. <laughs> I know damn well you can be like I knew these guys were smart I knew these guys in the twitch chat knew what was up oh fuck yeah they were ahead of their time yep uh-huh give me 17 see 14 percent drop you guys will be in there you're gonna be like uh-huh nah no nah, definitely definitely need some more gold 100 percent mm-hmm Can you get Wi-Fi on Earth ships? I haven't looked that far into it. Why don't you talk to the Twitch? I do. I do all day. We integrate both of them. So I answer some questions that I answer throughout the day aren't even on YouTube. It's on the Twitch chat. See, I got the Twitch chat, bro. I'm see they they with me, bro. They with me. We got them in there. We got them in there. Don't even trip. So you could join the Twitch too. It's a good backup. Sometimes they do call outs better than the YouTube. That's why it's great. It's great. I'm just, I like to make fun of them because they're really, I get, they make fun of me sometimes. So we make, you know, it's good. But then uh, we have a nice relationship there. Thankful, I have a good co-parenting relationship with Charlie. So without, you know, it makes it a lot better. We got some other cool mods in there too. So it's beautiful.
subs only is nice. Yeah, we have subs only on the Twitch. I'm sorry if, if it if that's it. I don't like modern video game culture. I like the OG like it stopped after like Call of Duty, like the first couple Call of Duties. Now it's just like I don't know. They're too they're too crazy with me. They're too crazy with me. And so I'm like, I don't know if I can handle y'all. I could only like you know the OG gamers I, I vibe with. You know, we vibe hand in hand, but like new video game culture, y'all are just wild and that's it. I feel I feel one day you'll understand. So ten minute rigged, get ready. Bro, no bounce at all. This was a shitty fed. Look at this. You're just right at this last line. This is the final line. Ten minute rigged. It's eating. It is eating. No, stop, Josh. You're stressing me out. The stock market's down. No. It's going down, man. 39.76. New low of the day. Two points away from the next level of 39.74. Uh, watch for the final five. You might even bounce there, but you set a new low before anything. Mm. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for staying in the game, man. And I hope you do something with those puts, man. Today should have benefited more. Remember, balance out the risk so you don't complain about it later. And be wise. And make sure the long term's in check. That was a big candle. Volume sucks, though, today. I don't know if you guys noticed. Load it. 60 million. I guess it's not too bad, but it still felt kind of shitty. I guess more volume kind of came in there in these last 10, 20 minutes. So there's your first little bounce. They scam my 20. I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to start just throwing 20 bucks a day on the opposite direction just so that they have a reason to scam my $20 and then let me make my $40,000 back. I think it, I think it could work. A little reverse psychology. Origin earnings tomorrow morning. Let's go. Mm hmm. You still hold? I'm holding. Yeah, I have the twenty dollar option. It's now worth five dollars, and then uh. The NQ is coming up a little bit. Bonds chilled out uh, somewhat. Today was kind of a mixed bag. Didn't really go anywhere. And then eight minutes left, Chad. 1.6 to the sell side. You might bounce. Again, anytime it's sell side, I just think you go up. Hmm. Remember when someone asked how to short Ethereum and you gave the bike analogy? Hey, man, you can't say I, was, I wasn't lying. I was down 40000 almost on the NQ, and then I have the twenty k on the Ethereum. But I'm feeling confident about it. It sucks. I'm going to have to roll the Ethereum soon. Then the bonds hurt me a little bit unnecessarily. The bonds was like your good friend just stealing your money. I didn't see that one coming, especially when I, I had a great exit opportunity and I didn't take it. I'm glad I took the yen though, uh, but it's good though. I think I'm I think I'm positioned nice. I mean, I had to deal with a little pain, and I still have some pain, but I'm actually really comfortable with everything I have now, especially with how it was uncomfortable here, right? Like you see how uncomfortable it was here, but like coming into this now with what I've seen over the last year or so, I I, I would love to be in this position here now because like I said, if I even go break even on some of these, I'm gonna be very very good to go. And then I have other shares for any upside that I could work out. And then that's it. No, I wasn't realized. No. Oh, you're moving up a little. Let's see this again. If we stay low, this will be one of the worst fed minutes. Final five in 45 seconds. 
And then we have NVIDIA. We said net. A little bit. Where's FedEx too? Remember you had FedEx and BBWI? Those both had news. Then there was the uh, DXCM. I'm still in that one. I'm going to hold that. DXCM and what's the other one? Abbott. Those are your only other news plays. Then Laser with Mercedes. And then I think there was one more, the SGL or whatever, or LL something, LL Cool J for the solar or the uh, spaceship stuff. Fatal 5, 3, 2, 1. Boop. That was loud. 3993. All right, you're working your way up. You're about to catch up here with the yen. I think like 3996 close. It will still be lower than yesterday. Maybe we go unchanged, man. Those unchanged votes, you guys might hit it. We don't have to land the plane just yet. Not quite yet, buddy. Not quite yet. When does NVIDIA come out? Is NVIDIA right after the bell or is there time? Because we got to do something with that one. Grab your seats. We about to take Oskia, man. Again, I respect it. I respect it, bro. If I was flying on a plane with you, I'd be so mad at you, though. I'd be like, can you stop? It's just turbulence. Stop it. I'd be like, we about to take off. Be like, you feel that? We're elevating. I'm like, the plane is literally putting its landing gear down. Why are you doing this to me? Are you trolling me? And the video is at 1620. Hmm. I think. Or yeah, earnings. I think NVIDIA might have 20 minutes. So I may try to hold it a little bit if I want to scam it there and see if we get that earnings run up. That could be interesting. Could be very, very interesting. Hoddle, Bloodbath, and Beyond. Jeez, man. What kind of vampire store are you shopping at? Sounds disgusting. Mm-hmm. You're moving all right. <laughs> yeah, I have the NVIDIA one. That's why I'm thinking maybe, because it's going good. I mean, we're barely down on it. You get one of those stupid after hours pops, you know, but then you have 20 minutes and you could get really, really clapped. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're making our final approach. As we make our final approach, uh, we're going to be landing here into the second link terminal. Second link terminal in description, that's going to be your nightly watch list and main channel layover around 4 p.m. Pacific time. Then we're going to be taking off promptly around 6 a.m. out of sunny San Diego, California. As we make this final approach in the San Diego International Airport, it's about 55 degrees, uh, mostly cloudy, looking like a good day unless you thought you would get something new out of three-week-old minutes. But we are no longer under COVID guidelines, so no masks are required, but we do ask that you exit one row at a time and drop a GG on your way out. As always, we appreciate your guys' business. If you're interested in your Call Rapid Awards program card, please flag down your flight attendant, and we'll get you that as soon as possible. As always, thank you for flying with the coat, and hopefully have a wonderful evening. Amen, baby. Chattadonia, bring it home. NVIDIA after the bell. You even got NVIDIA, ENVX, Etsy, TPL, eBay, Run, Teladoc, Mosaic, Lucid, and Unity. All after the bell today. So stick around. We're going to have all those earnings. I still need to close NVIDIA. If I go positive before the bell, I will sell out. Otherwise, I'm going to try to push it for that 20 minutes before the release. If they release beforehand, I will get cucked. Uh, but hopefully, I can take advantage of it. So, we will see, man. We will see. We will see. We will very, very well see. Let's see. All right, so I'm putting that out. So again, 20 bucks. I might hold the NVIDIA for a little bit. I'm going to gamble with it. What I mean is that if it's 20 minutes after, you guys know I wanted bigger earnings candles. It may hit after hours, but 
I'm going to be waiting a little bit there because we have 20 minutes. If it comes out any time before that, you get knocked. So we'll see. But I think I could I could squeeze out my 20 bucks there at least minimum. It's looking pretty decent. Oh, shit. One minute. Actually, 30 seconds. Oh, Chad, go, 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 go. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm dealing with these post earnings plays. You got to wrap it up. No, you got 15 seconds remaining. Oh, my gosh. How did I miss that? Oh, man. Oh, man. We still bringing it home. You got some cold real estate, too, after hours, after the bell, 6 p.m. But, Chad, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Where's the ding ding? There it is. Ding 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 Let's go, baby! Wow, we did it, we made it, we did it, we made it! Ladies and gentlemen, let's go. I need that GG. It don't matter if you made money or lost money. I know you learned something. Everybody who contributed, all the people who kept it positive. Let me get that GG. Shout out to all the members, all the non-members, all the stream alerts. We love you. Way to make it to the end. We got big earnings right now. Let's go. All my laggers, all my lurkers, all my lovers. Why you being shy? How you make it this far and you this shy? Let me get that GG. Let's go. Let me get that GG, baby. Amen. Amen. Let's go. That's how you play. That's how you play. I see you too, Twitch. I see you too, Twitch. Amen. Let's go. Where my bears at? What's up, GG, baby? The bears are loving it. The bulls are still loving it, apparently, too. Let's go. Good game. That's how you play. Stay in the game. Oh, you control that budget. Stay in the game. Game. Let's go. Good game, game, baby. That's what I'm everyone got like opinions and thoughts. Why they don't mean a lot. And my money on stats, I can show you the top. Shout out to my Shout out to the key in the lock. Don't believe me, just watch. Use my freedom a lot. I need me to rock. You won't see me a lot. When they do further, you need me to talk, baby. That's it, Chad. Amen. We did it. We did it. How you feel, Chad? That's the day. We got earnings on the way. I hope you made a play. I hope you know when to stay. I hope you don't ruin your day. I hope you know everything will be okay. And that's it. Unless you have anything else you would like to say. So, hey, I'm glad you're here. It's free. You don't have to pay. I don't want to have you act like a horse. I don't want to hear nay because anything is possible, especially if you feel it like it's a good day. <laughs> I don't know what just happened. I'm honestly excited for earnings. Chattadonia. <laughs> oh, we did it our way. Uh, I hope you bought a place to stay. Shout out to Cole Real Estate, Tyler and Trey. Maybe I'll see you today on a Wednesday. I just rhymed day with day at 6 p.m. Pacific day time, Pacific time. You like the rhyme? Maybe you like it if the stock market dropped a dime. Oh, yo, your 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 SPY play is actually it's coming up here. You're you're actually I forgot those move after hours. But Chad, that's the day. That's the day. We did say something about real estate. It's tonight. Call real estate 6 p.m. But Chad, I love you. I still need to close out of my Nvidia, so I think we have time. So let me just tell you, thank you for liking the video. Thank you for being here for real, man. If you've contributed in any way, shape or form, maybe you just listen in today. But for real, I hope I made the most out of your time and thank you for your time. But everybody who's held it down, everybody who stayed in the game, contributed, posted news, info, have been an encouragement and not been a little mocking ass baby back bitch. I love you and thank you. Even if you were a baby back bitch, it's OK. We still love you, man. And I hope you've seen throughout our interactions. We try to work with you. You know, I try to give you good advice. Sometimes it may sound uh, like a con Contrary to what you think, but we do it out of love, man. So I hope you know we appreciate you. Thank you all for being here. Make sure you get that 10%, baby. Oh, yeah, you get the energy. Let's go. That's good. You like my energy. Somebody's like, did he just call me a baby back bitch? He, I did. I'm sorry. It's, it doesn't listen. If it is, you only a baby back bitch if you a baby back bitch. If that doesn't apply to you, feel free to scroll on right over and you'll be good to go, man. And get that long term and get that 10%, baby. GG, baby, GG, tell them. So I got 20 more minutes uh, or so to sell out of this NVIDIA. I love you all. Thank you again. Check out the links. Maybe you want free long-term alerts. Legitimately, every long-term pick from 2022 went positive, which is amazing. So it's free. You could get free text alerts. We got paid text alerts uh, if you're lazy and don't want to watch the stream or if you're not lazy 
it's because you support the channel and you've really got love and you ahead of the game and then you write it off because you have a trading tax business and now you have free resources. Wow, look at that. So God bless you. That's the first link. Second link for the nightly watch list. If somebody cancels stream alerts because I called you lazy, I'm going to slap you. Okay, I just know you someone's gonna be like, did you just call me what? Anyways, second link nightly watch this the main channel. We recap everything all all every day, all every day, bro. All every day, all every day. I don't even know what that means. I'm just saying words now at this point. Uh, but that's tonight. We'll get you that. You'll get the recap of today. Uh, maybe you've even watched it and more prepared for today. Uh, and then third link for that membership badge. We love y'all. Amen. Uh, shout out to all the members. Check out every other link too. New channels. Again, Cole Real Estate. This is where you're going to get a free live stream for real estate today with the team that does $100 million a year consistently. That's not an exaggeration either, which is amazing. I think it's at like $200 million, honestly. I think I'm being modest. You know what I'm saying? I think, hey, man, the God is good. Finger to the sky. Stop playing with me, baby. But check that out. Follow me on Instagram too, at the Trade in Fraternity. And that's it. You have eBay. I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. Nah. Hell nah, hell nah. You got eBay and Etsy. Oh, man, I could get you some of those real quick, though, probably. Here, let me get them for you. Hold on. Net app drops. What, what do we have? What do we have? What do we have? IMAX, DeVita. I need to go pee, though, bro, and I need to get out of this in the video. So eBay, they, oh, eBay guided up. They guided 2.46 to 2.5. Estimate was 2.3. They see adjusted EPS 105 to 109. Estimate was 106. So that's for eBay. I haven't looked up Etsy yet, but eBay has good earnings for now. They're gapping up. They're already up two and a half. Let's see Etsy. Uh, Etsy first quarter merchandise 2.9 to 3.1 billion. Oh, Etsy they guided lower by 20 million, but raised their top end by 20 million. So revenue 600 million to 640. Estimate was 620. They raised their margin 26 to 27 percent. Estimate was 26.9. And then on this quarter, they beat on revenues 807.2 million. Uh, estimate was 753 million. So there you go. Last one we're waiting for is uh, what's it called? We waiting on the other one. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Let's see. All right, I'm gonna go pee real quick. Game time. I'll be right back. Still got Nvidia. Run it, Colt. Let's go, baby. Been in your bed you bullish, but baby, I'm not from Chicago. Heard me talking about Ivy and dripping in bad. They thought that I came from the hospital. No, I just came back from trading. Just to the sun, no vacations. I'm really not trying to be flagrant when I tell you that most of my calls will be naked. Funny when I make a bad play, I get a standing ovation. It's like I'm addicted to antibiotics to try to get rid of this clap. But fuck it, I always come back in the AM to the GG. What's that stand for? I am not a drug dealer, I'm a landlord. I'm a tenant the roof. That Mercedes Benz don't need one. I went from Bailey to Bel Air, from the slums to the Ville to the top. Top of the hill to a street where you can't park a car without a parking pass. I'm just trying to chill with my boys in the island off the coast bar, hopping like a salad trash. Watch you make moves like a salsa class. Plus, I got so many bars like the one minute chart. I already know you can't handle it. You ain't making moves, you a mannequin. Then we got that flame, that candlestick. They ain't got that flame. Tell me it's a cult, not a game. Walk through the mud and the rain, just bring a little hope to the people in pain. I don't want lies, I want honesty. Negative vibes bother me. Stay up on your grind until you make it out of poverty. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get in my bag on heavy. I'm zoom, zoom, zoom to Fetty. My pockets look full, not empty. You loaded, I'm loaded. We never gon' fold, you know it. That's fast right there, go quote it. It's coke, 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 we go it. Different level, it's level. I'm told, they watching, we popping like options. You know, it's real, it's really real. Like Philo time. Cause you can't help but make a meal if your people blind Restless, cause I've been around it, I just, I just want the lessons Cooking up, cooking up, like I'm making breakfast Know I'm eating good, but you know I had to bless it Looked inside the mirror, told yeah. my demons, hit the exit <laughs> That was Benny, that was level, fuck the demons, fuck the devil, throw the pebble, be successful, you can't tell me, code ain't special, I got rich, I made a stencil, like a chair, it's really simple, the framework is in the lecture, Ay, <laughs> like curry on the chain, my brother, you know what, I know you know the name, you ain't never seen my face, probably watch us in the game, did it with a couple plays, let me kick a little lesson, you ain't never gonna chase, well seriously, you always get what I'm really trying to say, longer that you want the stock, more that it's getting safe, you like to say, I ain't trying to make you stay, Ay, I'm hitting plays, I'm hitting waste, your portfolio all day, smiles filled with mostly grace, Apple, Amazon, in Facebook, you probably know the names. You probably thought that you should wait, then win and bought a course to trade. Benny, get some clothes and buy the clothes this shit. And clap them if they talking on some hopeless shit. Cause I've been there and going back. I told y'all that I'm focusing. I know they're getting mad. The news is fast while well, it's motivating. <laughs>
Let's go and a shout out to the vets Hit the players, then we send it in the jets Don't be shy, you can send a prayer request And the list got everything you missed <laughs> Love y'all, baby It's a cop 2020 It's a cop Talk to me in 2030 Oh, 2030, stop playing with me No, I'm long on the video about to sell it You know what it is, baby You know what it is, baby music. 2020, we coming Watch out on, on the, the radar. radar Tell them I just want the Lexus We out here making moves, baby Let's go Boom, baby Boom, baby. All right. We got a little bit of time. Yo, uh, I think I'm going to sell my option. I have what? Till I have 30 minutes or really like five more minutes. Damn. It's at nine cents. So I only lose 50% instead of all of it. Let's sell. We'll sell it to close. 10 cents now. 10 cents. You guys know you could do that? There you go. You could sell spy options 15 minutes after. Oh my gosh. Stock trading. What are you doing, baby? All right, man, we're pushing it to the wire. God bless you. Stock trading, you, you went on the vid. Bro, stock trading brings the hype for the earnings, bro. He getting hyped. I'm pushing it to the wire here. I got to do something with NVIDIA because sometimes NVIDIA could just drop the earnings like right before everything. So I got to like, oh, I don't know how we're going to do this. I'm down $18. So I could take my, my Chick-fil-A for today and sack it or I, or I push it. I'm pushing it. That's it. If I'm like two minutes too shy, though, that's it. It's gonna, it's just gonna get clapped, you know. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Hold on. Hold on. Hold it. I don't want to play it for earnings unless I get forced to. But the idea here is uh, to get out. I know not the Lord's chicken, man. Not the Lord's chicken. God bless you, stock trading. I'm glad, and God bless Edgar. Uh, we haven't seen. I saw Edgar once today, and I think I made him shy. That's it. Do I shake my hips? Uh, honestly, I do because I do these, uh, I do these hip workouts and they're very, very beneficial. And one of them involves like a, a squatted lunge and then you like move your hips in a circle, bro. So honestly, my girlfriend asked me a lot of questions because like she's came in the house once and I've just been straight like air humping the air because they're hip workouts. There you go. Nvidia. This is what I wanted. All right. I could take three bucks, seven bucks, 208.67. Oh, 208. There. there you go. There you go. That's what exactly what, all right. That's exactly what I needed. All right, I got 30 bucks. I'm out of the NVIDIA. There it is. You see? I knew you were going to get one of those stupid pops. Now I don't have to gamble it. Thank you. I appreciate it. One of you sold for me. I know it. I bet you somebody sold right before, and they're like, okay, we have enough. Yeah, there it is. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out of the NVIDIA. But that's exactly what I was looking for. It just sucks with today. God is good, baby. 30 bucks. I'll take it. And now, now look at, I went from losing my Chick-fil-A to now I got free Chick-fil-A for the day. That's it. It's good. It's good. That's exactly what we wanted. All right. We got eight minutes, eight minutes till the video comes out. It's already just popped up here. A dollar. That's exactly what we need. It's exactly what we need. So it's good. It's good. No more in the video. I still got the Dexcom too. Mm -hmm. I caught two. That wasn't bad. That's exactly what we wanted here. It's actually a huge move if you think about it. Mm -hmm. I can't get the long terms. Every time I answer the questions, I get hit with more. It's never ending. That's not, I can't. That's just literally, I'm not willing to fill out something to get something for free in return. That's all it is. So it's not like you can't. It's not like every time I click on it, it doesn't work. It's like, no, Josh, I want to do it, but I'm not really willing to put in that effort to get any sort of information that I find valuable. So therefore, I've given up on it. It's the same logic with saving 10%. So either way, I mean, I hope you do get it, but... You know, either way, it's, you know, that's, it's your life, man. It's your life. You did, though. You just said it's never ending, though. You just said, what do you, like, what do you mean? If you got it, you'll get it. That's great. It's beautiful. Yeah, Teladoc got clapped. Sold too early. Um, Donnie. Donnie Wong. What a name. Mm -hmm. I finished it. Keeps telling me I'm not done. Did you not fill it, fill it out then? That's weird. It should be there. I've never had anybody have that issue there. Top tick, Josh does it. On that one, I got I got a little bit of the top tick there. No, I didn't sell the spy. I sold out of my NVIDIA. And then seven more minutes here till NVIDIA earnings. Bumble raised their guidance a little bit. Then they lowered it, bro. So many companies lowered the end, the bottom end, and then rose the top end. It's actually crazy. 
And y'all said Teladoc. I don't have Teladoc numbers. I could get it there. Teladoc is clapped a little bit, 7%. So Teladoc, 5%. Uh, they said e fourth quarter EPS, negative $23. May not compare to what? Is that real? Bro, they lost $23 a share and their estimate was losing 25 cents a share. And then they see first quarter losses at 55 cents a share and full year losses at $1.75 a share. I didn't wait till earnings because the plan was to sell out before that. And then they beat on revenue barely by $4 million and then adjusted EBITDA beat. But I think that EPS number is terrifying. Myrna's on the high. I think I thought their earnings were tomorrow morning. That's on Teladoc. Marriott has earnings right now. Marriott uh, Marriott missed on revenue. And then they guided up. Uh, where is it? Marriott guided down. Bro, let's go Airbnb. It sucks. Airbnb might go down on that. But all I see is Airbnb is taking over market share. That's Marriott Vacations. Did Lucive had earnings? I know they have earnings now. I don't know if it released. I know it's today. Uh, Lucid falls short of estimate revenue two hundred fifty million, estimate three hundred fourteen million. Vehicles delivered nineteen hundred and thirty two, estimate was twenty eight hundred thirty one. So they missed on revenue and deliveries. I don't know if there's guidance. Airbnb. That's the uh, where you were talking about those the other day. I want those. That one area sounded very interesting. Okay, four minutes, Chad. How you feeling? You feeling good? You feeling great? So I love Chad. I love thy Chad for Chad. We will keep grinding. Stock trading. <laughs> he wants the hype for earnings. Moderna Merck cancer vaccine gets FDA breakthrough. Is Myrna on the high now? Yeah, they're running off of that. All oh, love, baby. Let's go. Stock trade. I like stock trading. I like you as an individual, and I like the actual activity of trading stock. So I think we match matched up at the right time, man. At the right time. I'm staying for NVIDIA. No, I'm, I'm actually just staying here right now. Just for, just wait. Yes, I'm staying for NVIDIA, baby. It's earnings. We got most of them. Lucid was bad. Teladoc was bad. Etsy, eBay did good. I think Myrna did good. Uh, Merck might be gapping off of that, too. And then right now we're waiting on the final one. eBay, Etsy, they killed it. Actually, very surprising. I wouldn't say killed it, but again, they at least raised the top end of their guidance while at the same time lowering their bottom end. Do you know something that we don't? Me or stock? Who? I don't. I wish, man. All I know is that the Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior. That's it. That's if you know, if you ask me, what do I truly know? I know that. I know that. Amen. Amen. I hope y'all feel me. Oh, I don't know when Bros comes out. I need to go to Dutch Bros. I've never, I've still never been. All love, baby. Cold real estate tonight, too. Tell them. Tell them. <laughs> oh, Bumble did good. Bumble was weird, though. Bumble, they raised their guidance, but then again, they lowered, uh, they lowered the other end of it. Okay, three minutes, two minutes, two minutes remaining, Chad. Stock trading is going to ask for his $20 back if NVIDIA misses. Nah, he a real one, bro. He was a real one, bro. He even donated. Remember, he did it on Snapchat. And then even afterwards, bro, he was a real one. I don't think, you know, at first I was assuming he was getting real hyped. But nah, man, I think he's just, I think he ha he has the same vibe for earnings, man. If you don't know, earnings is a very, very big cult tradition. We love it. We love earnings. Just got back from riding dirt bikes in the mountains. The video is going to be wild. He's doing it again. Let's go. You got one minute. Horn. Bring it home. Yeah, my guy only speaks in $20 bills. It's actually fascinating. It's actually crazy. <laughs> I should try that one day. I should try that one day. Earning vibes are real, baby. Let's go. One minute. 
I have no plays on it, but we'll see if we can make a play afterwards. Might be fun. Might be fun. Might be fun. Let me see. I'll get a trade open just in case. Mm. All right, Chad. I wish you luck. I hope you know you're blessed. I hope you check out Colt Real Estate tonight at 6 p.m. And anything else in between, that's that's between you and the Lord. So get ready. Finalizer plays. You can still back out now. Speak now or forever hold your peace, my guy. That's it. 20 seconds. <sighs> bum, bum. 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 Is that, that's like a heartbeat? No? <laughs> And they scammed us. Where is it? It's not out yet. God bless the cult, baby. Let's go. No, it's not out yet. I don't see it. What the hell? Why'd they do that to me? I want to go home now. I hate getting hyped up and then nothing happens. I think Unity might be coming out right now. No, nothing's came out. Wait for it. Wait for it. Unity beats on revenue by 20 million. 451 estimate 436. Unity's revenue numbers just came out. Bro, where is it? It's like not even moving. It says 1620. Should be coming out. I don't see it. NVIDIA? No, NVIDIA is calls at five. But the release should be now. Again, Unity beat 20 million on revenue. Stavon. Where is it, Estevan? Estevan. Stock trading. Where is it? After Hours is on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm even looking at my scanner. I don't have any news. No news yet. They're waiting. It was supposed to come out. No, 1420. Or 2 or 420. AKA right now. Unity's going. Where's the rest of it? Unity? Unity just gave sales numbers and they're running up. I don't think they have guidance or anything. Unity's popping 11%. Mm. Yeah, Unity's up 12% right now. On the video, 208.50. Rackspace beat. It could be in 10 minutes, but now I'm just getting hungry. I'm getting kind of hungry and annoyed. Yeah, Roblox does good with Unity. I mean, Roblox already went crazy the other day. Yeah, everything says in the video is sixteen twenty or four twenty. It's weird. It shows it shows already twenty twenty two Q four. Well, no one's talking about it. It's not out. Maybe it comes out and give it like ten more minutes, or now they're just catching catching everybody off guard. It's just going to go nuts out of nowhere. We're going to get the report, and then we're all going to go, ah! It's kind of cool. I kind of like it. I feel like I'm like on Disneyland about to go down the log. Like, you know it's coming, but then you're like, oh, where is it? When does it drop? Oh, my gosh, it hasn't dropped yet. Ah, this is so crazy. You know, you know what I'm saying? Unity. Unity did great. I mean, Unity just flipped, though. Again, there's no guidance or anything on Unity. Unity only has two pieces of news that came out. They just beat on sales. That's it. I don't even see the EPS or any of the other numbers. NVIDIA.com Love you all. God bless you, Battleborn. Enjoy your day. JP, God bless you too, man. Thank you, my friend. I hope you guys are ready. This is, I don't know, my is your heart beating fast? I sold out of my shares, so my heart's not beating as fast, but now I'm, I'm feeling very crazy. 
your Uncrustable just popped out. You actually toast those, bro? You're a sicko. I eat the Uncrustables frozen, man. That's how you know I'm, I got ice in my veins. Ever since a kid, bro. Ever since a kid. That's, that's crazy. Battleborn. What's up, man? Wait. There's, is that a different Battleborn? We got Battleborn in the Twitch. And you, you're not the same person? I'm post-work pooping. That's solid strat, bro. Solid strat. Froze toasted. That's crazy, man. I've never... That's like toasted jelly, though. You don't like... You don't feel weird with, like, warm jelly in your mouth? <laughs> I don't I don't want to make this weird for you. I'm just saying. That's just not really a, a, a texture I like. It just it kind of freaks me out. Mm-hmm. I ain't had an Uncrustable in a minute, man. Honestly, maybe if NVIDIA wants to take an extra 72 hours to release, that's fine. I'll go grab me one. Come on, NVIDIA. NVIDIA... I'll say the name right if you fucking release. Come on. Your poop is at 6 p.m. now? Oh, definitely the chemtrails, dog. That's crazy. You know what it is, though? Drink protein. Because I realized I haven't been, like, lately I haven't been, even as I've been lifting, I haven't been having, like, my post-workout pro, my post, post workout protein. And, like, my poops and my farts are a lot calmer. But I think that could normalize it. You might honestly just start downing some pro, and then you'll be shitting in no time. That's what I realized. But then my my farts are going to smell really aggressive. And then I can't hide them from my girlfriend because low key, I've been I've been in her car like six or seven times lately. And I just straight shitting all over her seat and she has no idea. So it's because I, I haven't been on the protein farts as of late. You know what I'm saying? But that's going to snitch me out if I do. Yeah, I think I'm going to need it. Yeah, you need to up it. That's really. That's what I need to do. I need it. Unity clapped. Oh, they guided down. Unity just guided down 470 to 480 million estimate 514. So there it is. First quarter guidance was shit. They be they beat by 20 million and then now they just guided down. They see 2023 revenue 2.05 to 2.2. That's just a solid guide down all across the board. Yeah, Unity's printing on the low ticker. You might be able to play that. They're down 3.9. I do speak in $20 bills. We in the game, baby. Playing upside on NVIDIA. Let's go. I wish you luck, man. I'm going to get you that, that info right away. <coughs> Let's go, stock trading. Let's go. Win or loss, you're still in the game. Your name is stock trading. <coughs> I ruined your lunch. You ruined your lunch. What do you mean? You should have picked something... That wasn't so comparable to me talking about taking a shit. See what I'm saying? Like, what is straw? Like, strawberries don't look like shit. Strawberries don't smell like shit. You know what I'm saying? But you're like, I'm going to have roast beef while Josh is talking about taking a dump. That's your fault. That's, you know what I'm saying? You should have picked something more visually appetizing where there's no correlation to shit at all. And now you could avoid this problem once and for all. Like, you know what I'm saying? How are you going to blame me for that? That's a personal decision, man. It's okay. I'm sensitive about how my food looks and smells too, but that's why I make good decisions. You know what I'm saying? Go eat a pineapple. You ain't have nothing to worry about. Why don't you have a pineapple in your fridge? Go get you a pineapple. That'll that'll change your life right there. Yeah, like this guy's an uncrustable, straight up blood and poop. Like, come on, bro. Yeah, you better watch out. Don't get that on your shirt, man. People are going to accuse you of many things. They'll be like, did you shit yourself after killing somebody? Nah, I was eating an uncrustable. It's a long story. I don't know. You got too much going on with it. They'd be like, where's the crust? I got rid of the evidence. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't make any sense. It's very suspicious. No way, bro. I've already killed 10 minutes here now. Mm hmm. Yeah, we got about a minute and a half till 30. If they don't release it, I'm going to fucking smash my NVIDIA graphics card. Not really because I need it, but still. Mm hmm. Lucid had bad numbers. They missed on revenue and missed on deliveries. Yeah, and then Unity lost per share 82 cents. So Unity just killed it. They were hyped for it. Dude, they were up 11 to down thir three and a half now. Mm -hmm. NVIDIA's website says 5. If it's 5 p.m., I'm going home. I'm leaving. That's it. It's Ash Wednesday. Is that where you partied already on Mardi Gras, right? 
and then you guys are going to give up stuff for Lent. I'm not Catholic, so, like, I don't do Lent. So, but I hope you all give up something meaningful. Some of you will be like, I'm going to give up spending a million dollars. You ain't spending a million. Shut the, no. Like, I'm going to give up talking to hot girls. You don't talk to hot girls. What do you say? Stop it. Do something realistic. Give up McDonald's. Okay? Give up not working out for a fucking month. That means go to the gym. That's it, man. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Where do I stream from? Most days, the Hubble telescope. But if I'm local, uh, you know, my house. It just depends. It just depends. Oh, so I was getting excited. Bro, five, four, three, two, one. Come on. Come on. Give me the data. Okay, I'm going home. There's no NVIDIA yet. What is this? Is this a joke? Yeah, give up procrastinating. Nah, they're going to procrastinate on that. They're like, I gave up procrastinating, but I'm going to get to that tomorrow. I'll figure it out. How, do, how am I going to do that? I'll figure it out tomorrow. For now, I got to play me some Warzone. Mm -hmm. Nah, man. Give up the zero-day option. Honestly, I don't think you guys are doing that good in life yet. And what I mean by that is that if your only thing you need to give up is zero-day options, oh, where is it? AMD's dropping. I don't have the numbers yet. Come on, little scammers. Little scamming-ass pieces. I don't even think it's out, bro. I think everybody just wants to go home. No, 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 it's not even out. See, I told you everyone's going to go, NVIDIA, NVIDIA, NVIDIA. I don't see it yet. I don't see it. Bro, there's nothing out. No, there's nothing out. Little scammers, bro. Everybody's just getting impatient as hell. That's it. We had 30 minutes tops. <laughs> we said, I'll wait 30 minutes tops. That's it. I'll give you 30 minutes. That's it. Anything else, bro? You asking way too much. Nope. Mm -mm. Yeah, everyone's like, this is bullshit. Why are we waiting this long? Is that they releasing a pair of Jordans or something? No. Fuck is this? Just give us your earnings report. How are you 10 minutes late? You all work from home. How do you not have this ready to go? Y'all didn't even need to go to the boardroom. Y'all fucking Zoomed your board meeting. Can we just get this over with? Come on. That's it. You guys sell gaming cards and sell chip center shit. I don't even know. It's simple. We were looking for three different numbers right now. That's all you have to tell us. Can y'all just put out a PDF or something? Fucking, bro, to run this through ChatGBT. We could get this solved in 30 seconds. I kind of want to buy it, though, now. You know what I'm saying? Give me my couple of dollars. No, the earnings aren't out. I don't see them, at least. I mean, and then usually people are quick to correct me if I'm wrong, so... I mean, I stand by the earnings are not out. If anybody has them, please, please humor me. There's no way I'm not waiting 30 more minutes for this. Hey, <laughs> you guys come here often? <laughs> kind of feels like that, bro. I feel like we've been, we've been waiting in line for too long. We might as well get to know each other at this point. Man, this is getting real awkward. We've been bamboozled. Honestly, it's a good test of patience. Buy 100 shares of NVIDIA. Honestly, I think that's quite excessive. My last share position was 25. So I don't know where we got 100 from. Yeah, do you guys know? Does anybody want to sell a house? If you guys don't know, I'm still in the market. If you want to sell a house right now, email me. Tradingfraternity at gmail.com. I'll buy your house from you. And then if my offer is too scammy... I'll refer, I'll refer you to an agent who will get you more money. So then it works out for both parties. But if you got like a shitty house, I'd love to buy it. Or if you just want quick money, maybe you're like, fuck it. I need to go buy gold and zero day options. Come to me, bro. I got you. I'm going to tell you it's a bad idea before I buy your house. But you know what I'm saying? I got you, man. Do I buy land? It depends. Usually if there's a house on it. But we're going to be there. We'll be there. Mm-hmm. You're not serious. You want to steal houses. Bro, if you're that dude who I told you, you were like, I have a higher offer. I said, go take it. 
nah, man, I don't want to steal anyone's houses. I like to be honest about it and let you know. That's all. You know, but if you're the type, you're like, nah, I'm going to do for sale by owner. And then I'm going to ask 70% higher than the latest comp in six months. Like, honestly, you deserve to never sell your house. Uh, honestly, I, I really do. And that's what you get for not going to cult real estate or willing to work with a buyer who is genuine and honest with you about what price it is. At that point, you're just a greedy bastard. Okay. So other than that, though, I mean, we've passed up on a lot of houses because they weren't good deals. You should watch cult real estate. You know, we had a good story the other day. Some Chad, he came up to me. He was like, Josh, I'll sell you my house for 200000 And I said, my guy, that house is worth at least like four hundred. So we gave it to Nikki B. And Nikki B listed the house for him and sold it for him for four hundred. We do that a lot. We do that a lot. So I'll give you an offer. I'll tell you what the house is worth. Anything after that, that's a personal decision. Mm -mm. I buy houses in Montana. Hell yeah. North County. Oh, bro, what? Trading fraternity at gmail.com. Let's go. You're not serious, though. That's I don't know you're not serious. You've been here for a while, Daniel. You know exactly where to go. I just saw your name. I was like, wait a minute. Come on, Daniel. Trading fraternity at gmail.com. I'm going to get you. I'm going to either get you a, a nice offer for cash in seven days or I'm going to have you a, a, a damn agent there. Where do you want to live? Oh, damn it. You would you want to live in uh, La Jolla, Del Mar or Escondido? Because I could if I could you sell me a house, I got a house I could sell you too. That's it, man. Work with the work with the chat. Work with the chat. Say my name, say my name. And no one is around you. Hey, me, I love eight eighty-five K for Indiana. Email me, tradingfraternity at gmail dot com. Otherwise you like hit me up. I don't know, man. I don't know how to contact you. But if you email me, I would love to get in touch with you. I'm in Fallbrook. I want to leave and live next to the lake. Like Lake Elsinore? Uh, I feel like you can find a good one. Bro, where is this earnings? I don't have any houses in San Isidro. I got Imperial Beach. Uh, does that say on IB, bro? It says 2 p.m., which is 5 p.m.? Yeah, fuck them. All right, Chad. Well, it was a good 30 minutes, man. I'm pretty mad now because that got rid of my philo time. I was going to philo about 10 to 15 minutes ago. So, unfortunately, you're going to have to get your philo fill uh, there at Colt Real Estate. I think Colt Real Estate always has some philo. Low-key, if you're really listening out there, it's beautiful. Always gets me inspired, but well, that's it, Chad. That's it. I got to go. I have to go home. I have to. I need to eat. I got shit to do now. I got shit to do. They got me, bro. I'm No, I'm sorry. I had philo planned. It's okay. Tomorrow will be Thursday. We should have hit the philo, bro. I should have. I thought it was going to be out 20 minutes ago. I really thought it was going to be out 20 minutes ago. That's why I'm kind of mad. Mm-hmm. Say my name. Say my name. Chad, I love you, even when your names is still delayed. Say my name, say my name, when Nivity delays it. Ain't nobody say it, except the website. Say my name, say my name. Who acting kind of shady, ain't releasing earnings lately. Why the sudden change? Say my name, say my name, when no one is around you. Say Powell's a scammer. Why the sudden change? Say my name, say my name. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting too hyped here. I know. I'm sorry. Okay, I love you, Chad. Uh, God bless you. I got to get going. I hope I see you on the watch list. Thank you guys all for another wonderful day, for real. I had a lot of fun today. We're going to have a lot of fun the next two days. We got more data on the way. And the market's heating up, baby. So I hope you win the game, baby. <laughs> so, Chad, I love you. Check out all the links. See you on the watch list. And don't forget why we're here, okay? And why we don't give up, why we don't back down, why we stay in the game, and why we keep that future destiny and that long term always in mind, baby. Because that's what it's really about. And that love for your brothers and sisters, baby. It's the long term, baby. Why? Finger to the sky, baby. To God be the glory. And through the grace of God alone. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, Chad, I love you. I'll see you very soon. In peace. Out. Oh, ah, how did I get here? I thought I was going to be at a NVIDIA chip conference. What the fuck's happening? Oh, fuck it. I got to go. All right, Chad, you have a wonderful day. I'll see you later.